uh, play the Berlin. Which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against. Because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing uh, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be even with uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines that I played against former world number two and a uh, bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. Gains that confidence, uh, plays a few uh, good events, stops looking inwards into his own insecurities. I like the no expectation part, so like that's something that has gotten better because sure, it's like not my full-time job. It's definitely good for chess in India and now there is Olympiad also, so there'll be more people following and mm -hmm. taking up chess as a professional sport. Yeah. And it's surprisingly concrete still, no? Like yeah. E takes d4, good move, this d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Welcome everybody. My name is Jan Bomnishi, former world chess champion. Are starting a new course here for chessable, a very special chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. I'm ahead of the game. Up my rocker, but follow me. I'm ahead of the game. I'm ahead of the game. I'm only ever slinging and working over time. Got the song and I'm the singer, the melody, the vibe. I'm a prodigy, logically, I'm impossibly wanted. Then they'll remember my name. They'll remember my name. Well, I'm ahead now. I'm ahead of the game. I'm ahead of the game. Take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. And so much happiness.
Hi there. It's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, sick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? What? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... But it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just come on. Literally, why not? All right, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. All right? Jesus Christ.
Hello and welcome to round one of the uh, Vikings Day Tournament 2023. And we are hopefully eventually visible on screen, but while we're not, uh, yeah, there we are. Uh, my absolutely favorite picture in the entire world, and, and, and I'm sure you, Fres, also are in love with it's this picture. It's a good one. It's a good yeah, one. Yeah, I, you, I mean, yours, yours, yours is okay. Yeah, mine. <laughs> yours is fine as well. Don't worry. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good yeah, one. Don't anyway, worry. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Peter Swidler, and with me is my good friend Laurent Fresinet, and we will be doing the first couple of rounds of uh, this uh, very exciting tournament, which has been the start of every year's calendar proper for eighty plus years. Uh, being the true professional, I am, of course, very much. Not going to make a mistake and say that this is like the eighty fifth edition when it's actually the eighty fourth. Or, uh, but I actually this is... don't know. I, I checked. I checked uh, how many times uh, Magnus won the event. Mm -hmm. That's that's far. I know the, the, the important. The important. <laughs> yeah, things, but yeah. I don't know if it's. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a very traditional event. As you said, it was uh, the, the home turf of uh, Guy Kasparov. Uh, for many many years, Vichy and Anderson won many times there, and now, of course, uh, Magnus Carlsen won eight times. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually managed by accident to get it correct. It is the 80, 85th edition, and it's far and away the longest standing tournament in the world. There was some there was some competition at some point, but all of those tournaments, which you know, comprised uh, the sort of the Grand Slam of of uh, the olden days. They're all pretty much gone. Linares is no longer there. Uh, Dortmund still exists, but uh, I guess Dortmund is the only other one that is still sort of, uh, sort of around. If you consider the the tournament circuit of, let's say, I don't know, the mid nineties to the mid two thousands, uh, but Vikings A is still going extremely strong, and it's, I think, extremely fortunate that this is the one that survived because uh, it's always, I think, been. Uh, the best one in terms of the watching experience. Exactly. Uh, uh, 14 players and a mix of uh, youth and experience. Mm -hmm. In general, this year it's more a mix of youth and youth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you, we see on the screen Magnus Carlsen and uh, Levon Aonian. Uh, Levon Aonian just turned 40 and is he by far actually and we can say uh, this because we are uh, older than uh, the Levon is by far the oldest player, uh, mm -hmm. the oldest player in the in the field. And uh, Magnus Carlsen is the second oldest, uh, only thirty-two. So we used to have a more uh, mixed uh, field, but so many interesting players. And uh, yeah, and uh, I think our, our good mutual friend, Mister Dodgy, published. Uh, the list of players numbered from nine to fourteen in this tournament, and said, "I would watch this tournament." <laughs> and uh, yeah, like the, the the people who form the uh, you know the underdogs, so to speak, in this event are just unbelievable. And we will be coming back again and again, I think, to to the fact that uh, the organizers managed, apart from obviously the one name that you, I guess, would have very much liked to see there, that being of your new compatriot. Uh, yeah, the organizers so. pretty much they got pretty much every single hot young player in. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe uh, I mean you can maybe name Nihal as somebody who's missing. Yeah, of, yeah, but there's already uh, they they used to do uh, not so many um, players from the same uh, nationality, mm -hmm. but here we have I think three Indian players: Gazi, Gukesh, and uh, Pagananda. But they all deserve uh, obviously. So I think Nihal. Would deserve as well, but yeah, yeah. Uh, there, the, there's only so many spots, really. I mean, you you can't, you can't. Uh, I mean, you can if you want to, but uh, that maybe would have been going a little bit too far. But yeah, this tournament features uh, sort of the absolute creme de la creme once again, apart from from Ali Reza, who I assume the same issues that uh, were present in previous years once again happened this year. I assume uh, some kind of an offer was made, but it wasn't satisfactory. That would but be my I, um, that, that would be my guess. Yeah, and I think it's a pretty uh, good guess. I don't have any uh, inside information. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not asking for. I'm not asking no. you for. Uh, for but I mean, we, we can also uh, notice that uh, Nepo, uh, the future. Uh, I mean, the challenger for the uh, World Championship match is missing uh, as well. While uh, Ding. Uh, Ding, it will be very interesting to to see him because the last time we saw him, 
he half qualified for for the match uh, in candidates, which uh, later on uh, became a full qualification. Mm-hmm. So that will be, I guess, uh, his last event um, before before. Yeah, the probably match. because uh, what else can you even play, right? It's not as if the, the calendar is very full these days for February and March. There used to be things to uh, to, to to play in February and March, but once again, many of them are. Uh, yeah, are but gone. let's see as well if the match is uh, there is no the news so far. Mm-hmm. So maybe it could be you know a bit later. We will see. Okay, it's not uh, it's not really our business here, but it will be interesting to see to see Ding. I was of course, uh, yeah, of course. I was and always uh, a big fan of Ding and uh, Ding 2019. I, I'm looking forward to. To meet uh, Ding 2019 over the, the the chessboard, he was playing so well. He was uh, at the top of his game, and uh, let's hope uh, he, he will get back to to, mm-hmm. to that level. And uh, we'll see in that tournament. So we, we have some moves uh, in the, the main game. Absolutely, yeah. And the, the, the games have started. We we should mention that. I mean, it, it should be pretty obvious to our to our audience, you know, due to basically where the show started and when the show started. That uh, you know, this being. After September 2022, things are on delay. <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> uh, unsurprisingly, I guess, uh, somewhat regrettably, but unsurprisingly, things are obviously uh, on delay here. Uh, we have a 15-minute delay Act- for for this tournament. Actually, I will I will slightly uh, correct you. Uh, in 2011, 2012. Uh, the, the delay was there because of this. Uh, it's not French uh, cheating; it's a failure. Of course, cheating. of course, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and <laughs> that has nothing to do with the other Peter. Peter I know is uh, mm, I'm aware, <laughs> trying yeah. to annoy me uh, with I'm that. Aware. So it's the failure. Uh, and somehow, I don't know how it came, but slowly but surely, the, the, the delay uh, disappeared uh, mm-hmm. in. In the, in the coming years, after let's say 2013, 2014, it, it disappeared, and now, of course, uh, it came back again. Of course, it's a pity, but uh, you know, uh, it's a small thing. And when you are not on site, there is not uh, it's not much of a problem. It's not it's not too much. Yeah, as long as as long as you don't like uh, frantically update Twitter every thirty seconds, and yeah. like uh, unless you're actively trying to get the results spoiled for you, I don't think you will very likely get the results spoiled for you. Uh, it's not a huge thing, even though, of course, it's it's always you know, uh, it's much better to watch things live, and uh, even the fifteen minutes make a bit of a difference. Uh, but it's an understandable decision, and uh, I think we will go through a period uh, where organizers the world over will have to sort of adjust to the new situation, and they will have to uh, like search for solutions, and this will be the easiest solution they will have. Yeah, because you know uh, this is everything else requires you know planning and thought and investment probably, and uh, it's not clear how anything else is whether it's even effective. So I think this will be the default solution for the organizers pretty much everywhere for a while. So we have to get used to uh, this being the norm for for the foreseeable future. I, I think. Yeah, I, I fully agree, and we can see something very nice on, on the screen, on the on the live footage from from uh, Vikanze, and the audience is there, and mm. this is fantastic actually because this is a good old days. You know, you see the players playing mm-hmm. their, their group. Actually, it's a very special uh, tournament because everyone is playing in a group. You know, ten players. You play nine games and you go you go up or you go down <laughs> if you if you are doing uh, poorly, and you see uh, all the people which was. Unfortunately, not possible the previous year, but now it feels like we, we were there. Uh, you played, uh, I don't know how, I wanted to ask you how many times you play in the A group. I played, I, uh, I think uh, five or six. I, I never really did well, but I played a, a, a bunch in the like late 2000. I mean, my first one was in 99, and then I played a bunch in the 2000s and a few. Uh, no, actually, that's not true. I think my last one maybe was 2008, and then they invited me 10 years later. Uh, okay. Just kind of randomly for for one more event in 2018, uh, which was very fortunate for me because it allowed me to. And here I am, kind of petitioning to get invited again, right? <laughs> because I basically I I I took that invitation without a second thought because I realized I can use the rest day to go and watch the Hearthstone World Championship in Amsterdam. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so my priorities were 
very, very straight for that tournament. Are you sure uh, you are, you are, you are, you are petitioning for, for <laughs> getting invited? Look at the field. We will look at yeah, the, yeah, at the uh, players. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. It's, uh, I, you know, I feel, I, I feel, I feel very <laughs> safe. I feel very safe <laughs> saying those things because, yeah, I... I'm never, I'm never getting invited into the A tournament ever again. I feel like I'm maybe not even strong enough for challengers these days. So, uh. <laughs> that's uh, another statement. Yeah, yeah anyway, I, 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 I played two, two, two times. So, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's have a look at uh, Magnus Carlsen against Levan mm. Uh and uh, we have a Catalan. Obviously, that was uh, the repertoire of Magnus Carlsen during the the World Championship match in 2021. It keeps on coming back. From time to time, mm -hmm. and Levon Arnian is playing the absolute main line, which he does for the last, uh, at the very least, ten, maybe fifteen years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, this is a position, uh, uh, well, which was seen many, many times. Of course, Bishop G5 is one of the main moves. I guess Bishop F4 is the. Um, now I can't remember. I looked at this so uh, for so long that I cannot even remember. Yeah, the both first both of them are pretty. Uh, yeah, I think pretty well established. And uh, an important thing to say here is that Levon himself is very much a, a yeah. Catalan player. He will he will know um, just as much about this position as uh, as Magnus will, and uh, it's and a choice which. I wanted to say it's maybe not such an obvious choice specifically against Levon for those reasons, because Levon uh, is an extremely experienced player of these structures with both colors. But then then again, this is what people seem to be doing more and more, I think, because the other options are kind of even less exciting. If you, uh, you know, we can one of us can give the speech, right? If you get to, to this position, uh, which is what you often get, Black starts by... You know, quote unquote, threatening the Nimza. Yeah, first he, 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 he was threatening before the game to play the Berlin uh, against <laughs> yeah, one yeah. E4. So that was. Uh, That's an, can, even, an even bigger point. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Berlin, so... and on a good day, you get the Marshal, mm -hmm. which is not, uh, <laughs> uh, which is not uh, simple as well. So yeah. D4 could be. So you go D4, you get this position. Now, this is a first choice uh, White is being faced with. You can choose 993 Bishop before and play Nimza, which. Obviously, an incredibly complicated opening with plenty of extremely diverse structures you can get. You can go for. And Magnus has been toying with some risky stuff in recent in recent times, but I think mainly in short time controls. Like I think I think I've seen him play the you know the Zemish type stuff. Yeah. And uh, but once this surprise is gone, and once you know he's playing somebody, and there was a question in chat. Uh, about specifically Levon being 27-35, which I think we should address. Uh, he's not had the best of years in, in, in 2022, and this is like, it really is a shock uh, to see Levon uh, rated this low. But I'm pretty sure Magnus pays exactly zero attention to this number. Yeah, that's for They've sure. been playing each other for 20, 20 plus years. Maybe, I mean, considering how young Magnus is, maybe not 20 plus years, but for a long time. They know each other extremely well and they respect each other as chess players a great deal. And Magnus, I mean, Magnus will be aware that Levon is maybe not in the richest, you know, vein of form he has ever been in his life, but uh, the rating will not really be. Yeah. The much class, of a factor. The class so, is yeah. still there and we will be there for forever. And they played a match. I remember a crazy match in candidates, I think 2007 or something. So they are mm -hmm. actually are playing together for at least uh, the last uh, 15, 15, 15 years, years for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and and I actually fully agree with you. Uh, the, the, some ratings these days are shocking. Levon, I can name my countryman. Uh, yeah, MBL well, yeah. mm -hmm. He's 27. I mean, I guess the same region, uh, 27, yeah. 40, maybe or 35. Mm -hmm. Something really uh, ridiculous for the uh, class. So let's see. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good test also for Levon mm -hmm. to start uh, to start this year on a, on a high note. Yeah, and my point was uh, there is no way uh, Magnus feels that he needs to play something strategically risky. And like the Zemish structures in the Nimzo will be strategically risky for White against Levon uh, because yeah, he knows Levon will be you know very happy to have sort of winning chances from move five in, in Nimzo. So you go knight f three, and then after d five. You're faced with the choice of 
either going for the Catalans or playing knight c3 and allowing the group of openings which include the Vienna, the Semitarash, and the Ragozin, all of these things are extremely playable. Queen's Gambit is not too bad yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, Queen's Gambit is not, is not bad, but I think <laughs> Queen's Gambit really... I, by this point, I think you feel like you've achieved something if they play Bishop e7, right? Because okay. you're yeah. you're probably getting some kind of a game. You maybe will not be better out of the opening, but you're maybe getting some kind of a game. Whereas the other stuff is really, you know, Black is very much attempting to uh, equalize by force. So this is why so many people have sort of gravitated towards playing uh, playing the Catalan. And yes, they're playing the absolute main line. We'll of course be keeping an eye on this because it is uh, kind of a, the, the marquee event in the and field. Yeah, you, you may be surprised that people, uh, I mean, the players are taking their time, but uh, it's actually is a very classical time control. And this is the last tournament mm -hmm. with using, with the World Championship uh, uh, cycle, uh, with using this time control. So maybe we can we can remind it, it's uh, 140 for the first 40 moves and you have 50 minutes for the next uh, 20 moves, 15 minutes to end uh, the game, and of course uh, the increment, 30 move increment, mm -hmm. uh, 30, 30 move, 30 second increment for move one, which we used yeah, to play that in Bundesliga, but even in Bundesliga, <laughs> they kind of stopped uh, that for uh, for faster time control. So this is really the last. Uh, yeah, it is. Tournament. It is the absolute, the absolute uh, last proper seven-hour tournament in the world, which is. I mean, on the one hand, you're sort of happy that you, you, this art form remains, but on the other, yeah, this is very, very grueling, very... Uh, and people will not, in particular, I think the younger generation will not have almost any experience with it. So exactly. it's, it's interesting to see how they deal with it. And but from, you say, from this... <clears throat> go on. Sorry, sorry. No, and you stay there for three weeks. Which yeah. uh, I mean, uh, make uh, uh, it, it makes your point even more valid that uh, for the young guys, I mean, it's just a revolution actually. You mm -hmm. you, you you play this uh, very long uh, ganpa uh, time control, and you stay there for for three weeks. You have to play every day. You have three days even. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy for the younger generation. Where I used to play, let's say, this guy Gukesh who uh, mainly uh, played open, open tournament so far. Sometimes you play a couple of rounds a day, uh, even. So for him, it's a totally new experience. Yeah, uh, for sure. And uh, from the very, very classical Catalan in round one, we I, I thought I will show our viewers something, something else altogether. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is our game between uh, Richard Rapport and... Uh, uh, Norebek Abdusatorov, one of the uh, younger generation playing against. And Richard is in this kind of an in-between in between zone. He obviously isn't old at all, but, uh, you know, compared to half the field here, he will feel like a bit of an elder statesman. Uh, and he is doing something uh, very quirky, uh, which is the sort of the other Vienna. Uh, and I think I was asked this question recently, and realized I've never thought about this. Is Vienna the only city that has two openings named after it? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. I need to think about it. Uh, because this, would... is, this is the Vienna, right? And the other thing is Sotia the Vienna Sotia as well. Sotiris will, will know about it M much mm. more. It will be better for this kind of stuff than... Uh, ah, Le uh, Leningrad, the, the, Leningrad the, the, as well. Yeah, there is... Uh, uh -huh. Leningrad, we... but hang on, Leningrad Dutch and Leningrad what else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, yeah, it, maybe. it, it maybe. actually might be, yeah. Yeah. London and anti London. But that's, yeah, that doesn't no, really that's count. The same. That, no, that's no, different. That's... Yeah, that's different. <clears throat> uh, and uh, Nottebeck replies quite confidently with d5, fe, knight, knight takes e4, which is what you're supposed to be doing here. Uh, Richard goes queen f3, which is already a move I don't really know anything about. At I, all. I know I know something about that mm -hmm. because I'm checking on a daily basis the chessable course of our friend. Jan Gustafsson, okay. uh, so chessable.com uh, slash Jan, and he's recommending F5, so maybe Nordi mm. Nordibek is doing the same than me. Every morning you check some lines of uh, of Jan uh, Chessable course, and F5 is a recommendation there. Uh, I remember that very clearly. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so so F5, uh, Richard and goes he's, D3. And he's claiming that black is better, I think. Mm. Really. And uh... D3, I mean, you, you can understand because 
it looks like if you play d4, you have this very nice protected passer on e5 by move six, but this is such an annoying piece, and black can probably maybe even c5 is playable. But even if you don't go c5, even if you do something like this, I don't know, and then you can castle either side. And knight on, knight on e4 is just such a beautiful, uh, beautiful piece for black. So getting rid of it makes sense. So he goes d3, takes, takes. And Nodibek immediately goes d5, d4 here, uh, preventing White from connecting the structure here. And, trying to uh, punish, trying to punish as yeah, well. Yeah. It, could, it could go very fast. I mean, if, if you, let's say, uh, you place your, most of your uh, takes on d4, I mean, you lose a pawn immediately. I mean, this is also bishop before check, but queen takes d4 is enough to, to stop. So I'm really trying to take on c3. Mm -hmm. and it's not completely clear if you go knight e2, then I, I, I would just take, I guess. And uh, G3 you know, is playable, but also, like, what's the reply to Knight C6? Yeah, yeah, no, of course, I'm attacking E5. It's a, it looks already completely lost. I mean, how you are going to develop this bishop on I'm F1? not sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, this is this is not a very proud piece on F1. And this, I think, is a, maybe the biggest problem you have. E5 is weak, but also by stopping D3, D4, Black has more or less completely. Uh, denied you any good opportunity to develop this bishop on f1. So bishop b2 is knight c6 or bishop d2. Bishop d2 or bishop b2, same story. Maybe maybe knight we actually c6. have to go for some gambit stuff, right? Like something like queen f2. Okay, know, let me. Uh, knight c6, knight, knight f3. Knight f3. Yeah. Um, okay. Basically, this is the position I want to get. My problem is, I think it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> like bishop e6, queen d7, long castles, put the bishop on d5. Like this is not going to be pretty. Yeah, but at least no. I will have. To, at least I get squares for this bishop on f1. Yeah, I don't know what to. Yeah, that's why you don't do <laughs> such things uh, normally. Let's see if uh, Richie, uh, Richie starts to think, which is already a, a bad sign. A bit alarming, uh, yeah. Because a bit alarming. It looks very logical what uh, mm -hmm. what uh, Noddy Beck did. Um, yeah, let's see. It will be. It will be interesting. Uh, Always Richie, we can we can comment on Richie. Also, twenty seven forty, it's it's very low for him. Mm -hmm. um, didn't do well uh, last year. The candidates uh, didn't go well. Uh, of course, he qualified from the Grand Prix, but uh, no. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's... it's it's difficult to argue that last year was a complete disaster because he did qualify from an yeah. extremely extremely difficult field in the Grand Prix by, uh, you know, getting to the final twice right. and winning one. Um, but the uh, rating, the rating, uh, yeah, is, the rating uh, definitely does does make that argument for us. Uh, and generally, I think he's not doing too well in in Vike. Actually, I was I was with him one year. Mm. Uh, I was helping him in two thousand fourteen, I think. Uh, and it was it it was very difficult. I, I was checking some Budapest Gambit. <laughs> then uh, the next day, another <laughs> another light d6, knight c6. It was always, but it was so tough because these people they don't they don't uh, forgive you. Uh, it did beat, and I think it it was it was actually uh, something bad uh, that happens to him. Uh, in round two, he beat uh, Boris Gelfand in uh, Budapest Gambit. Mm. And then it was, you know, um, a boost of confidence, which is good, but also, you know, uh, thinking that you can you can get away with such openings against uh, the top players, which I don't think is the case. And so, in a way, it was a victory, but uh, maybe, maybe not such good news uh, actually. Uh, and he finished in a big minus. Uh, but okay, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what what Richie does. I'm still I'm still a fan, and it will be fun. It will be a fun game to to watch. Uh, that's for sure. What else do we have, uh, Peter? Um, uh, yeah, we have plenty of games, and it's difficult to choose. Ding, one. maybe uh, ding. Let's go for ding. Uh, yeah, the challenger sure. for the World Championship match. Um, it's black. Black against Gukesh, and we see a Queen's Indian, which is very rare. It used to be the main opening in, in this uh, top tournaments, but not we don't see it anymore. Yeah, it's it's sort of it's not exactly disappeared, but uh, it's become much less popular. I I'm guessing, and this is for me, you know, I I'm not really a proper D4 player. I used to like I used to be a purely a one E4 player, and then I tried to teach myself. Uh, 
uh, other first moves. And I've uh, I've learned something, but I'm still, you know, I don't count myself as a 1d4 player. So it's hard for me to judge. But I think it's mainly, uh, it's kind of a combination of, of two things. Uh, the Queen's Indian itself maybe is not as geared towards immediate equality as some other openings. And also people have learned that playing sort of much more forcing things against 1d4 just produces better results in terms of uh, gaining sort of easily understandable nice positions by move uh, by move 15, move move 20. And I think it's a kind of a fashionable thing. It, it's it's not like the Queen's Indian got refuted. Uh, no. It's still a, an extremely solid opening, which will not really, uh, you know, lead you into too much trouble, at least not in my understanding. But uh, the existence of all the other options, uh, you know, the, the other options being the ones that we named, like this group of openings started, started starting with like Rogozin and uh, the Vienna. And in, in particular, I think in recent years, the semi Uh A lot of people just thought, why should I play strategically complex positions where where I might actually be a little bit worse? Yeah, if I can, it, uh, yeah. So if I can just make a forest draw in many cases. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I it's a very good point. And now it almost feels that the Queen's Indian in some sink. Uh, you you will play for a win. Uh, well, let's say uh, yeah, you, you play a much <laughs> Weirdly, uh, lower yeah. rated. Uh, it's a very solid opening, but it's something you would play. Uh, you know, to try to 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 confuse and to create to create a, a real battle uh, mm -hmm. out of, out of the opening, and uh, well, is that something you see just to to get uh, things uh, more you know uh, more complex? And mm -hmm. actually, it's very surprising because it, it used to be the, the one of the most uh, solid openings, but that now there's especially the Sumitash or Agosin, which became very forced stuff and uh, while well, drawing weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, so talking about this specific position, uh, we can show the viewers how we got here. This is sort of the old main line. Bishop a6 and white goes b3, queen c2, sometimes, and many of us still remember those really beautiful alpha zero games after queen c2 where with the, with the piece of pawn sacrifices and peace sacrifices later. But b3 still is the main move here. And... Uh, uh, I think... Yeah, and this is where I don't really know that the, the move orders so well. But I've been staring at the position they have on the board right now for a while. Yeah, this is I'm, very normal. I'm wondering, and once again, this is because I'm stupid and don't know the opening. Why exactly can't we take on C4? Well, that's... Um, you mean knight, knight E5, queen takes D4? Or what? No, I just... I mean, queen D4 ah, also C6, exists, yeah. but, but like, just, just play C6 here and uh, claim that the D4 pawn is still hanging. A kind of a you know very naive question, which I think is still sort of legitimate. Uh, I fully agree. Um, I fully agree. I don't know. You simply don't take that pawn. I, I don't know why. <laughs> simply, <laughs> your computer is showing uh, certainly some 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 big edge for white. Yeah, probably, um, probably. But we don't we don't need to discuss it anymore because yeah. after some thought, uh, Ding decide, decides just to make a very normal. Kind of a quiet move for now, c7, c6. Now I guess the pawn does hang because it is, after all, a, a central pawn. White always gets some compensation for it, but uh, it's an important pawn. cd5, cd5, I think, immediately uh, equalizes No, but it's it. true that, that, that Sotiris, Sotiris has a good point that normally you start with c6, d5. Actually, in the yeah. old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, but is, this is why I was a bit on, confused. On, yeah. on move 8, uh, you, go, you go c6 and you play d5, just making sure... That, that actually, uh, as long as the knight is on b8, uh, making sure that you can take back on d5 with a 6-6 six, six pawn, because then uh, you would get a nice square for, for your knight on c6. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the yeah. whole uh, concept. That's why, and you keep as well after knight e5, uh, let's say in that position, mm -hmm. generally you go, if it's possible, you you you, you would go knight fd7. Yeah, yeah. To, to knight fd7 sure. both here, and also I wanted to argue that uh, if knight e5 here, we, I mean, DC5 exists, sorry, DC4 exists, but I will go Knight FD7 here quite happily yeah. as well. Uh, just That's a very, a very thing. normal maneuver here, get, kicking the, the Knight away uh, from a very good E5 square, while the other one keeps uh, keeps an eye on this pawn. 
you uh, still have to 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 be to be uh, careful about some night tech C six, which sometimes happens, but not here. So you have to you have to be aware of such tricks which mm-hmm. exist. Or E four, you know, CD CD E four, but uh, here it doesn't work at all because uh, yeah, e- even uh, this is hanging, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, doesn't work at all. But in general, that's a, that's a concept that you 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 delay uh, the, the the choice uh, of the knight on b8. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go to d7 or c6 if uh, white takes on d5, which c generally don't do. Yeah, I think you you're supposed to just ignore the fact that c4 is hanging. Make yeah. some kind of a like maybe you just go queen c2 queen here c2, and you so say DC4. yeah. And we make but sometimes you know you can just you can let's say yeah hook okay, fd1 and mm-hmm. cbab and you have this typical uh catalan compensation you will go to e5 uh with the knight maybe e5 mm-hmm. 94 as well uh yeah you just pretend it's just uh, a pawn and you don't care about it um, not too much yeah people i think used to care about these things a lot more than than they do now. You see these types of compensations being uh, played more and more often in all kinds of in all kinds of positions. Like you, you see it in Slavs. You start seeing it in in Grunfelds as well. Like in in the symmetrical Grunfeld, people have just started giving up the pawn on C four and saying, "I don't care," <laughs> yeah, uh, and just playing as if it doesn't exist. Uh, which definitely did not used to be a thing when I was <laughs> when I was growing up, but is is a thing now. Uh, once again, we do have seven games here, so let's yeah. uh, maybe take a brief let's take look. let's take the, the, the veterans. Uh, Fabiano Kawana against Anish Gay. They feel like veteran because Anish played uh, in the C group even in mm-hmm. in Vikanze. Uh, is of course uh, the homeboy, so playing at home, uh, always doing very very well uh, in Vikanze. This is a traditional very good tournament for him. While Fabiano Kawana won uh, won the event. Uh, but sometimes he's doing poorly. It's more uh, double-edged for for Fabi in uh, in Vike, but he played many many times as mm-hmm. well. Uh, so that's a very interesting clash uh, for this first game, and we have something very surprising actually. Not no theory today for for Fabi, which is um, a bit always of a surprise. He's so well prepared, always coming up with uh, great opening ideas, and today he decided to play Knight FC E3. Uh, so, which is of course not uh, not something you would expect from him. Yeah, and this is uh, this is something that people do uh, quite a bit. This kind of a, a group of you wouldn't call them openings, but move orders, which uh, sometimes is followed up by b three, and sometimes is followed up just by knight c three, and then perhaps you you feel like you've triangulated your opponent a little bit into things you maybe did not want to play all that much. So this specific move order. I always did feel that it like it invites deep C4 so much because for me, and I used to play, there was a period in my life where I played the Queen's Gambit accepted quite a bit with Black. Uh, it feels like maybe the, the absolute best ever edition of the Queen's Gambit accepted because White already committed to Knight C3, yeah. which is not a move that you absolutely always have to have or even want to make in the, uh, in the QGAs. And we haven't played C5 yet, which means that if we want, we can postpone it. And this is what we're seeing uh, in the game, where black goes b5 and bishop b2, bishop b7. And if white goes d4, I have a feeling Anish will not even play c5 here. You go knight bd7, you play c5 when you're good and ready. Because one way maybe you can sometimes these days feel like you're in some danger is weirdly in these end games, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. actually, that, that is a big... A uh, big uh, position, a uh, big, um, I mean, like a uh, lot of theory. I played many games here. Mm-hmm. Magnus Carlsen uh, did as well. So, of course, you would go knight bd7 and you would get the, the Meran of your dreams. Uh, yeah, actually. exactly. Uh, there is no e4 coming. Uh, there is nothing. Uh, just you will play c5 next move or mm-hmm. bishop b7, c5, uh, whatever. And it's not clear what white is doing. So, I guess Fabi won't do something like that. Yeah, but what we're else? expecting something else. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what. I, I thought A4, in some, in some positions like this, yeah. maybe people do people do those types of things. But once again, why on earth would you be better in a position like like this? Like, what exactly is ever going to be Black's problem here? Mm-hmm. Is very difficult for me to understand. And no, I get... you, you can go. Uh, you can go B three Bishop B two, but still, like, it's. It's just a perfectly, perfectly healthy Q 
QGA eventually, because I don't think you can, you know, avoid playing D4 forever. Can you uh, go? Um, let, let me try something here. Sometimes sure. it happens that when when you play Bishop E2 and you have Knight on 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 F3, you try to to go Knight E5 and Bishop F3 because the light square mm -hmm. on the queen side are, are a bit weakened by this move B7 B5. So but you can try that. Your, your, your problem is you will have to take with the Knight back, right? Unfortunately for you. Yeah. Because so uh, like in this no, position, no, no. Oh, yeah, you don't have I, to. I want to have protect. Maybe let, let's gamble. You know, um, it's it's weekend after all. So let, let's go. Let's go. Let's be crazy. Mm. Uh, let's do something crazy. Let's go f4. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I go bishop f3. And at least I'm doing something. I know b3, bishop b2. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I, I can mean. sort of see it, but <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not... still I'm still not sure I have to be worried at all. Right. It's not. No, it doesn't yeah. feel like I'm getting mated on the king side. Yeah. And g4. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, no, I, I never did that in my whole mm. life. So I, I let Fabi deal with uh, <laughs> with this stuff. I don't yeah. think Fabi is especially happy. But it's always the same. He wanted to surprise Hanish, but uh, with very very well prepared, uh, obviously. But it's not so easy. You have to make something happen when you you play knight f3 e3 on the first couple of moves. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in on other boards we have, uh, I want to say another Catalan. This is a kind of a mix. It's a you can get there via two different move orders. It it was by a Catalan move order here, but it, you can also get there by by playing the Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, so this is a an attempt not to play the mainline Catalan theory by substituting castles here with knight c three, d c and knight e five. Yeah, so this and is a very interesting mm -hmm. line uh, between two players who won, who won the event. So mm -hmm. one is not really a surprise, Wes Leso, one of the top players for many years, but Jordan Van Forest. It was very sensational at the time. It was 2020, I think, uh, and he, or 21, 20, I think. Uh, and he, wo he won the event. Uh, that was amazing. That was a, a big, big surprise. Uh he came there very well prepared. Uh, he played very well, took his chances, and beat in the tie breaks uh, Anish Gay. Yeah, uh, I think it was a very dramatic tie break as well. Anish definitely yeah. had his chances in that tie break, but it ended up going Jordan's way. Obviously, so, the uh, biggest the biggest success of the young man's life uh, yeah. to date. And we can see his rating as well. We are commenting mm -hmm. on Levon's rating, on Richie uh, rating, but also Jordan is very low for 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 his standard twenty six eighty one. Uh, he played uh, recently in a tournament. Uh, you were uh, commentating mm -hmm. in uh, Sieges and enjoying uh, tapas uh, with uh, Dodgy and uh, Jan. <laughs> so, but you, I, I don't think he was not playing at all in the first uh, tables. Yeah, he had a he had a very weird event, and he was, uh, I think, you know, I think he still finished on plus five, which was sort of just outside of the you know the main prizes, and uh, it was a testament to how he sort of never gave up because the tournament really wasn't going his well at all. He was uh, had some very poor positions he saved along the way, and uh, it was clear he wasn't playing anywhere near his best form but he it's still important to, when you you know you're not playing all that well to somehow find ways to score points find find ways to win games and he was still finding it um of course not a success in a tournament like like Sigis. it's a strong open but uh, jordan is a very strong player uh he would have wanted to uh to be uh above where he ended up but still ended up finishing quite okay and yeah, ninety five. You can get very funky here. There is a move queen d six uh, here, which ah, you played. Yeah, I, I think standard. I lost a game like this to Vlad in okay. one of the European uh, club cups. Uh, okay. He won a kind of a positional masterpiece with me with blacks uh, with black from here. Ah, but I think it's black. Uh, he played it with black. Yeah. Okay. I I took on c four. Black plays queen a six and then starts attacking your king, uh, your center. And uh, I didn't play that game particularly well, but they, I think they found some clever ways of dealing with this position so it sort of disappeared and the choice is mainly between c5 which is what wesley chose and also you can play knight c6 yeah. where the the big difference basically between this and the main theory with with the king on g1 and the knight on b1 
is that white goes queen a4, c5, white takes, takes, white goes bishop b3. Yeah. And, and white will, in some cases, castle queen yeah. side. You can which, which makes a very, very large difference. Uh, because, yeah. uh, shockingly, in a lot of positions, the king is just completely safe on c1. Uh, and it also affords you immediate control over the d file, which is very valuable in these types of positions. I think this is nothing horrible for black. I've had this a couple of times myself. I uh, had this, I think, against Hikaru in Palma de Mallorca Grand Prix one year. Uh, came close to winning that game, but Hikaru made some un uncharacteristic tactical mistakes in the middle game. I don't think it's much, but it's something. Uh, which is why c5 maybe is uh, what they're all kind of leaning towards, just trying to equalize this endgame. You're still supposedly a little bit worse in all of these endgames because this bishop is better than this bishop. But no weaknesses. <laughs> Sorry, no. symmetrical, symmetrical bone structure. Interesting choice uh, from Jordan. He's always very well prepared, so he wants he wants to keep it safe. Uh, this is the first round of the main event, probably for mm -hmm. him uh, in the year. So yeah, uh, Wesley is a tough customer. If you go at Wesley, uh, you know uh, Wesley is not the, the most uh, ambitious player, uh, at least with, with the black pieces. He's uh, almost uh, always happy with the draw, but. If you give him chances, he will take them, and uh, uh, he can he can win. He, I I can see him winning uh, such tournaments by by getting uh, getting chances as black and uh, scoring wins. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. So, Absolutely. You have, so you have to be very very careful with uh, with Wesley. So ninety six, yeah. So do you go rook c one here? Do you go castle? Do you go ninety three? Um, yeah, all of these all, all of these are very possible. My like. For me, getting rid of this knight by trying to trade it seems very logical. But rook c1 cannot be a mistake either. And yeah, you're not really, you know, aiming for a lot, but you are aiming for a little a kind of a typical yeah. small Catalan advantage if things go well for you. Let's in the see. meantime, uh, in, in in one of the games we were not covering yeah. uh, at all so far, there is a very funny position on the board which I have a feeling I have looked at. Uh, uh, at some point, because people were people were doing this against me, uh, and this is of course uh, a Grunfeld, an opening I am supposed to know something about, but increasingly feel like I don't anymore, uh, because the the theory, in particular in these lines, has have progressed uh, sort of very far from what this I'm used one, to. This is one of the considered unsolved uh, lines. Mm -hmm. This bishop c four ninety two, where there's still some life mm -hmm. into it, where White is coming up with some ideas, especially in connection with uh, at some point h four. So I don't know which move, but I guess as a black player, you should check f h four everywhere, every a single position. Yeah, yeah, pretty every much move. every single position. And yeah, so. uh, uh, I think uh, somebody mentioned in chat that uh, this has been played uh, against me, and I've been. <laughs> Uh, okay. Trying to because I, I I also thought yeah that yeah this this is the game yeah my reaction wasn't very inspiring I was in a lot of trouble in the game uh, so we're still following uh, sort of following at least my game uh, against? against Gukesh from uh, from the European Club Cup twenty twenty one and uh, yeah so Bishop B seven Rook A C one E six F three Rook C A this is all still you know very very mainline theory. And why just goes h4 here, saying, uh, yes, it's hanging, but I don't believe you can take it, basically. It's a bit of a semi-bluff, because... Uh, Actually, it's, here, it's not it's not a bluff, because you lose a queen, no? As far as I can see. Well, you can I include can cd4, cd4 yeah, in yeah. some position, yeah. So, and after that game, I did spend some time analyzing this, and I think I came to the conclusion that, basically, if you know exactly what you're doing, uh, this pawn can and probably should be taken, because... Uh, what I did was, I think I took and played queen d6, h5, uh, rook fd8, and after rook fd1, you're really not enjoying this with black at all, because you... h6 is coming, huh? Yeah, it's incredibly annoying. Uh, the pawn gets to h6. You still haven't really produced enough uh, pressure against the center to really do very much. I yeah. made a couple of uh, other poor decisions, and I was basically lost in like three moves here. Uh you shouldn't be lost here in three moves, but it's uh, uh, it's not a pleasant position to play. And I think uh, what Arjun is doing is 
uh, is very understandable. I think this is what the engine suggests as well. So you can take and play queen, queen h4, bishop g5, queen h5. And weirdly, uh, this queen is extremely difficult to catch because, I mean, the obvious point is if you play, I mean, knight of falls is the bishop. If you play knight, knight g3, let me get rid of the arrows. Yeah. Uh, this one is now hanging. This is why we include the cd4, cd4. Okay. And, and rook f2, you just uh, take on... I think we eventually just hide on okay. h2, right? We we have okay. the h2 square and... And you're safe there. And we're, okay. Well, I mean, safe is maybe a strong statement, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's still I cannot alive attack it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's I, 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 I can atta I, I, I mm -hmm. attack with f1, but then you can run away. Yeah. And there is there's all kinds of very quirky variations here, which you can you can try analyzing. Like you can... You can try playing, I think, g4 and then rook f3, trying to kind of corral the queen around the g3 square. Or you can do what uh, Prague has done, which is e4, e5, which very much you know, reestablishes yeah. the threat of knight g3. Yeah. Uh, and black, still playing quite quickly, uh, goes f6. Wow. Incredibly f6. quickly. Yeah, but, but uh, for Prague, I assume... Uh, sorry, not for Prague. For, for yeah. Arjun, this, this has to be... Uh, something he prepared specifically for today because I don't think he is a uh, necessarily no. a, a major Grunfeld player. I think, I mean, with uh, the these young guns today, it's very difficult to say exactly what their repertoire is. I think they yeah. play they it, play it most things, but yeah, so. but I think for for Arjun in particular, it's uh, uh, Grunfeld is not something that he does. Uh, a lot, I think he he plays the, the 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 usual group of openings, the the ones that we keep on returning to the the, the Viennas and the Ragozins. I think he does those more than he does the. Yeah, I don't know how how um, how good they they know each other. How uh, well they know each other. Obviously, the the uh, they come <clears throat> they both come from India, so I guess. But I don't know if they are working together or there is something. Um, something if they are close or not, but it looks like a choice where you know you play you play a friend, you discuss some stuff with him, and you try to surprise him at uh, mm -hmm. at any cost. So bishop f six probably we have to take back. I don't know to include rook. Yeah, I think on... I think we both are probably playable, but rook f six looks looks normal because if we if we do this with white maybe there will be some argument for not putting it back on b7 although it does look like bishop b7 is the best move in this position and uh, all of these positions are black is a reasonably healthy pawn up but the pieces are kind of all over the place the king on g8 now that the pawn on f7 is gone the king on g8 is not very safe i don't think there is any argument at all that uh black is better but okay I think the engine will uh, be quite okay with this uh, for black in particular, if you know what you're doing. And the clock does suggest that uh, he knows what he's doing. It looks, I don't know, as black, I wouldn't feel very comfortable with knight on a5, this pawn structure, let's say take on c8, rook c1. I mean, you better know what you are doing here as yeah, black, yeah, yeah. because but, uh, it's so difficult to play. Uh, let's say I go, I go, I take on c8, hook c1, you go back to b7. Let's mm -hmm. say I go, I don't know, some random move, uh, queen e3, maybe I want hook c7, you know, just mm -hmm. I hang on e6. I mean, what? Yeah, it's uh, it's still not not a lot of fun, right? But maybe we can just kind of defend queen d5 carefully, queen d5 or bishop d5. I'm trying to choose which one I like best. Yeah, let's go queen d5. Yeah, and you probably just uh, hook c7, queen d6. Yeah, it's not much. Yeah. Okay, I don't and know. We have uh, we have the world champion in chat, so uh, everybody say hi to Bunny. Hi, Bunny. I'm very, very happy to see him. Who, who's the world champion? Bunny Hopper. Uh, uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> he is, though. Every word is true. Uh, okay. So... <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, there's always going to be some compensation, but uh, then again, like a, a lot of material has come off. I will, if I get to play like queen d7, put the bishop on yeah, the yeah, drop so, the rook so, back, so, and that's so, that's so. Uh, uh, it's it's not it's not horrible, but of course, yeah, you you generally feel that things are still very much under control. <laughs> Talking about things being under control, yeah, th yeah. things are definitely not under control here. <laughs> 
like this is this is such a richy position for round one of Wyke. Um, I I really am. So he played oh. bishop e2 after d4, yeah. right? He played he played bishop e2, knight yeah, six, queen g3, okay. which is a kind of a similar idea to what I was yeah. discussing. Uh, also, maybe kind of hinting at bishop h5 check. Uh -huh. Like if you if you, if you take on c3, maybe we we do actually play bishop h5, bishop g6, and at and least we have we have a perpetual. Here. Yeah, we, we we should have at least a perpetual here. But e6 maybe, e6 is yeah, nothing. Yeah, actually. e6 is seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. and king is seven. E6 bishop is seven, bishop. and then bishop g5. Yeah. So okay. uh, very understandably, Nodiebek plays bishop seven, bishop e6 to uh, have uh, uh, a safe runway for the king and Richie goes c4 deciding that he can't really uh leave this pawn for one <laughs> but moment. he's not going to castle on the other end well the, uh, yeah the king is the king is going to be on d1 oh boy so how do we feel about all of this i hate white but uh the, the computer seems to you you have the evaluation behind some of the yeah it's uh the screens, and it's showing slightly better for white which is a bit it's amazing how, how is this how is this good for white but but on the other hand i mean the center is closed uh you have the king in the center but it's difficult to see how you you open it uh well luckily because otherwise it would be lost uh, but why white would be better here is uh, yeah, it's very confusing to me. Um, I yeah. know. Uh, as, as black, as black, where are you planning to castle? Long. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you put all your pieces on on on, on the king side. This uh, queen on g three. I don't know. You can go h five. H five. I would be a bit scared, and I would think long castle. I will be reasonably safe till the end of the game. Uh, at least with my king, I will yeah. care about yeah. other pieces. But my king is safe. This is a good thing. And, so, uh, like the the ideal plan, which I don't think ever gets allowed. Like if if black could somehow yeah. like castle long and get h six and g five specifically in, that would restrict white so much that I would. Like I would start feeling that maybe black is winning, but I think h6 is pretty much always met with h4, yeah. because white needs to have access to the f4 square for one of their pieces. Maybe the bishop, maybe in some ideal scenario, you can get the knight over to f4. And the reason I feel that maybe this is not as clear as it might look is I'm kind of struggling to figure out how black is getting to this king. Right, this structure is actually quite solid. solid. And we don't really have the pieces to challenge it. So in terms of active play for black here, it's mainly to do, I think, with trying to, you know, surround and maybe attack the pawn on e5 or this plan. But this plan will get stopped. Like this plan never happens. But what's the plan for white as well? Yeah, uh, this, this I'm not sure. <laughs> are we just saying now? Are we just pretending it's just a dead door and <laughs> nobody has plans? Know, like this, maybe? <laughs> yeah, bishop f3, knight e2, but then uh, uh, you cannot go to f4 because... Uh, not only... immediately, yeah. Yeah, not so let, let's let's go along castle. Okay. Uh, knight e2, let's go... First of all, are we, are we blundering this? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> at some point, right? We're probably blundering this and 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 just getting mated immediately. Yeah. So all yeah, of so my have... all of my talk of this structure being extremely solid is kind of dependent on yeah, the bishop yeah, staying uh, on yeah, its turn. Yeah. Maybe you can otherwise... go h4, you know, h4, knight mm -hmm. h3. And then uh, knight h3, but again, I, for me it's very hard to believe in... Uh... Oh yeah, and, I, and... I, I don't know why this is supposed to be better for white. And, yeah, and the main... Idea. One of the issues that the bishop on before looks uh, a bit stupid, but it controls the, the very important square on e1. Mm. Uh, that you would be, you would be very happy to to get a hook there, mm -hmm. and um, you really can't uh, if you play bishop d2. Then the dark square on the king uh, will be weak forever. Uh, so I don't, it's so difficult to play uh, for, and he just plays rook b1. Uh, okay, uh, just yeah. I mean, okay, it's, a move, it's a move that it feels like you will have to make eventually yeah. because you do have this semi-open file on the queen side and using it at some point feels logical. It doesn't really create you know, much of a threat considering we are probably casting long anyway, so b7 is not going to be hanging. But it's a logical kind of a starting point. And just to finish with our roundup, yeah. we also have this. This is a game between uh, Parham Maksudlu, who was a very, very late replacement 
in the field because the field was supposed to also have uh, young Shishtov Duda, but for at least for me reasons unexplained, uh, he withdrew very very late. I think it was about a week prior to the tournament beginning. Yeah, uh, I think which... he, may, he mentioned I saw on Twitter he mentioned personal reasons. Yeah, uh... but that 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 is that can be any number of yeah. things. Yeah, uh, and I mean he is perfectly like I'm not saying that this is not enough and he must you know tell us all why he isn't playing it's his life and he's perfectly entitled to be as private about it as he as he wants it's just that we don't really we don't really know uh we're not really supposed to know but we <laughs> we don't know uh, he played a lot he, play, he, play, he played a lot last year so maybe i guess uh it'll be tired but i mean okay we don't know uh <laughs> so yeah and he was replaced by a former uh, world junior champion max Udlu. Mm-hmm. Who is just uh, an amazing, uh, an amazing player as well. Twenty seven, nineteen. So we were maybe expecting more of him when he became world junior champion. I don't know how you feel about that, but still, yeah, so he. Good. It it seemed like he was uh, he was about to break into the you know the proper big time at some point, and it yeah. didn't really happen. Uh, you know exactly according to plan, but. Still a very, very uh, yeah. interesting young player, always fun to watch. Also, I think a very kind of a pleasant guy to have around, who always seems to have a smile on his face, kind of a very jovial, yeah. jovial, good-natured young man. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the tournament is... Young Krzysztof Duda is one of the most exciting young players around, and but it's a very good replacement. The tournament hasn't really uh, been, you know, diminished much. By no, of course, by getting of course, Parham, and I think Parham, it's it's very good that he gets gets chances because I think he is you know very deserving of chances and doesn't really get very many. And this is a a, a Reti which I think I have a feeling I've seen this line. There was a kind of a there was an online match which I I will not be able to name either of the players, but I think there was a long discussion specifically of this position in one of them maybe uh, in one of the speed chess championship matches where. This is a kind of a very classical reti in which uh, instead of what people do kind of normally, at least in my in my mind, like you, you want to put this pawn immediately on e5 if you can. But yeah, people but... people played e6 and people also started playing h6 here, uh, which yeah. may seem strange, but stopping bishop g5 is actually kind of useful because white very often just wants to get rid of this bishop. It's maybe arguably the worst piece that white has in this position because it, you you never really know what to do with it and just getting it to g5 and trading it for the bishop for the knight on f6 is something that happens quite often and also black i think uh in a way says if you play knight a3 straight away i might just snap it off yeah in particular in one tempo so i'm making a useful move i'm not committing the bishop on f8 to any square and if you play knight a3, I will at least consider playing this position. And then the usual. Exactly. Uh, but but in the game, uh, after rookie, rookie 1, bishop d6, knight a3, uh, Vincent decides that taking on a3 in two moves is much less attractive. I think it's a very sensible argument. It's obviously uh, just a pure tempo you're gifting to white here. Goes castles, uh, knight c2, a5. You know, being who I am, I saw this position on my screen maybe 10 or 15 min minutes ago when it first appeared, and I thought, can we do this? I'm, I'm the, sure the answer, the answer is no. Like, I, 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 and you just to, I, I, I wanted to do something like this, yeah. Isn't it too much if I take, take? Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess maybe. Let's, let's be giddy. Let's be giddy for today. Take on this way, I don't see What's wrong? I don't know. I was hoping something like knight c7 and then yeah, something home. will work, but it probably home doesn't. B8 and it's true B8, take... and I don't I don't really have a yeah, like, if you go this looks kind of romantic, but probably just doesn't work at all. Yeah. Uh but the move A3, apart from being part of White's plans in general, because you do want to be one and before, it also stops the bishop from coming to before. So now this pawn is legitimately hanging, and this is why it was, of course, immediately protected. Uh, white goes rook b1. And now uh, Vincent has a kind of a it's... typical typical choice where you can try allowing before. Uh, yeah, I and was... then, and then yeah. you have to have something, right? Because things will start escalating quite quickly if you allow before. 
white will have yeah. legitimate threats that's if, so, if that's that so. happens. That's, that's, uh, that's, so that's, maybe you can make an argument for something yeah. like Bishop F5. And if, if white goes before, you can make an argument for, I, don't, I mean, this actually just blunders stuff. Yeah. Can you go, uh, let's say, uh, A4 instead of all that? This is a normal uh, exactly, thing yeah. you do. Or you uh, can play A4. But then Knight you have B4 to contend to be... with both this and this, I think. Then I would just uh, go. Which is an A, attempt to dig at the e5 pawn. But maybe, yeah, maybe we just go rook e8 and we ignore it. Yeah. I was very impressed by Vincent Kemer. We should talk about him. Uh, mm -hmm. German number one. Uh, he played in the World Rapid. That was amazing what he was doing, really, showing all his all his talent. And uh, well, I'm I'm curious to see him here. I think. Uh, that's the first time he's playing the A group. He used to, he played a couple of times, I think, the B group, but he fully deserves mm -hmm. a spot in the, in the A group. It's really very, very interesting to, I'm very curious to see how he does. I was very impressed by him. Also in the Olympiad, uh, he, he played very well. So, um, he deserves a chance. And for, and for Max Blue, it's, uh, it's a nice present, of course. This is something you don't decline, a late of invitation course not. for yeah, Wyke. Of course but, not. Uh, there is a downside to that that you cannot really. It's your first top tournament, so you want to prepare properly. Maybe get get someone to help you, and mm -hmm. I guess he didn't really have time to to do that, or maybe he did. But uh, still, he didn't have one month to to think about what he will do and uh, how he will do it, and uh, yeah. So that could be um, that could be a bit tricky, but uh, sometimes it works out as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, what you're saying is just absolutely right. You you feel like it's possible to be somewhat underprepared because Wyke in particular is a very demanding field. It's a very long tournament. We'll be coming, like we'll be saying this for the entirety of the next, you know, two and a half weeks. Uh, but it, it actually makes a difference. I think Wyke is very special uh, in that respect because for, for 13 rounds, uh you 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 have pretty pretty much no easy games uh, at all in 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 years gone by uh sometimes and like some shots fired at Luki or or I don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, uh, but I mean if if the weakest if the weakest player in the tournament is Luke Van Veli, this is not very weak yeah. right? <laughs> no that's true. but but, but this year but this year there's really nobody you can target. There will be ah, like, oh, no no rest days at no. all. So you get <laughs> you get thirteen rounds of extreme high level competition. Uh, there are three rest days, as it should be, because it's a it's a difficult tournament to play. But still, you get thirteen rounds of uh, seven hour chess, and uh, uh, it's a tournament people do prepare for because you yeah. you, you run out of opening ideas, you run out of uh, steam in general, and. Uh, getting an invite, I don't know, ten days prior to the tournament, maybe even seven days prior to the tournament. I, I can't remember exactly when the uh, the young Shishtof withdrawal was announced. Uh, is it's not that easy, but also you never ever say no. I think in, yeah, in, exactly in, in, in Parham's uh, shoes, and uh, as, it's such as, a chance. As Jan told me, you also there is a uh, a positive thing about it, uh, Jan Gustafsson, our friend, he told me that uh, you don't have time to worry as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's yeah. uh, that's the only yeah, that is, maybe that is positive not even point at all. Yeah, yeah this is, you don't have like if you if you qualify. Uh, I remember I I played this big group and the winner of the big group, you know, he was uh, always a bit worried. I guess uh, I I never won the big group, so I don't know. But I guess if I would have uh, won it, I was I came close one time. Uh, I would have been worried for for the, the, the whole year, so I don't know if this is very productive as mm -hmm. well. But uh, of course, uh, it's definitely better to have to have some kind of prep. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what what what. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's see. That will be interesting to see, and it's we should, no, there's we plenty. Mention. There's plenty of quite quite exciting positions already. We have this. Uh, uh, Grunfeld with an uneven uh, uneven material balance. We have the very, very crazy position in uh, the game between Rappert and uh, Abdus Satorov where, um, yeah, I think the, the immediate eye test says Black must be doing quite well, but the 
the engine disagrees uh, and uh, you do sort of trust the engine by this point. Uh, yeah. It very, very rarely will just lie to you outright. Actually, uh, what, 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 what do you do here? I mean, you have a... Okay, I'm telling you the basics, mm -hmm. the very, very basic bishop takes e6, rook takes b4. So you have to move the bishop, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a5, a5 doesn't look right. So we, we put the bishop somewhere. And then, yeah, the, the question is somewhere. If you go to c3, exactly. of course, the main point, c3 is the most natural, but of course, I go with tempo, bishop c4, mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. I cannot calculate. So help me. Uh, does it work? Just take everything? Probably takes... not, yeah, because here the bishop is hanging. This is We, we actually yeah. hurt our own attack by putting it here. Yeah, yeah that's a pity. Yeah, D takes it mm. just king takes, queen d3, and, and king is run, running yeah. away. Yeah, and we so run. That's, that's nice. That's nice. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I guess we put it... Yeah, it's it's a bit tricky, right? Because yeah. even, maybe even, here... Yeah, maybe, because it's... But then you can, be you, a, can con yeah. you can continue kind of chasing it, though, right? Yeah, and are we actually to going to play that. b6 or? I don't know. I wouldn't be a fan, but yeah, it's not an easy question actually. No, not at all. No. And bishop is seven. Even you can, you have to, first of all you have to consider uh, queen takes g7. I mean, yeah. I don't know if good or not, but uh, it's a move. So you, you have to hook dg8, queen h6. Yeah, because and, b7 is hanging. Yeah. If if the pawn was already on b6, we would be quite happy to taking on e5 and, and saying that this is a trade that is very much in favor of black. But because we now have an open file and we've gotten rid of this, which gives us additional like diagonals for bishops and so on, but we can't take yet. Uh, and then white will probably just hang on to it. So maybe maybe you can take it, but you don't have to. You can just carry on with H4 and 82, what we said before. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's not an easy choice for Abdul Satov. I expect him to no, to spend no. I think yeah, I think this probably will take take another back some time. Uh, in the meantime, let's let's go a bit uh, round the boards here. Our Catalan, it's still a, an absolute, you know, Ooh. marquee matchup, and uh, also the engine hates this for black for yeah. some reason. So we we, we have what to say that here? that uh, bishop f6 bishop f6 rook d1. I mean something weird happened. You have the the bishop on h7, which has already been seen in such uh, positions, but it's very rare. I mean, generally you just you just uh, take on on the f3 here. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting you that take, you decided to preserve the bishop. Yeah, you play c6 and you put a knight on b4 and you just wait. Uh, that's basically a black, a yeah. black plan. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, and it's supposed to be, let's say, um, you can call, you may call it. If you are an optimist, you call it uh, easier to play for white. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are a pessimist, you tell, you call it uh, draw. So um, he didn't want that. Okay, knight be to bishop h seven, but that's a bit risky because it gives it gives quite some target and uh, it. it the bishop on g2 uh, remains uh, unchallenged as well. So I guess here yeah, 95 is a uh, move. Yeah, I guess the point, like, mind. we just and ignore it, right? Yeah, I would guess so. And uh, now... Because my my first idea was exactly the same as yours. Like, in, in particular, when you see uh, yeah. the, machine, the machine liking here with white, you think uh, there must be some kind of an immediate tactical reasons because, frankly... I agree with everything you said about bishop takes f3, but the bishop on h7 is not that horrible. And for me to make like a compelling argument against having a bishop pair is very difficult. I'm always in favor of having a bishop pair. So let me tie something. Knight e5, c6, and now I will I will uh, um, tie knight c4. I'm keeping an eye on your pawn a5. And if you have to play b6, you don't like that because you have your pawn c6, which will be lost or a permanent weakness. So I'm really uh, to, to win a pawn here. Maybe, what do you have to, bishop b7? Oh. b7 before is a way to control things, but I'm looking for maybe something that is slightly more ambitious. I don't know if I have anything more ambitious though. Ninety five in the meantime played. I'm I'm expecting C six to happen very quickly. I, I can because... also after after C six I can go Queen C three maybe. Uh, always same idea. I I'm giddy. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to take a pawn. I want to take on D seven and Knight takes A five. My question is now that I've protected against Bishop Taylor. Yeah, maybe seven, you can take here. Yeah. How take how seven. unhappy am I about this position? It's but I think five. I think the answer is pretty unhappy. Yeah. Yeah, I would guess so. Yeah. Hook the one f four ninety five maybe oh, that mm. looks disgusting. But this bishop r seven, which is not not doing anything at all, to be mm -hmm. to, to be fair. Um, 
And if we go queen c7, I think we can actually cash this in, right? Ooh, there is ooh, no yeah. reason for us not to cash this in. Yeah, that was uh, the wall. The wall concept. So if that yeah. doesn't work, uh, c5. How how is how bad is c5? I don't know. I'm trying to trick you. That will end in. Uh, I think I can even the make it take and then go because because right? because b6 queen c6, right? I, yeah. I wanted b6 queen takes b6 bishop d8. That was my trick, but ah. it doesn't work at all. Queen c6 anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even even here, queen c6 is very strong. Yeah, yeah. This is based on a miscalculation. Yeah. Um, so c5 is a blunder. So you just take the pawn and you come back and uh, well, it's just a pawn. So this is not acceptable. So what do we do after queen c3? Um, that I have no clear answer. Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I, I'm I'm really really not a fan of this bishop h7. Um, yeah, but I, I think we're not a. I think our problem right. here is more or less purely tactical. I think if you give us uh, as black, if if we have one more tempo to play, like if white does something that they often do in these types of positions, right? And we get to play queen c7 here. And then if you do the same, I will just put the queen on c7. We're, I think we're completely fine. It's just that it looks like we may be one tempo short. Yeah. Because specifically because of uh, queen c3. Or maybe even the knight c4 move is also very strong, but I like queen c3. I think queen c3 is sort of more. Yeah, knight c4, bishop is I, I didn't have any uh, follow up to, to, to be mm -hmm. fair. Yeah. Um, I really like this bishop to be fair. In general, you put a knight there, but the bishop mm -hmm. is also, also doing great. Uh, so queen yep. c3 just move by move, uh, super fast. You're absolutely right. And uh, well, they. They take it to defend that pawn a5 if you don't take on e5. But uh, take on e5 can I try being fanciful here? Ah, 97, you want bishop before. Wow. Wow, wow. And okay, let me try to be. No. Yeah, yeah. You, it's no, it's no, kind no. of funny, right? Because you can start with this. But you take on e5. And then you take on b7. Then you. But yeah. we don't like this very much, right? I guess black is just doing well here, right? Some some kind of a position like this. I would really guess so. Right? Yeah, like uh, it's it's extremely dangerous for white because if something happens on the king side, you just get mated. Yeah. But you can start, you know. I mean, protect it and before b5. Mm -hmm. No, it could go either way, actually. But yeah, probably not. So you go, it's interesting. So bishop is seven. Yeah, it's a nice tactical uh, shot, actually. And if I go, is knight c5 a move? Yeah, it def definitely take? is, but I think we probably aren't too scared, right? Somehow, like takes, takes, and I just need to find. Actually, because Aha, queen c7, knight d7 is bad. And queen c8, knight d7, knight b6, yeah? Oof. And if 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 queen e eight ninety seven, that could. That's oh, we just we, we we have actually lost material. I think I think you are losing. An yeah, we, we're we're just losing an exchange here. This is really funny. This is whoa because you have so many squares. Yeah, ninety five is just very, that's on. very that's very unlucky. You would complain forever. Is it, black is it the same here? It looks the same. Yeah, it's amazing. That's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, this is such a rare position where it looks like there are so many squares which are kind of okay, but they really aren't. This is yep. quite this is quite cute, yeah. So what what so what do you do? Ah oh, you don't do I think you lose material, yeah? Mm. No, you I mean black is losing material. Yeah. Queen C3 on the board, by the way. So we it's are such heading... a bad luck. This is very unlucky, I tell you Bishop is this is Bishop is seven nice. if they, if they easy to miss. Is yeah. going to play some weird move. Who K seven? Wow! Oh boy! I Has he played K seven or he played K seven? I'm. I saw it on on the. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So the plan is, if we take, take, and take, he wants to go rook a eight, and if knight c four, yeah, this is very cute actually. Wow. This is this is also very cute. This is amazing. Uh, Completely winning for black suddenly. Of course, <laughs> this is not forced. Like this is just yeah. a blunder. In fact, maybe we can go before and then try to play e three and then try to stabilize. I guess the idea, the only idea, would be bishop d eight here, right? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I missed that. But now I have knight d3, right? And knight c5. Oh boy. Doesn't look good. No, I mean No, hang on. Uh so this is one text takes. So text takes knight. There a5. is also ah, bishop c6, yeah. Oh. There is also this, right? Bishop b5 you want bishop d7. Bishop b5, bishop d7, bishop g3. This doesn't look very clean. No. Okay. No, but hang also, on. It doesn't I mean, look like a very Magnus solution, right? Bishop c6, it doesn't. No, so it's the first thing, you know, uh, in Norway, you take pawns. Uh, <laughs> the, fir the first thing thing is to take pawns. So let's let's try. I'm, I'm sure he's considering knight d7, queen d7, knight a5. Mm -hmm. As we, we, we would do, I mean, not only in Norway, uh, we do that. Uh, you just, there is a pawn hanging there. Uh, you just try to take it. You don't see a clear way. Is this, is this line with rook f8? Uh, mm -hmm. That you shot is very nice, but it's not difficult to calculate. Not not very. Uh, and thanks so... thanks very much for the raid. Let, let there be light and welcome to all the viewers. Thank you. Hope yeah, you're on nice Twitch. Yeah, 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 you're a modern guy. I'm I'm reading the the Chess Twenty Four chat. Mm. Uh, so... well, yeah, yeah, then then it's a kind of a nice division of yeah division of yes. labor. And uh, before, what, what do you do here? I mean, my next move is knight c4 and you can resign or knight b3 even yeah like if yeah. we get if we get this this is just like if, the, if this pawn gets to a5 it's black is more or less completely completely lost yeah. so you That's... need to do something immediately something like, clever you have you have one one or two moves m maximum here before Queen c7 yeah but what's the threat ah okay i'm trying to to <laughs> Stop me from Stop. yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm not that ambitious, you know. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's start by making a move. I feel like I always want to make. Or maybe I was was I lying? C five is a threat. C five or E five even? Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I like Queen C seven actually. Queen seven makes a ton of sense because are now you sure because you are in the pin, uh, but you have to. Yeah, but how can I use it? Ah, and uh, chat suggests instead of rook f8, you can now play c5. Oh, boy. But why? So it takes b6, and now the queen is protected. My trick, but in uh, walking. Ah, it actually right. works. Takes b6, Whoa. takes bishop d8, and now the queen is protected. This is very seven. cute. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks, chat. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So c5. <laughs> and if I go back, yeah, this, this will always have a lot of compensation, even if... Yeah, this doesn't look right. And wake up, bishops are now active. Wake up, uh, chat on chess 24. You didn't. We are getting <laughs> crushed by the twin chat. <laughs> please yeah. mention some good moves, please. So, c5. Yeah, it's a nice move. Wow. Mm. I mean, you saw it. You just, uh, uh, yeah, you, you, you had <laughs> so, you had the right idea, but it's kind of fine tuned. Yeah, it's what Koshnoi said to to prier french grandmaster he said mm. you see everything correctly but just one, one move too late <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah uh yeah that's the same for me um okay so that's nice um gosh now you always had with a legend of course i, I loved uh ah, this uh actually... victor but he, he had always some some nice comments at the end of the games and sometimes it was a bit i guess you 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 I don't know how, how how was it with you because I guess you beat him many many times, uh, and uh, I guess you 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 were his boy, but uh, still, yeah, not not anymore. If you would win a game of chess against him, mm. yeah, I mean we we were always kind of on good terms, but I think it it, yeah. it really helped that I lost this really beautiful game to him in in ninety seven ah. and ah, okay. and was very complimentary <laughs> to him after the game. So mm. okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. No, but I mean it was legitimately a very very beautiful game, and uh, the story is well publicized, but not everybody knows the game. So maybe I can. I don't. I don't really want to tell the entire story, but I can just give me give me a moment and sure. I will, because because the game really deserves to be seen more. I don't know that game actually. You, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll post. Maybe it, it will. I, I guess it's always the same. You know, I have the I have the feeling I don't know the game, and when I see it, it rings a bell, and I I remember it. But uh, yeah, I I, I posted uh, it in 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 the Twitch chat and also in our in our Zoom chat. It really is 
And and the point about that game, I don't want I, I don't want the whole story. But basically, uh, his position was very good. But at some point, he had an option to like get a very small advantage, but a very stable advantage, or to go for some really complicated tactics, which win for him if they work out, and maybe even lose if they don't. And he was okay. already this was ninety seven, so he was not a very young man. No, that's for sure. And he spent like I don't I I I don't remember exactly, but he spent. I think about an hour at one point thinking about things. And then he blitzed out the entire sequence until the end of the game, including a very, very stunning final move, which without which nothing works. And that was like the final move was the only thing that I missed when I was but going. Why did you resign, Peter? You you again resigned. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? I mean, that's true. It's pretty <laughs> So Chase can show the position to the viewers. I don't get it. I would. I mean, I mean, some, my yeah, instinct that point, tells we me. We don't uh, need to do it right now. We don't. Uh, we don't need to um, do it right now. Yeah, we will do it later when there's yeah. nice games. But I would feel I'm better here. This is my first thing. To it. <laughs> and you just resign. What? 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 Don't you take? Okay, we we'll, we we'll keep that for later. But okay, for later. To... Yeah, for for later. No, for sure, I mean yeah. you. You have to explain yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on a second now. I'll actually prepare for this conversation because I think we can. Uh, give me a sec. There is a way to, yeah. We do this. Yeah, you can add and a we pitch do in this yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's for and sure. And we yeah. do this. Wow, that's yeah. And I have it. Yeah, for later. Yeah, yeah. we don't. We do. Yeah, we don't need to discuss. It. Fabi actually did something uh, that we like. We discussed a similar thing to this, but not exactly this. And this makes some sense. Uh, yeah. We we left this game somewhere here, and Fabi went with a four, b four, and knight b one. Which is another reason why this setup is supposed to be so nice for black. Because if you imagine, let's say, how to not be too stupid here. Uh, let's say we do it this way, which is very stupid, but just for to, to make a to make an example, right? Yeah. Here, of course, you go a four b four, and then this knight goes to c four, right? Yeah. This and this is what and this is what Fabi is doing in the game as well. Minus two full tempi. Yeah. Because he had to play a4, b4, and just go back to b1, and then play knight g2, knight c4. This is still kind of playable for white, but your problem is you have this bishop on uh, c1. Yeah, if, it was al if it was already on g5 or, I don't know, on h2, I think he would be reasonably happy with white. But it's still on c1. If you play b3, you absolutely, you absolutely have to worry about something like this happened. Oh, even, you know, you know, a bishop f6. Or that, bishop. yeah. Oh, I mean, or that. after, after, and like after the, bishop. The, the question is, do you ever get rid of this pawn? I'm not sure. It might actually survive. You don't really have the pieces yeah, to attack e4, it. Yeah, e4 to go e5, you go yeah, bishop yeah, d4. It's, it's not, you go just bishop d5. Yeah, just, it, just, it just gets worse and worse if you yeah if you exactly. existing. Yeah. Uh, and if you can't really play b3, then... It's very unclear what you're doing with this bishop. I guess you end up playing for some kind of a plan like this. I think this is what normally ends up happening. And this is why I think Anish put the knight on c6 and not d7, because he is anticipating that there will be a fight centered around the control over the d4 square. No, it's very reasonable. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks very reasonable for, for black. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely no problems whatsoever, mm -hmm. but the game will, you know develop slowly and we'll we'll see and uh, uh just just to prove people wrong uh there was a question why knight b3 but why knight c4 uh -huh. and not knight b3 in chat and somebody said nobody reads chat uh not true <laughs> but also i don't really like the knight on b3 here i don't i don't know what it's doing because we've wasted so much time that i think the only way to justify knight b3 would be to eventually maybe play d3 d4 or to, or but, to but, collect the pawn c5, but you are yeah, far from that. But but you're you're just you you're like three tempi down compared to normal yeah, Q, yeah, Q, yeah. Q, QGD yeah. positions. So you're not really very happy about any of this. I think the knight does belong on c4, but you still have the question of what to do. Uh, what to do later? I think if obish p3 is likely, uh, and. Something that I, I want to sort of, uh, uh, you know, congratulate you on something that you said earlier. Oof. Uh, because look at Why what did Ding you is resign? doing. <laughs> look, at, look at what Ding is doing. And I think he is playing the Queen's Indians specifically for a win. 
Yeah, because or just to you know, not for a win, but just to get some practice. Because the guy uh, didn't play for for so long. He's not a big fan of this online tournaments, with, which is very understandable because he's a guy who's playing at five a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the first time and the only time I saw uh, Ding really annoyed. Uh, in life, in general, it was after a game, <laughs> he blundered at 5 a.m. And I saw uh, Ding like making some sign, like really, really annoyed. So it it, it, it gets, uh, you, you have to do a lot of things to, to, mm -hmm. to get him annoyed. But he, he wants to get some practice and maybe, yeah. maybe if he brings for a win. No, but play. specifically, what, what I mean is, just look at his next two moves here. Yeah. He goes knight bd7, white goes, he takes d5. And he just goes ed here. Where, once again, I understand maybe it's my uh, insufficient understanding of these structures, but like how much trouble can you be in after she takes d5? It depends. I, I would say it depends of a4. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a4, a4, knight, b5. But yeah, of course, it cannot be lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you're uh, so sorry. No, no. Yeah. He just, goes, he just goes, he takes d5 and says, no, no yeah. symmetrical structures for you. Uh, yeah. Let's play a, a very complicated strategic position. And See where it leads us. Some with Carlsbad, where you have this pawn b6. Yeah. And, and white uh, points Gukesh spent two temp getting the knight from f3 to d3, which I'm not really a huge fan of because now knight f8 happened and your pawn on d4 yeah. is becoming a little bit vulnerable because you're with a bishop on a6, you're not too happy about the idea of playing e3. Yeah. Uh, so that's, he's, uh... gone, he's gone bishop g5. And now, I guess, like the, the, the important question is what happens if we play 96? I assume the point is to take, take, and play three, right? Which, yeah, no. And, I, yeah, I, my I, question I, is yeah. can I play c5 here or not? I mean, I don't know. D, d5 is hanging. So I, I know. I'll probably take that one. And e4, be trying to cross down. But Are uh, we really yeah. this exchange or not? Ah, as well. Ah, okay. Are we greedy? Yeah, how, how, greedy, how greedy do you want to be? It's not our pieces, but let's take some some of them. Yeah, so takes, takes. And now let's try to, to close uh, mm. E4. Yeah, maybe it's just not fast enough. Yeah, like I, I still yeah. have some compensation here, but it doesn't look like I'm, sure. Like maybe I can win the, the material back, but I wasn't doing this to win the material back. Yeah, so. just to make a door and... Uh, mm. Yeah, no, that's not... No, well, you're so upset and he, because you have no problems. He hasn't yet, played 96 yet. What else can be... Is 94 a move? It has to be calculated, I guess. But mm. And we have to interrupt this broadcast to bring you the current position in the Carlson Aronian game. Okay. Which is very picturesque. Okay. Let's have a look. So after rook a7, Magnus, I think, found this c5 idea. So he starts with knight a5 first, stopping that tactic because knight takes b7 is a huge tempo. And Levon replies okay. with bishop e5. D5, rook a5, all very logical. Obviously, okay. rook a 7 is why we're doing this. To win the piece back, because this is hanging. And he goes rook takes a4. Which is the only move to... Yeah, which is the only move to preserve material balance. I would argue that this position is maybe not completely lost, because we have complete control over the one open file. But it's not great. Yeah, like f3, queen b6, a5. You're not going to be having too much fun here. Uh <clears throat> So he's gone rook a4, which is a very cute little tactic using obviously the fact that this hanging was check. So this is just immediately lost for white. This That's totally played. Uh, so the choice is. Takes or oh, okay, d1? I don't think there ah. is a choice. Yeah, like you, you play think okay, d1. Yeah. Okay. I guess you play queen b6. That would okay. be my, That would be my immediate reaction. And now we have this position where. Strategically, I think black is completely fine, but but you might get mated. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, yeah. If we somehow find a way to, whoa, okay, okay, he wants to get the line. Actually, he wants to get. He wants to, he wants to get the file. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, queen d seven or d four, I guess, and you put something on d six, mm -hmm. and you go b four, and. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, yeah, yeah it's and, played. I, and I guess this means that he did not really see a way to create threats here because what I just wanted to point out that if we could find some way to play rook g8 here, we would have significant threats against the king on g8. But the queen controls that square, and it's very difficult okay. for us to improve 
And black just wants to play like bishop g6 and then maybe queen b4. Or oh, rook b4. Or, yeah, or rook b4. I'm telling a lot of things actually. Mm-hmm. B2, rook b3 maybe. So that, that, that could be a bit tricky. So yeah, yeah. that's... Uh... So he's gone for this. Uh, so what do we think about this? Do we think this is... I think Levon is playing incredibly fast actually. It's the first mm. time I noticed. 125. I mean, this is yeah. uh, on move 23. I mean, many already, many questions came. Uh, he put he did put his bishop r7. I mean, that's a bit uh, uh, weird to me, but it's how he does it uh, at times, uh, playing mm. fast. But still, I mean, white is pressing, that's for sure. How much? Honestly, it feels like black shouldn't be doing too poorly. Like, I play yeah. queen c7, I assume you play rook d6. Yeah. I want to play rook a8, I want to play bishop g6, so that I never blunder some kind of a back rank. Okay, I, I go bishop f3, f4, king g2, h4. I don't know what's first. Yeah, so Bishop F3. yeah, H4, King G2, B4. You know, mm-hmm. I don't it's know. Actually, yeah, it's it's more annoying than I thought because the king is weirdly the king on G8 is not safe. That's true. Yeah, because if to... you if you abandon the back rank, like if you play, I don't know. Let's make some kinds of moves. I don't know. Queen B6. We go King G2. You play Rook A4. Yeah, and now and I not... play. I don't know H5. Which play five queen g two, and I start threatening all those things. This has been uh, Ajiban and uh, I mean Tabatabai, who just had uh, a very and then tied for second with Hans in, uh-huh. in Sigis behind my boy Kirill Alexeyenko. That's top. Very strange position uh, because you know it looks like Black should be doing extremely well because of just a massive advantage in development, safer king, and this king is still on e1. This knight is still on g1 somehow, but c5 is hanging, <laughs> yeah. and I okay. don't really know how I'm supposed to compensate for it. Sort of wherever the queen goes, I will just take on c5 next one. <laughs> so I mean, is doing something quite kind of funky, but. But <laughs> yeah. apparently, I, I don't know what, what what it liked, but it really dislikes Queen G8. Olympic uh, champion Sindal, one of the youngsters from, from mm-hmm. Uzbekistan against Donchenko, who was the German, uh, German hope was uh, ups and downs, uh, but very, very dangerous and very ambitious uh, young player. So that's an interesting matchup for sure. Yeah. Uh, Java here is uh, definitely, definitely the one to watch in the challengers. Uh, I'm getting reports of uh, uh, connection issues we might be having. Uh, I don't think they're on my end. On my end, everything still still appears to be working, so I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like we're back, so... Ah, okay, good. Yeah, this is a kind of a... Uh, also very nice to see, because these types of positions, they often become kind of... Uh, uh, not boring, exactly, but... Not very exciting by default, and uh, the way yeah. the way the way Java here replied here is well, like I think very indicative of what he likes in chess. Yeah, yeah just immediately h five h four, not letting White have a kind of a qu- quiet time of it. We also have uh, Irvin Lamy, who definitely will be the kind of a uh, how to say. I, I remember I was so upset about this. There was there was one of the. Uh, kind of abiding memories of me playing in the early Super Finals. I think it was 2000, 2005. In 2004, the very, very first Super Final that was called the Super Final, uh-huh. it, uh, Kasparov played in it. Kasparov actually played ah. it and won it ahead of Grishuk. Did he and play he... also in 2000? And... Oh, what no, I think he it? only played one. I think ah, okay, he only okay, played okay. one, he won it, okay. and he never played again. Okay. Um, and then either 2005 or 2006, uh, the field was sort of a bit weaker and there was a lot of very young players uh and me who and i by that point was kind of compared to the field i was very much an elder statesman uh statesman and the organizers <laughs> the organizers during the speech during the opening ceremony uh one of the uh one of the people in charge basically said that i will be sort of the examiner ah, you know okay. uh, <laughs> doing the testing for the rest of the field. And the moment I heard that, I thought, okay, I'm not winning this one. Clearly, you know, <laughs> if, if this is how if this is how you start the tournament by by announcing that I will be the one, you know, the one examining the rest of the field, this is clearly a very obvious sign that I will not That's weird, yeah, well, because yeah. you are you are 
28, so not even 30. Or something, yeah. Yeah. And and indeed, I did not do well in that. But uh, Irvin, I think, in this particular field, will feel like he is, uh, you know, the the teacher, the gray yeah, but he's playing, the gray haired teacher. He's playing. He, he played so many times. He played in the A group as well. Of course, he's been uh, invited every year, and uh, well, this is home tournament. So yeah, I guess he wants to do to do well as usual. Of course, with his style, you know, very well prepared, very solid, mm -hmm. uh, very dangerous guy. And playing against a Brazilian player, uh, Luis Paulo Supi, who is not very well known, no. uh, apart from maybe the the internet, where I think he is a, a very ah, well established, uh, strong him. strong player in in the shorter time control. I think he's a very very good blitz player. I think he also streams, right? He yeah, plays some yeah, I think he streams. Yeah, 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 and. Uh, very good to see him uh, get a chance to play in the challengers, and they are playing some kind of a very uh, sharp Catalan here, which um, began kind of quietly. Black declined to take on c4 here, played for kind of a slower setup with uh, a5 and then c6. Uh, but Irvin uh, went for basically a gambit straight straight away, like not not, not Irvin actually. Sorry. I, uh, Erwin played kind of quietly and uh, Supi uh, went for this pawn sacrifice with e5 and the position has become uh, very, very sharp. Uh, on on board four, we have uh, a, a dub of Tarash. Yeah, we have, as Black, we have Vladimir Ivich. I was very impressed by him in the in the last mm. World Cup. He oh, did yeah. very well and happy. I think he beat Andreikin and Andreikin is such a Tough customer uh, in this World Cup, very hard to to beat. Very good in faster time control, so that makes him one of the dark horse every time there is a World Cup. And he beat him in the time like that was very impressive. He beat another very strong guy, and uh, I was expecting him to 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 cross. I mean, to to be uh, much higher rated at that point, but not yet. I guess I guess it will happen at some point. And uh, against Yilmaz, who is uh, less young, I think. Mm. But he's a, a, a well-established pro yeah. by this point. Yeah. yeah, This is a very sharp line. Uh, the, the Dub of Tarash, of course, is this line of the Tarash where people used to kind of automatically play Bishp 7 in this yeah. position or CD4 and then Bishp 7 But uh, this is uh, Daniel's brainchild. And uh, this reply to it is an attempt to stop D5, D4 from happening altogether, to which... I think Velimir uh, Ivich is doing what he's supposed to be doing, which is this sort of immediate counterplay with h5, h4, uh, sacrificing uh, not one, as you will see, but actually two pawns, both the h pawn and the b6 pawn are gone. There was a question in chat why e3 was played here uh, uh, instead of bishop c5. Bishop c5, queen g6 is very awkward. Yeah. You don't really have a good reply to it, which is why the knight on the four kind of needed to be, uh, you know, ask the question at least. You need to force black to make a decision here you it's probably very, take on g2 i guess yeah what it doesn't feel like going back makes much of us much sense and then and then you make something happen but mm -hmm. what exactly yeah it's not okay. it's not immediately clear because no, like the, in... the straightforward things only make white's life easier yeah like if the rook gets to g3 your attack is completely gone and you are two pawns down after all so yeah i i don't know exactly what what the idea here is pretty six or something because yeah. bishop c5 remains very annoying i thought maybe some okay, kind of 97 knight of five but you're just not gonna have time okay eight may be interesting maybe rook you know. eight and just play quietly yeah, i don't know exactly who you don't care yeah yeah but still a very sharp position also yeah. a very sharp very strange position uh in the game between max Farmadam and uh, uh yargus peshach uh, wow. I may be mispronouncing that. I will need at some point to kind of nail down how to pronounce that name. But uh, that I was can, a cannot help you. Yeah, but so Nig yes, seven uh, Spanish, which was uh, seen in this the one uh, we were uh, commentating together for this Anand um mm -hmm. last round of the European Cup Cup. Uh, yeah, always a bit weird to 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 see that because. It doesn't look very natural. I mean, we have both uh, Spanish players, and I don't know. Have you ever played this 97? Uh, not in this edition, no. No. No, I, I played... played I, I, I think I played some of that stuff, where the knight eventually does ah, go to e7, okay. but uh, not immediately. 
Ja, ja. Ja, viel zu weird. Mhm. Ja, it's a uh, apparently. Behatch, yeah, I should have actually gotten that right. Um, Behatch, okay. Yeah, Behatch. Uh, and uh, judging by, actually, that's not right because uh, Max Farmerdam actually burned through a lot of time and his opponent is playing very quickly, but the position looks kind of ugly for Black. We, since we have so many issue. games, yeah. He's trying to refute with H4. It's clear. It's a clear sign. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you are just playing some some random cup to me. I, I, I will I will refute it over the board, which is very yeah, ambitious. Yeah, and, and this is this is what he, he basically wow. is just going going all out trying to uh, trying to give mate here, which I think makes a lot of sense because Black, uh, if you look at this position, this knight on a seven, despite appearances, has already made three moves, not one but three. It went here and then back, and uh if your opponent is willing to burn so much time it, it kind of makes sense to try and punish it very very directly so knight g5 makes a uh, a ton of sense black takes takes goes b5 uh they, i guess they, trying to they still have this spice for the game of the day he's, maybe he's trying, yeah. he's, trying, he's trying to get it it seems already mm. on the one yeah Okay. Uh, so the bishop goes back to c2 black goes knight b7 it's quite clear that pretty much Black can pretty much never take on g5 because you just get mated along the h file. So this knight can just stay there perpetually. Uh, uh, Max played queen h5, d6, and now d4, ed4, and castles. Makes a lot of sense as well. We wow. do want the bishop on c1 to participate in the game. Now the threat probably is just knight h7 followed by knight bishop takes h6, which is a kind of a typical thing that happens in these types of positions. Like if you make some kind of a waiting move, I don't know. It's difficult to make a waiting move, but let's say bishop d7. I think you just get mated yeah, by yeah. by this. That's a disaster. Yeah, uh, so, which is why uh, which is why he felt he had to play f5 to at least stop this from happening. And you are maybe threatening now to take on g5. Maybe I'm yeah. not. But the question is, sure. how happy are we about even maybe knight e6? Right? Yeah. That's like terrible you, you, for black because you are under the attack and also you have this as we you know when you are a Spanish player this knight on b7 you prefer yeah to, it's not great uh, <laughs> you you don't it's like not it not great yeah. uh, in general it gets uh, also like today is my day for like this fancy stuff but is this playable takes ah takes could be should be swim no no I, I, I want to take on g right oh, no, 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 then g6 I'll, yeah then g6 ah, okay. Uh, so no no actually my original idea was to play e7 first. I wanted to take on e6. I wanted to take the small pawn instead of. Aha! Uh -huh, but... you, you can actually. Yeah, I, I somehow. No, I'm it. not sure actually. Yeah, uh, I, I, I blanked on the existence of the move d5 here. Ah, okay. So rook e1, queen d7, and hope for queen the best. c6 maybe because queen d7 bishop ah, six. Yeah. I might be okay with this. But honestly, this is no longer clear because if yeah. you play something like c6 here and claim that I don't have enough pieces giving mate. Yeah. Uh 96, I don't well, I mean it's not forced. You can you can maybe make Can I go Q1 maybe? I mean, I mean very just, much depends let, let, on let, if we can try. take or not, yeah. But, but takes bishop g5? And then rookie seven, yeah, it's just winning. Yeah? Okay. It's so rookie one, can I play queen f6? It's legal. It's legal, yeah. It's it's a move. And now you want this take, yeah, to take on G five and play G six, yeah. Probably, yeah, probably. Okay. It looks like it might just be winning for white. Though. Yeah, like knight e six. Uh, you take, I take with the rook, queen f seven, and I play rook G six. King h seven here, no? Yeah, king h seven. I was kind of hoping I will find some sacrifice that works, but I don't see it. Yeah. But you don't need to. You mm. can even play Queen F3 and you have just yeah, an amazing yeah. comp. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very nice, but no immediate win available. Uh, and just to round out the group, yeah. uh, we have uh, the the youngest grandmaster in the world, uh, Abhimanyu Mishra, with the white pieces against uh, Elin Robbers, uh, a very, very exciting young player from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I think she's 16. And she's had a number of very, very good results, I think, in team tournaments. Yeah, I uh, remember we saw quite a bunch of games mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, European Club Cup. And uh, well, I must admit, I don't know much, but those games were, were very good and very exciting, yeah. uh, as you said. 
and she uh, deserves uh, yeah mutation. absolutely it's not going to be an easy uh, uh, an easy experience for her because this is uh, we've been talking about the field the field is very strong and she is uh, she's a very promising youngster but she will be somewhat outmatched uh, in this field and she will not have played very many players of uh, or you know of the caliber of much of this field before but it's sort of great excellent learning experience and uh you know provided it you know if it doesn't go well which it might i'm not saying it absolutely will but it might provided it doesn't really lead her to be you know dispirited and uh then it's very difficult to to sort of overstate just how useful playing yeah. against very strong fields is um, that's for sure as long as long, so you as long as you don't get too disappointed if it doesn't go well. Yeah, and also you prepare in a different way. You prepare more mm -hmm. seriously, so this is constant work. You have to, to constant effort, and uh, this is a target as well. So, I mean, of course, it's nice to, to get uh, such an invitation. Yeah. And and on the, on, on the final board, we have uh, one more local player, Thomas Berritsen, uh, playing the white pieces against uh, Vaishali, who is a very strong uh, Indian player, also sister of Prague. Ah, okay. uh, re uh, re relevantly, so they 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 travel, they okay. travel there for sort of as, How as a family. She? I should know, but I didn't. I didn't do properly my my homework. Mm. Uh, let, let's uh, check. Yeah, position position looks kind of suspect for her though, because. But you uh, know, I'm a bit uh, surprised. They used to invite, you know, uh, older people, but mm -hmm. now it's not anymore. You used to see, I don't know. Uh, Jan Timan, of course, Jan Timan won the A group, but uh, he was playing sometimes uh, the early 2000, he was playing in the B group, I think, or late 2000. Uh, I don't know, but we used to see more of a mix, but they seem to 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 like uh, to invite more of uh, the youngsters. Maybe there is more youngsters as well. So um, I don't know how how it works, but of course, the field is incredibly nice. But it's mm -hmm. always funny, you know, to see this. Uh, clash of generation you know when you see it used to be you know in the big group uh, like uh, when you would take uh, when i was playing in this big group i mean it was like you 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 take a picture with all the players and it's like a family you know family group mm. when you have uh, <laughs> you have the grandfather the father and and the kid you know so it's not the case anymore but it's of course a nice uh, very nice field and white is doing well right yeah, there's something something has probably gone a bit wrong here for black because you, like, I'm not quite sure, and it's been like their theory up up to here at least, and I'm not sure why. Sort of five moves later, we have a king on e8 and uh, g5 rook g8 on the board, but then again, if you somehow manage not to get completely kind of wiped off the board, if you if you can play it on a queen b8, and maybe get some kind of an end game or. Another ideal scenario would be like white goes queen e2, we, you play queen c7 and you get the castle long. Suddenly your position looks a lot better. Of course, white probably will not allow it. No, yeah. Which is a problem. Sure. But if you could, let's say, if you make some kind of a quietish move and 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 black gets to castle queen side here, I'm immediately very much on board with everything that she is doing in this game. I'm just not sure she will have the time to to properly consolidate because oh, yeah. white, white will probably work quite diligently not to allow long castles let's let, let, let's be honest you, you are completely sure i mean you are very unsure i mean like uh, you are completely sure she will not manage because it's so easy probably to not yeah i think the king stays on the eight for the rest of the game i think and this is quite likely big, yeah. yeah that's a big big uh issue as you, as mm -hmm. you mentioned uh yeah that was a bit weird this whole jg5 but let's see if she yeah we'll see and and this so. kind of this is our first roundup of what's happening in the challengers very exciting group like if if the masters didn't exist this would have been a tremendously exciting tournament to cover like a, yeah this absolutely could stand on its own and wouldn't need you know any particular promotion to to get people excited about it but we have the masters as well so let's take a look at what's uh, what's happening there uh Magnus Magnus's game actually progresses exactly along the lines we were discussing. We even yeah, yeah. correctly guessed Bishop oh. three and Bishop G six, which is in the right in the right move order. I mean, that's in the amazing. right move order as well. Yeah, yeah, that's just luck. Luck at his best. It is. Yeah, it is very lucky for us, of course. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Magnus has choices here. You can 
I mean, there's definitely some argument for trying to get before b5 in. There is definitely argument for getting the pawn to h5 because that fixes the king on g8 kind of. Yeah, and he does go h4. We continue Oof, guessing, this is how like... guessing every move, yeah. Do go h5 here? Yeah, I wanted to ask you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he played h5. Yeah, uh, okay, okay, okay. He played instant. Instant. <laughs> Uh, that wow. makes sense, yeah, because you 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 kind of dislike getting boxed in on uh, on the king side, and sort of the argument against playing h five would be if White like had a way to immediately teleport the queen to g five and just win this pawn. Yeah. But you it doesn't happen quickly enough. Like if you play queen d two here, maybe even queen a five is playable. Just trying to create some counterplay straight away against the e5 pawn. And if you play queen g5, you might get mated yourself, right? You. Yeah. It could go, it could go quite poorly for white if you do that. Um, so yeah, h5 makes makes perfect sense to me. And now Magnus needs to uh figure out a way to to improve. I guess before King G2. Yeah, before be, actually st stop, stopping Queen A5 does make yeah. Some and sense. So before I guess queen b6, we go king g2. You are tattling b5 yeah. as well. So. Which is why I'm playing queen b6 to unpin the unpin the c6 pawn. And yeah, I guess we make this waiting move just so that none of those things are a check. And we pass the move to black. But do we have a good reply to rook a4? Uh, I guess I have to, but rook d4 is a bit sad. It's what you mean, yeah? Yeah, I mean it's it's playable, but it's kind of backwards, right? But I mean it's still fine, yeah. I don't know. Still fine. Can I know? No, I can't do that. Okay. Um yeah. Uh, it's hard to say people uh, have plenty of time. I, I need a, t a technical uh, break. Yeah, uh, let's, actually, uh, let's actually, yeah. we've, done, we've done almost two hours uh, yeah. non-stop. So let's and take this... a bit of a break, drink a glass of water and be back in like five to seven minutes. There is plenty uh, to watch. Don't miss uh, the end of the show. We'll have Peter uh, explaining one of his many early resignations. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. That will come after the that will That so, will definitely come, yes. Yeah, so, okay. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Uh, round one of the uh, Tata Steel Y 2023 is still very much ongoing with plenty of very exciting positions. And uh, we're back to tell you all about it. Anything really caught your eye in the in the break? Around? Not really. The main game, uh, of course, is Magnus Carlsen against Levon Aonian. I wanted to ask you your opinion. Uh, are we in for another squeeze from, from, uh, from Magnus? Or how, how, how does it feel? To you. It's very possible. Uh, he, he's gone with King G2 instead of B4 first, but it's all very similar. I guess if Queen A5, we play B4 regardless. So there is no reason uh, to hurry with it. Yeah, I, I keep on kind of oscillating between uh, thinking yeah, it's too. not very much and thinking it's very annoying to play for Black. But actually, uh, Levon doesn't look very annoyed. I mean, he has one, uh, almost, uh, he has 15 minutes more mm -hmm. on the clock and just plays all these moves very quickly. This H6, H5 decision, which looked to me quite, quite uh, committal. Uh, I mean, he just played it in, uh, in 10 seconds. So, yeah, pretty much instantly. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was, that, was interesting. that was very interesting. And he knows, as you said, he has a lot of experience in such position so it seems to know how how to defend it but it's magnus so um, yeah it's always the same it's hard to choose uh if it will be a comfortable door for for levon or a long squeeze uh i'm a magnus believer so i guess i guess i, I will vote for the long squeeze uh yes it's just a difficult position to uh to assess because I'm struggling to, you know, name moves for Black apart from Queen B6, maybe Rook A4, Rook B4, this plan that we keep on coming back to. Uh, apart from that, I'm just really struggling to, to name any proactive ideas. But I also don't know how we're supposed to be winning this with White. So Queen B6, can I go uh, at this idea? Queen D2. Let's say I want to, if you go with the hook along the A file, you take your responsibilities, I will check you. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm mating you, but I'm actually I'm scaring you a bit. Let's try, yeah. Okay, let's, let's, see, let's see what happens. Let's go check and queen d6. Ah, oh, yeah, queen d6, queen f8 is actually yeah. This is very scary. That was uh, yeah. I just noticed that now, yeah. which is more than scary. Yeah, yeah it, it it seems like this is just winning. Yeah, because with the king on g2 and the bishop on f3, black is so far away from generating a single threat on the king side. Yeah. Exactly. And there is no stopping Queen of Eight. So this is completely unplayable. The rook probably just cannot leave the, the back rank, at least not without preparing it properly. Like maybe we can play King H7, but maybe you can go King H7, but it will be yeah, King H7 before and rook A4, let's say. Uh and now I, I take I, I go rook d eight anyways. I think it's just lost, yeah. Queen D seven. Queen D seven. Even D8. even this is very very, very quick, yeah. Yeah. It's very quick. Yeah, and, and basically, like, even if you, you could play Bish before and why didn't even have Queen takes F7, like, this is just not going to improve your... You know, your taking chances, very, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, and, and it just... You just get mated very quickly there. Okay, Instantly. so... So in some kind of a position like this, Black will be restricted to... Maybe more Queen or less B5. Shuffling, yeah? Queen B5 to attack on E5, trying to just to, you know, uh, stop you from being mm. too comfortable. Yeah. But I have to care about Queen G5. Yeah, this and, is the big you question. Take B, yeah. You take on B2 now. Yeah. Not enough, yeah. yeah, no. Okay, this looks fine for Black, actually. Mm -hmm. This doesn't look horrible. So we will play some Queen D4, maybe? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, some again. kind of a weird shuffle where nobody is really doing very much, but before rook d seven, mm -hmm. queen d six, maybe I don't know, and uh, just please uh, make a move. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, probably it will be uh, how it will uh, develop. Uh, but uh, let, let's go to ding because I see yeah. uh, it looks very nice for black. Actually, yeah, I'm 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 shocked it's not 
Ja, also die Evaluation Bar ist uh, mm -hmm. is weird to my eyes. So how I guess maybe there is a way to equalize immediately with something like night before. That would be my only explanation because if you imagine like some position like this, it's incredibly dangerous for white, I think, yeah. with this bishop on d4 and uh, the, the f2 pawn being a constant source of trouble. And like maybe you survive if you play really, really accurately in a position like this, but you're going to be hating every moment of it. Uh, so uh, I guess maybe no, hang on. Night before, before we just, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. we just lose to rookie two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so or bishop, bishop e2 even. Oh, bishop, uh, yeah, like yeah. What, uh, why isn't this? Why isn't this just bad? Uh, so let's mention that I cannot take on c6 because of. Can I? Actually, well, not really. Rook takes d3. Yeah, because this protects the yeah. bishop again, and if you take on d3, you lose. Ah, no, no, that's the point. That's ah, uh, f1 is <laughs> okay. Maybe f1, but... even h1. Yeah, yeah, even, yeah. Even and e e8, the rook on e8 is hanging. In yeah, both I, ways, I, what actually. I missed was that this this move exists and. Uh, Maybe that's the way actually. Sometimes mm -hmm. when your position is basically no, no, uh, white white absolutely wants to find some yeah. kind of an immediate bailout. Yeah. You 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 very much want to find some kind of a forest draw. And if you have to play like I would be also a bit worried about Queen F5, but I guess now we can play knight of four and, and claim even that this is a this is an improvement because and even have a threat here who mm -hmm. takes d4. Because this stupid rook on e8, which is very well placed, but uh, it's hanging, so it's a problem. Yeah, if queen six makes a draw, you should be doing this immediately. Because yeah, if you if if you don't do it now, you might never have another opportunity. So this is very important. And Are we blundering some tactics? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I mean some kind of weird back rank tactics, but I don't see it. I wouldn't be surprised, but yeah, probably not. I don't see it. So, Bishop no. d3. Ah, chess 24 chat is waking up. Apparently, Bishop takes e6 equalizes. Bishop c6. Oh, oh, okay. oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, ah, here, Queen f2 is just made. We're talking, ah, yeah. we're talking nonsense. Nonsense. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is just made. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Bishop takes mm. c3. Yeah. Okay. Now they say it's late. Bishop but... c6 equalizes. Oh boy. But. Yeah, I mean, I can I can believe the engine holds this, but this is a move that is not easy to make in a practical game, I think. Rook c8 what, looks uh, worrying, and uh, like many things here need to be very carefully checked. But I guess if it works, it works. And uh, the, the same argument that we were making about queen 6 just let's not blunder made in forward checks, but... Taking away this pawn, it's not just that we're winning a pawn, we're also removing potential support from the bishop on d4. Just not allowing c6, c5 is massively, massively important. Also, for... uh, winning a tempo on the, on the rook on mm -hmm. e8, I mean, asking a question, it's not that you can uh, wait, uh, you have to do something very, very concrete. So I expect, you know, these young guys to, to find, uh, to find always the. Um, the um, Concrete way. Um, yeah, and I, way. I mean, I'm sure Gukesh understands that if he plays yeah. quietly here, okay. if he doesn't do anything at all, he will be uh, struggling. So he will be calculating concrete solutions, and uh, Bishop C6 is definitely a concrete solution he can go for. Uh, in more... other news... Richie, Richie boy. Against yeah, Richie Abdu is... Atof. It's gone sort of along the way that we described, but after Bishop uh, seven, Queen G7 wasn't played. We thought Queen G7 was quite good, but or at least very principled. But uh, Ricci instead played Knight H3, B6, and Knight F4. And uh, G5 is not Ibrek's choice here. So two options here. You take on E6 or you play Knight D5. Mm -hmm. That's very clear. Knight uh, D5, I guess the plan is to play also G4 maybe. Uh huh. Because, like, your default solution, of course, is to play f4. But then, after, let's say, queen e1, we've given this bishop additional squares. Yeah, after g4, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, and now your pawns are somehow. I mean, the f4 pawn is hanging. Mm -hmm. So, it could be, could be bad news here. For, but for but I think the more principled question is, like, what happens if we do this, right? Boom. 
I think he wants to sacrifice yeah. this exchange, but I think well, he does it quite happily. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. F4 is coming, A2 is hanging as well. Um and Bishop G5 rook G8 looks lost. Yeah, exactly. So this is not a huge problem for black. Can we start with this? What's a point? Probably probably not, yeah. It's the same, yeah, it's the same position after Bishop yeah. G5. And h5, h6 is a very simple point, but uh, very important as well. Mm -hmm. uh, just pin and uh, win, win a bishop. Uh, so... Okay, so let's go back to this, I guess. For a second. And now it's... Even h6 is sort of playable, but I don't know. It, it might be a bit too slow. Uh, so let's see what, what happens here. If I go g4... You probably have to take on e7. Looks like you have to take on e7. I take with the knight. And you but you have to go to e2, right? And now we go like I don't know, knight g6 and then h5. And again. I but like black. This is a kind of a there was a recent game. I'm trying to figure out where that was. There was uh ah, that was one of the world championships either rapid or blitz i can't remember exactly there was this really really interesting game between anish and magnus right where they played this kind ah, of a french yeah french yeah this french yeah this i can even show that because it, it's sort of relevant they played this really weird french where how did it go uh e5 c5 right uh takes takes, takes, takes i think knight c6 queen g4 g6 h4 h6 h5 uh, G5, F4. I am probably... No, no, this is exactly how it went. Right? F5, G3, yeah. G4, DC5. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And basically, uh, at some point, somehow, uh, this pawn on B7 got to take on... I think it went B6, CB6, AB6. Yeah, something like that. And then like something was traded on C5. Yeah. Yeah, and eventually this pawn, basically the black pawn, eventually appeared on c4. Yeah, and this bishop on and the and light this bishop, bishop and white still had this bishop somewhere around here, mm -hmm. and it was completely locked in by this structure. Yeah, that was really and and actually. Anish Anish lost a game, lost an endgame where I think to begin with, white had two bishops, and the a3 pawn was an extra pawn in an endgame against two knights. Yeah, but this bishop was such a stupid pawn. That black eventually won, uh, uh, won that game, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, this is somewhat similar. It really has no moves, and it's going to be a while before this piece has any moves. Your position hey. with white, apart from that, your position is sort of okay, but you are really playing kind of without this piece at all. Yeah, and it's funny that you are you are blocked on the king side by black pawns and on the on the coincide uh, slash center uh, mm -hmm. by your own pawns, which is always, of course, a bit sad. You know, you want mm -hmm. to, to give this this pawn or something. Yeah. So in instead, he took took and he played rook b5. Very clearly, he agrees oh. with us about this exchange sacrifice on d5. Mm -hmm. So he's preparing bishop d5 uh, so that it doesn't really allow this, this sack. And also maybe even rook d5 in some positions. Yeah, uh, bishop d5 followed by e6 might be a threat already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, very clever by by Richie. Uh, very clever. Uh, yeah, I keep on jumping around, but there's so much happening. I so, wonder so, if Jordan did Jordan just blunder a pawn. Um, I mean, the the engine somehow doesn't hate it, but so, uh, like they had me, this yeah, position, they had this position, and Jordan played Bishop P one here, allowing this tactic. Knight f four, hitting the rook on d one. Rook d7, knight e2, king f1, bishop. Ah, even rook takes d7. Bishop takes g2 was also playable, but rook d7 is maybe even. even so I'm taking your hook, uh, so you have to take, yeah? You okay. pretty much have to take, I guess. We take on g2, and I guess maybe we play f3. Okay, just. Hang on, to... hang on, hang on, bishop a6. Aha! Do I. I mean, you fly Whoa. with your king, okay? King f3, rook d3. King f4. We have to go forward, right? And we probably get mated. Or maybe not, hey, yeah. 
have absolutely no clue. Nig6 King Nig6 is somehow it square. survives because we have rook c7. Yeah, we can't play king, king of seven uh, safely. But anyway, uh, king h5 was available. Oh, but let me ch after king f4. Something like h6 looks very interesting, right? Like h6, knight g6 is now a threat of mate in one move, so you probably have to play oh, king e5. And once again, it kind of hinges on the fact that we have rook c7, otherwise we get mated. That's but amazing. if we don't get mated immediately, maybe we're doing very well, right? Yeah. Such I mean, a weird position. We are piss up, after all. Yeah. Uh, we didn't take back on, on G2. Uh, so King E2 on the board, and now Wesley will take take a moment. Because if this works, it wins. Because you you cannot go back. If you go back, you are completely yeah, he's lost. Thinking. Yeah, He's thinking. You he's are completely thinking. lost. This is just such a better way of taking on G2 because you yeah. also take a pawn on G3 with it. Uh, so this is extremely committal. Uh, and uh, yeah, White will have to go to F4. But... Currently, I don't see how we give mate here. And Wesley no, also I, doesn't see. Yeah, he took on, and if, on, G2, he took on G2. So how do you get compensations here? You have to play F3, huh? I guess to, you play to... F3 and then you play some kind of bishop B4 and you pretend that this bishop is out of... I don't know. I'm surprised this is not much according F3. to what we, what we see. What, what, do you, what do you go? I mean, I'm freaking F2 and uh, your bishop is really weird. I mean, it is, but like n nothing will ever attack it on h3, so I don't really see why. I don't know. Let's say I go even directly, like if I, so if I want to. Right. F3 was forced, actually, mm -hmm. just yeah. not to. If you let, let the bishop uh, re returning to, to b7, it's good. Um, so you just play knight d5, something very. Or G five? Oh, I don't know how you how you do it. I mean, if I want if I want to make sure it comes out, I can play f four, okay. uh, and uh, G four H five. So like you can choose whichever way you want to do it. My problem is, I think I'm not winning this position. Like it's a nice position for Black, but I feel like White probably makes a draw here. Like Knight C three, we put it on a four. We're not really doing all that poorly. It's not that horrible. It's not pleasant, but it's not that horrible. And if I want to take on f4, I probably should be doing it immediately to put the bishop on g3, maybe. And if I go knight d5 here, you go bishop g3? Mm. How do you go? Bishop d2? Oh, that's it's so sad. Yeah, or bishop d2, yeah. It is It is kind of sad, but also it feels like... Yeah, not enough Maybe we're not losing. And... Yeah. You kind of want more with black, but I'm not exactly Can sure. Can I start with bishop h3 and yeah. see what you do? Yeah, always, always an option. Always an option. Even g5 was to play g4 simply. Mm -hmm. But you probably go king f2, king bishop f2, f3. Yeah. And, yeah. But at least I forced uh, king f2 mm -hmm. uh, before returning on, I mean, before going to h3, actually. Yeah. I think it's just a very pleasant situation for Wesley because I'm I'm pretty sure there's zero scenarios where black has any risks whatsoever. And maybe in some cases, if White doesn't play very precisely, maybe you can start playing for a win. So, yeah, Wesley yeah. will be quietly very satisfied with how this came out. A kind of a yeah, that's for sure. free roll with the black pieces in round one is exactly how Wesley likes to start tournaments. That's for sure. Yeah, and uh, in recent years, I think whenever you see him doing quite well, it, it often starts exactly like this. It yeah. starts with him... Uh, you know, playing sort of very correctly, not really doing anything special with black, and then people either, either overpressing or, or like letting him into the game somehow a little bit. And if you do let him into the game, he very much will push and he will very much create a lot of problems for you to uh, to save the game. Actually, then, I think. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's a very good field for Wesley, for exactly mm -hmm. the reason you are, you, are, you are giving. You are, there's young and ambitious uh, players. It's very good for Wesley. People are taking risks for him, and then he's very good in this, uh, mm -hmm. this counter counter attack. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's gone e5, e5, which yeah. is also a decent option. Like currently, we are threatening e4, and after king f2, bishop h3, we still maybe in some positions want e4. But we also very much improved our f5, f4 ideas. I mean, yeah, this bishop no. is just completely safe. 
That's what it's too, yeah. Um, can yeah, I, I guess we maybe go yeah, to exactly. C3. So if I go E4, how do you react? Just F4, yeah? Mm. No, how? How you do it, actually? My D2 is a move. I guess you take on F3, I take with the knight, and I... Mm -hmm. No, my original idea was to do this, but uh -huh. I'm very worried I will just lose to tactics. Okay. This might be winning. <laughs> Because it's yeah. surprisingly extremely awkward for white to keep all the material alive. That's true. And after king e2, like I go bishop g4 check, I drive you all the way back to e1, I go g7 check, yeah. check. I think this is completely lost for white, actually. That's true. That's so true. this is impossible. So if you want to play knight d2, I guess you do it immediately. Ah, uh, and now e3 is less good because... Because bishop g4 check function. doesn't exist. Yeah, very importantly, this is not a check anymore. So I think we survive, yeah. Yeah, Jordan, yeah will, Jordan will have to defend, defend very uh, accurately here to yeah, yeah. No survive, from, that's for sure. From, from Wesley. Um, yeah, okay. We'll see. And Arjun, uh, we didn't check Arjun for, for quite a while. Yeah, the, they, they've uh, uh, progressed along the very logical lines. This is a move that we didn't name, but I, I saw at some point the engine was suggesting it's a very cute move here, which before... And the idea, of course, after bishop takes c4, we're not planning fe. We're planning to go knight g3. Uh -huh. Because the queen on h5 has no good jumps, meaning that we get to take on e4 with the tempo. And improving this knight from e2 to e4 with tempi is extremely, extremely nice for white. I think Arjun's reaction here is very decent. Uh, the problem is the control of the seventh. So he immediately establishes some control over the seventh. Uh, and uh, yeah, this looks this looks fine. This looks like... Uh, probably nobody's better. I think uh, White's activity here should be uh, so like, sh should always be enough for uh, for, for equality, but uh, maybe not more. Uh, he went yeah. I think Rook C8 was completely fine, but Prague chooses uh, uh, Rook D6 after uh, some thought. This has to be connected with something very concrete because this is not a particularly good square. After queen f6, it kind of gets stuck a little bit. Okay, I can, so I can you, bring the knight. Yeah, I think I, he, wants I have to. To, he wants to do this, right? So something like knight c3, queen e7, knight e4. I yeah. would be worried here as black, to be, to be honest. But, well, yeah, maybe it's just super concrete. And Also, the knight is about to come out. Yeah, I think black is probably okay. I, I very much agree with you. Like in general, this, if you imagine white somehow, you know, becoming a little bit more active here, I don't know exactly what is the threat. I don't know, queen c3, say, yeah, c8, exactly, or, yeah. or d5, queen d4, or something. You could be in trouble, but it is three pieces against three pieces. Black sort of consolidated the knight, which was completely out of play on a5, is now on a I mean, it's not a very beautiful square, the, the d8 square, but it's doing something. It's protecting e6. It maybe goes to f7 later in the game. It's not horrible. I think it's pro probably fine for black. Um, they have both been thinking quite a bit. So at some point, at, at least, uh, Arjun was also uh, out of book. <laughs> but um, yeah, kind of an important, I think, game for, for the theory of this line because queen takes h4 is, I believe sort of the uh, the right way of dealing with this. And it also appears to be a novelty, uh, okay. which I'm sure which I'm sure many people sort of knew about before before the game started. but until today it was a kind of a as is often the case these days, it's a kind of a yeah. background knowledge which a lot of people do have, but it's not kind of announced to the world at large. And now people will have this game too. Uh, to orient themselves in this line, it has changed a bit. The so, so the meaning of novelty in general mm -hmm. now. Novelty is a bit, you know, so not the first line of the computer, you know. Yeah, the second yeah, line exactly. of the computer, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what the computer is uh, saying there, but I wouldn't be surprised that he's cashing in the pawn. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And Gukesh went went for for knight f four. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, as, as well. Wow. So he decided not to. I guess he I, I guess he didn't like something about Bishop takes e6 because 
I'm pretty sure he is not happy about this. Like it's, yeah. it's. I don't think it's possible to be happy about this with White. Like even after the simple C65, maybe there is something stronger. I would actually very seriously consider yeah, me too. calculating G5 but because I, I I want to play C5 when the knight cannot go to G5, and also just a very big question: where does it go? Yeah, I was considering that knight H5. I, I guess knight H5 well. because my first idea yeah, was exactly. queen G6, but then yeah. we have this tactic, right, which probably yeah. saves the day. Probably Most saves that. the day. Yeah. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe even more because C6 mm -hmm. is hanging at the end of the line. And if you go Queen H6, then I, I do my my usual trick. Uh, I was doing Queen C6, and now oh, I yeah, think yeah, this, should this work. works yeah, Queen out, H5, yeah. Rook D4, ah, Rook C8. Oh boy, oof, that's oof. a miss, and that's game over. That is actually game over. Yeah, okay, it's game over on the spot, huh? Okay, Queen F6. What do we I mean? Do? If if all else fails, we can play G4, but ah. Oh, then, then rook e2 maybe yeah we're yeah okay. we're not very happy about any of this bishop, bishop e2 has to be considered as well bishop f3 maybe Oof. but yeah this is yeah. this is very touching like just go c5 here and this is just such a poor piece huh. yeah and you control i mean you you weaken your the dark square around your king but you have such a nice bishop on mm. d4 it's controlling all the border eyeing on f2 Controlling G7, F6. I mean, what's not to like? Yeah. Maybe I, I, Queen F5 here to try to, you know, take on D4 and Knight F6. But then you have to go back, right? You have no squares. I have no squares. You just have to go back. You just have zero squares, weirdly. Okay. That's and then and then G5, G4, and you're in trouble, right? So Yeah, no, of course. I don't want to, to give mm. a tempo for free <laughs> in that position. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, G5 is a very serious option here. But even if you even if you play, you know, quote-unquote, naively, and just play C5 here, okay, you can play Knight D5. I will, I will go Queen D6. Even this, I think, is uh, not a lot of fun. Mm. Or actually, maybe even something like Queen G5 could be interesting. H4. I mean, oh, I can't. I, I ah, yeah, could take, I'm, but I can't. Yeah, that's my I'm, only. I'm unpinning the F2 pawn. Yeah, I mean, if H4 exists, I'm less happy about Queen G5. No, Queen G6 looked like a very you know uh, mm -hmm. lazy but good move. Mm -hmm. Actually, Bishop B7 is coming, and you have to maybe not Rookie Two. Rookie Two is the first, right? Yeah, Rookie Two. Is, yeah, uh, I guess I guess we go Rookie One, and we try to kind yeah, of uh, manage manage the. It's a nightmare. The threats, but anyway. Yeah, this is not great. Even just kind of a slow play like G6, King, G7, and then Bishop B7 or something. Because currently, I think the saving grace for white is the existence of this trick, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to put the king on G7 so that the knight has no checks, and then I will kick it for the Bishop B7. And yeah, you're just never equalizing. Yeah. So, so like, like my current understanding is G5 might be a lot. But if we don't want a lot, we can just get very stable a little with, with a move like C5. Let's see how Ding uh, proceeds. He has a lot of time, uh, 54 minutes against 20. Mm -hmm. But it's been a while he didn't play. I don't know how it works. Of course, you can play all the training games. Uh, I don't know how it works for you, but you can play all the training games in the world. It's never the same. Yeah. Than, uh, than the two tournaments, you know, with... Uh, uh, with hating at stake, with uh, you know, uh, uh, people watching. I mean, it's such a complete different atmosphere. So let's see. Um, it will be interesting to see in that first game against a very, a very strong Gukesh already. Yeah, yeah. there's so there's a lot of demand to, for us to show the uh, the challengers, but I think okay. it's it's round one and it's difficult for us to find the right balance because I think. Most people in general want to see the masters, but apparently in the challenges there's a lot of sort of very decisive things happening. So maybe just very quickly, uh, I mean Tabatabai Oof. seems like he is just sort of what? completely well, maybe not completely winning, but much much better against Atiban. He was at some point maybe uh, even just straight up winning, but now, uh, yeah, well, the cleanest solution appears to be. You start with queen d6, and then I guess king f7, you get mated somehow. Rook c7, queen e7, maybe. So the best that you have here is this endgame, uh -huh. uh, which is not going to be that much fun for black, just a reasonably healthy pawn up for white, better king. 
I assume in most cases you don't save this. Yeah. A uh, very, very sharp position on the board here between uh, Dungeon and Sindarov, mm -hmm. where looks like White decided to win this knight on e5, but, <laughs> but oops, what? no, no, I mean, but you will get some kind of a position like this, I guess, or maybe d5 first and then d5 is coming, or something, yeah. yeah. And yeah, how, how much fun is this for White? I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would, I would be reasonably pessimistic here as well. Yeah, I, this, this, doesn't, this doesn't look uh, very fun, but Dungeon could did go for this after some thought. One one good thing that he has for him is that uh, Java here is burning through a lot of time. This is move 14. The current position on the board is move 14, and uh, Sindarov is down to 19 minutes. But... Yeah, that's always a trick here. You, you have plenty of time. But sometimes you just burn it for, for mm -hmm. not much. And that's the risk that you get uh, to, to time travel because, you know, you just start to, to sleep. But, you know, yeah. Not sleep at half, half sleep and uh, spend a lot of time thinking, okay, I have all the time in the world finally. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the clock is ticking Yeah, uh, faster than we, you expect. Absolutely. Another position where basically we were worried something like this will happen for Ivich. Ooh, where, yes. yeah, like... We got here, and he did play this move rook e8, which was sort of naming as our choice as well. And then, kind of, he did, could not find anything that proved he had proper compensation. So, this is the position currently. White is still two pawns up, and White also is the side that is going to be giving mate on the king side very soon. Yeah. This looks horrible for black. <clears throat> okay. This even let's say you you add black upon on a six here. I still think it's much, much yeah. better for white. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, this is just not going well uh, at all for Vladimir Ivich. And uh, this game... Ah, that game is the most exciting. And apparently, he played knight f3. D takes c3, bishop h6, which is apparently a blunder. Wow, cb2. Just pretending nothing is happening yeah. there. I guess we go rook e1. And the question is, does black have anything... Hang on. But, uh, I was going to say this is a perpetual, but I'm not sure this is a perpetual, to be honest. Why like, not? Well, I mean... Ah, ah, this is at least a perpetual for... Yeah, I mean... I think I'm getting mated. Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I think the problem is... Yeah. I, think, I think the problem is where White is not going to be very happy with the perpetual here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so he played OK1, but... He played OK1, got... so we're not touching this bishop on H6. We're doing something else. Uh, queen f6, maybe? To put it on f7 in some positions? Yeah, it's funny that after queen f6, bishop g5, queen f7, and you cannot uh, you cannot keep the queens on the board, and you are just instantly many, many pawns down, yeah, many, many yeah. pawns down. Okay, so you what's the reply then? Bishop uh, somewhere. Bishop far. somewhere, yeah. Actually, queen f6 is really uh, hard not to play it. Mm -hmm. I guess we just go back to d2. We want knight g5 maybe in some positions. And if you play queen f7, queen g5 is actually not that stupid because we are very much intending to go rook e7 here. And uh, let me go bishop d7, some stupid, you know, developing move, finally. Knight here g5, or there? queen f6. Yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. Um... Knight G5 I'm also kind of tempted to throw in rookie six somewhere, but I don't know where. <laughs> like I, these are not my pieces, so I, ah, I want bishop e8 as well. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, this is very, okay. very good. Yeah, <laughs> actually, you can maybe even do it here. Yeah, <laughs> which is quite fun. Yeah, I will do it. Mm. Yeah, this is a mess, and as usual, the engine just kind of says equal. Easy. Everybody goes home. Yeah, I don't know why. Actually, I it looks. Don't know why. Um, I mean, if you don't play Queen F six, I think you like. Yeah, it's I wanted to go it. try this, but I think you just immediately get mated. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. You still have Rook H eight here, but I don't believe in it. One second. No, no, no. no this never holds. Yeah, no. I mean, Rook six and then something. I don't know. Something like this will end up being made. Yeah, that's for sure. Like experience tells you that this is made. I don't know exactly how, but experience does tell you that this is made. 
Um, yeah, Queen of Six played, obviously. They have nothing else really made any sense. And this, this is a this is a position you could very happily analyze, provided you don't use the engine, because the engine will actually <laughs> tell you what the answer is. But if you do, if you're not using the engine, you could spend basically any amount of time on this position. I don't know. This is a book which was extremely popular when I was growing up uh, here, but I don't know how popular it is outside of uh, the, the Russian translation. There is this this book called Parkinson Laws, which is a kind of a, a kind of a spoof uh, sociological book on sort of how societies and companies and organizations work. And one of the Parkinson laws states work will always occupy exactly the amount of time allotted for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically, if you give us two hours to discuss this position, we will very happily discuss it for two hours. <laughs> if you give us two minutes, we can also say something in two minutes. But yeah, this is, I think, very much a, a, a case in point. Yeah. Yeah, that's let's... well known throughout the US and Europe, says Benjamin uh, Benjamin H. USA. Yeah, good. Uh, it's a very good book. It was one okay. of my, one of the, the, the favorites of my adolescents. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good rule, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's Just very not, true. Not, it's very yeah, it's true. very true. And uh, it's kind of unfortunate that it's so true because very often, uh, like after you've done the work, you realize you could have done it like immediately three weeks ago and like i don't know how how you deal with deadlines but me and deadlines Oof. are not yeah no 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 no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. chessable is uh <laughs> discovering that yeah. <laughs> yeah. i apologize again exactly, uh, yeah. I, i'm really sorry about that uh yeah no uh, i don't know how how late was your chessable course who knows but very late <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's difficult to put into numbers, but yeah, extremely, no, extremely what is late. good is good that, uh, that they seem to be used to it, you know? Like, mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, know. they, they, they I have don't been know. there. They have been there before. Yeah, you're not I the don't first know. one, Laurent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I heard many stories. Um, it would be, I, I guess, faster to, to name the people who, who delivered it uh, mm. in time. Because yeah, you don't realize uh, the amount of work mm. uh, actually it is. So. And before we go back to the masters, I was saying how uh, Queen D6 was a kind of a nice and easy solution, but it was nice and easy because I, I will just switch it off. I have uh, I don't have the engine running on my main screen, but I have more screens around me, and I was kind of lazily running an engine specifically on the challengers tab in my on my other laptop, which is why I knew Queen D6 was very strong. And I'm in Tavatabai, who is really doesn't really have a problem with tactical, you know, awareness, generally. Yeah. Spent some time here and did not play it, played Queen D8, which is maybe a little bit shockingly, but is significantly weaker for some... I mean, I guess, I, can, I guess you can see how the knight on D6 is just much better than on D8. And uh, after Rook C7, knight of 2, king of 2, it still looks like it should be better, but the engine, for some reason, argues very, very confidently that this is much weaker and black should actually hold here how i don't i don't i don't quite understand why maybe bishop takes h3 works somewhere yeah but you have to find a very strong i mean like bishop h3 takes hook d8 hook a7 now i have two passes connected so you have to find a move uh a star move here very quickly otherwise mm -hmm. you're just yeah uh, i mean if you if you allow ninety six, you resign yeah so you have to do like your your, your window here is extremely small <laughs> sorry so I don't know. Yeah, but uh, let's uh, now that this roundup is kind of done, and we do have uh, Bishop D two in Max uh, Farmer down position. Yeah, this is just a mess. I have no idea how to how to assess this, and uh, they don't have very much time. They they aren't doing as poorly time wise as some other people we, we could name. But no. uh, just a just a funny line. You 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 will like it. Bishop D seven, Bishop C three. Mm. In that position. Let's, ah. let, let, let's spend two hours on that. <laughs> or that, yeah. I guess after Bishop C3, and, we go Queen H. Yeah, and Rook is 7. That was my. Ah. So I don't know if it was. Oh, I know it's this cute. This is very that's, cute. That's, that's enough for me. This is very um, cute. 
I like this. This is but very you know, nice. And then we just whoops, sorry. Yeah, uh, no. We just collect everything, yeah. We actually go for the... No, you, you, no, you, are, you have Rook F6. Ah, that yeah, would be yeah. nice, but you have Rook F6. Yeah, we have Rook F6 somewhere. Yeah. So maybe... Yeah. Honestly, I'm, still, not, I'm not very unhappy about this either. Yeah, like, you, you can go you can go even knight g5 i think it's mm, yeah knight g5 tethering knight e6 tethering bishop takes f5 i don't know mm -hmm. that looks yeah uh dead to me actually knight h7 maybe even so maybe that's the line bishop c3 wow yeah i think maybe this is what he's intending so do we have anything apart from bishop d7 we were trying queen f7 i mean maybe you have to kind of be yeah depressingly boring and just play queen f7 queen f6 ah and ask the question just ask the question because everything else seems to be extremely risky uh putting it mildly you know everything else looks maybe maybe just losing so you just have to it's a good question you know, actually if you go swallow, to F4. swallow your pride a little bit here and ask if you want to draw queen g3 f4 is a big problem no yeah this is a massive massive problem unless no bishop f4 is working but i don't think so mm, no problem oh, hang on uh bishop f4 queen f4 uh, yeah we, we have, have bishop, bishop f5. F5. yeah we have bishop Jeez. f5 yeah and how about uh yeah queen f4 is just knight d8 or something yeah yeah you can play queen f4 but then i finally yeah. get time well he played bishop d7 Okay. Uh, okay. I, I guess after bishop c3, maybe we still have queen f7 now. Can I go before rook we, seven before ig5? We get two x. Ah, hang on. Okay, Whoa. Seven, Come on. Whoa. I should attack more often. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get such positions. I mean, come on. You give, yeah. you give all your PC. You just want to get knight g5 in. This is so beautiful. So this takes is... ig5. This is a game over, no? Whoa. Yeah, this is a daily prize for sure. He played the game in that spirit. I guess he, mm -hmm. he, he will definitely consider bishop c3. Will he play it? I would guess so. I mean, mm. why you don't play bishop c3 here? Yeah, he has more than half an hour, and you should be spending like a lot of time on every decision here because you know that decisions here will be extremely, extremely crucial. But uh, what I don't get is why your evaluation bar uh, is not as enthusiastic as us after, I mean, before Bishop C3. So probably there's some defense for, for Black, which I'm failing to see so far. Is, uh, is G6 a move? Yeah, maybe. So sad. So, so we actually have to play this endgame. We're really? doing okay why, in why, this endgame. Why, why, but... why, why Queen H6? I think we can uh... okay I go I go no I keep my pieces hooky seven and now I find something clever why isn't this ah we don't have the we don't have the e file yeah it, it runs even King f6 yeah. it run or even King oh, even King f6 I mean knight f7 King f7 I have yeah, no f7, I think maybe now we can run yeah yeah now because we, because this is never a check yeah if we could include rookie one, we would be winning here, but it's just always under control. Ah, pity. This is, yeah. I mean, the end game after bishop f6, gh, bishop b2 is playable for white, but it's such a letdown that you don't get to, you know. It's one pawn down, but. Yeah, you don't get to, 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 to go into every single, you know, miniature slash <laughs> puzzle, <laughs> yeah, that's tough. puzzle book for eternity, you know, yeah. if, if, if this was working. Regrettable. Let's go back to the Masters. Yeah. Uh, this game and is progressing sort of how we were expecting after... Oh, no, he played he played Rook D7, a move which we were not discussing too much. Yeah, that's a pretty... I mean, preventing... Is that preventing? No, it was not preventing Rook A5. But... Yeah, I'm not sure what it's... Like, why is it better on D7 than it was on D6? Um, King h7, Queen g2, and Levon played rook a5 here. Of course, you can take on b7, but it's just a liquidation. Yeah, this you don't win. Yeah, no. Queen c5, but still. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's little. Like, Magnus yeah. might, might... Queen b5, yeah. Queen b5 here. Yeah, I just, yeah Queen b5 is just, just an immediate draw. Yeah. yeah. Just an immediate draw. So this is an offer. The question is, 
do we have anything let me let, let, let me be ambitious hook d8 I have hook d5 here yeah this is what he wants yeah um, and suddenly you're a little bit worse <laughs> yeah yeah that's so sorry mm, very clever by the one can we is this ever anything uh Queen b2 you just want to take on f7 I don't know what I want because Queen f7 is not I, I wanted to take on f7 but it's just not fast enough because I don't actually get to give a check but actually I even have he's gone f4. b4 whoa this is very interesting so after rook e5, he wants to play queen d6, I suppose, yeah? Uh-huh. And then go in with queen f8, rook d8. Does this work? Apparently not fully, but it looks so difficult for black here. Yeah. So after rook b5, I do the same, right? It doesn't matter. My next move is queen d6, actually. Yeah, we're just yeah, we're just playing queen d6 next move. Yeah. Basically, what we're doing here is we're stopping queen takes b2 from happening so that the pawn, like the queen, cannot get activated. Because you do sort of have to explain why we're not starting. Yeah, with this. exactly. Maybe queen b2, queen e5, protecting on g7, and then you can you can I can go off. Oh, but no, bishop p4, let's say. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, bishop b4 is strong. Yeah, yeah, I like your move better, yeah. Yeah, just queen h8, rook g8. Uh, I'm not doing anything because mm -hmm. g7 is, uh, yeah, yeah. is is protected. So that's probably the point that, mm -hmm. okay, you can take on e5, but not with a queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wants to lure the, the rook there and not the queen, yeah. So let's Is there a way for black to be clever about things? Like, can we... Is there ever an argument for this move? Uh -huh. to take on before with the queen and stop queen f8 and let me do queen d6 yeah and queen, queen b8 before, yeah. yeah queen b8 exactly mm. so bishop if, is that mate bishop e4 hook d8 bishop before we can even take on f7 i think ah that's true um, keep on blundering. i think we have a lot of time like there is yeah, just no. there is just so little happening against this guy that we, we just have all the time in the world although are, are you sure take takes on f3 are you take with okay yeah, we go and, and then maybe we yeah. give a perpetual yeah we try to give a perpetual like after queen c7 i go in and i think this actually is a perpetual that's yes that's guaranteed yeah so this is still dis despite very limited material this is still a very exciting position to <laughs> Yeah, but actually in that line, I, I think we could take with the, the rook on f3. Where? In the line we just showed, you just showed. I am. You can take with the rook on f3. and. Uh, no, but then I thought you can play queen e4. Queen b7. And hope that this is somehow a draw. Which it might be. Queen f7. Yeah, but... Takes takes first on h5, take... Ah, you take on h5? No, this is yeah. not a draw then, maybe, yeah. Okay, this is a very good point. I missed that I lose this guy as well. And now, maybe... It's yeah, for even queen of f3, maybe. But yeah, this is kind of ugly. I don't want this. No, queen of f3, actually, maybe. is a very mm -hmm. queen. So, so Levon has gone for this. So what's the move here? I think we can probably get there by the process of elimination. <laughs> yeah. Because there aren't uh, very many squares, right? Rook b5 looks wrong. I can't imagine this being a solution because, like, it just does nothing there. It doesn't generate any counterplay, so I think you just get mated. Just because not, nothing pawns. moves. Like, rook g8 is unstoppable and nothing moves in your position. I think you just get mated here. So, this is not it. Uh, so, maybe rook f5. And what's the big deal? I don't know what the big difference is, though. Yeah. Queen of eight? Or the eight? I don't know. Yeah, Not I don't to know. start, but. Hmm. Maybe just rook d5 and counterplay against the white king. Yeah, I considered it, but it's it's a difficult decision. You might have uh. to. And like the good thing about this is that you're probably not getting mated anymore because you can like if if white goes in with everything, you can probably arrange some kind of a setup like this. My bigger issue for black would be that 
White just goes like I don't know Queen F4, and just tries to win Cook slowly like F3, put the exactly. rook on a, on a good square, and then eventually start pushing. He's gone Queen B5, which would be my next guess. I guess the idea is maybe to take on E2. So let's say we go Queen F8. He does. Rook e2, rook d8, bishop e4. Does this hold? Very important. Yeah, but, we protect the h5, yeah? Because normally what would win here is this. Yeah. But now but now we have a piece controlling the h5 square. Still playing very fast. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that's the idea for sure. Yeah, can we? And we because of really... how because of how tied up everything is, I'm wondering if I have time to play three. I understand it's you know not very direct, but I'm kind of really wondering if I can spend the tempo on one e three. But then I guess maybe rook of five gains in strength because all these sacrifices will be very nice quite time. quite interesting. Yeah, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, can still ba bail out as white, but well, I mean uh, that that line we were showing. I don't think we're in trouble. Really? I mean, I I don't think I will lose this position. Maybe I will. Yeah, maybe maybe it's no it's, no probably not. No, queen g eight is coming as well. Yeah, but queen g eight is one check. Oh, no? Ah, no, you have... Yeah, you have. We have many checks. Yeah. So like queen f five. Check. Check. Let yeah, eventually, yeah, eventually, yeah. Eventually, it's going to be a draw, right? Like Queen E8, I, I have Queen yeah, E7, exactly. but, then, but then it's just a draw because everything gets traded off. Hmm. Yeah, so okay. White is safe, but seems uh, well, fantastic defense by by Levin. Very precise, mm. very sharp in calculation. Oh yeah, and uh, as as Chat points out, if we want to draw, we can just go Rook takes B7 now. Exactly, that's yeah. the point <laughs> I wanted to make. Yeah, yeah. still. Yeah, if if, uh, if we want the bailout, we we yeah. always have this option. Yeah, but I thought it could be too late uh, mm. if you keep on attacking, but probably not. Mm. So let's see, Magnus, what Magnus will come up with. But he has no. Yeah, he has fifteen minutes, but it is move thirty-one. They have been kind of making a lot of decisions quite quickly, so he he he, he can actually burn some time here trying to find. Something decisive. In the meantime, uh, Ding has actually gone for ah, what no. we were describing. Yeah, this position is ah, on okay. the board. He played g5, he played queen h6, and after bishop f3, he just very quietly played c6, c5. And as you can see, the engine unsurprisingly just hates this for white. Yeah. It's just not pleasant at all. It feels it's... like eventually you might be forced into playing for some kind of a position with g4, 9, g3, but they will not be. Very pleasant. No, not fun for for often Gukesh while the bishop of uh Wesley is on H1. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe then we should come back to, to Fabi against uh Guy. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, this one yeah. Um as expected, the game did revolve around this square. So we left it somewhere here. Fabi went for one more quiet ish move. People were asking us in chat if White actually wants to play A4, A5. Which is a very double-edged decision. I don't know what I what I feel about it because, on the one hand, fixing this pawn on a six for some kind of a very very long-term end-game advantages is not a bad idea. But he also may be creating a target a little bit for black to play in, against. I, I would be in favor of doing it, but yeah, mm -hmm. not not. But he decided not, not to, and Anish immediately took the option away by playing a five himself. And then they shuffled for a bit. I was a bit surprised by this move, Knight CD2. I wasn't yeah. quite sure why it was played. I guess maybe he thought, since this is coming anyway, he it's should be preparing position. for it by. But what do you do as white? You play Oxy1. Yeah. Then I play Oxy8, and then next. It's very unclear to me. Mm -hmm. it's... So he, he tried sort of playing as hard as possible against Knight D4, and Knight D4 happened anyway. Uh, queen b1, and here I guess the point is if you play e6, e5, white has this kind of a regrouping, trying to get g4 in, trying to put something on c4. Uh, so it's not that bad. So Anish played knight c5, and 
Fabi very quickly played knight fg4. Which the computer doesn't like. Well, we did, I mean, yeah. the big question is, can we take on a4? No, and simply. like, do we have a good reply to either queen a1 or queen a2? I guess this is the plan. Because obviously, if you allow this knight to return, you're kind of lost. Yeah. <laughs> Bishop you're, you're not worse. Yeah. You're actually kind of lost. So yeah. you, the plan has to be to play queen a something and try to win the pawn on a5 straight away. Can so I go? I've, I, I, I think know, we can just go talk. back, right? Yeah. Queen a5, queen a5, knight a5, and something takes on this bishop d3. And I think we didn't mention that with, with Fabi, or maybe we did, but look at the ratings. I mean, if Anish mm -hmm. wins that game, he's overtaking Fabi, which I don't think it happened in the last maybe 10 years or so. Uh, that would be quite a surprise. Oh. G6 was not spotted. Oh my. So I wanted to I wanted to show you this because you you actually got there before the game got there. Yeah. <laughs> it is now completely, completely and utterly dead for black. You can resign. Yeah, it didn't look too good. <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah, G6, G6 uh, was still very much a game, and this is just yeah. over. Oh, that's weird to blunder who okay, so yeah. What I mean, because I mean look at the position, what else? I mean, take extra uh, yeah, but, but I mean I it's think, a bit naive, no? To yeah, I, I sort of agree with you and also not because it is still a blank spot where you know the queen is hanging, just completely hanging. It's yeah. entirely unprotected, and your brain still sort of refuses to analyze moves which don't address it. You know, <laughs> because like I also blundered it. I, I also told you what about queen h six, and then you showed me rookie seven. Mm -hmm. So my initial reaction also was to blunder rookie seven, uh, but uh, Behach did have time. Like yeah, my blunder was quite like. In yeah, of defense, course, of course, of course. In my yeah. defense, my blunder was quite quick, and he had yeah. twenty-five minutes. So, yeah, yeah, and now he can just resign, basically. Yeah, it's just completely over. It's just like after after Queen H five, Rook G seven. I think pretty much everything, like even even the very very simplest way of doing this, probably just also just completely winning. Just give a check again and win a lot of material. Yeah. But I I, I think Rook G seven is stronger. Rook e7, now you have to play rook f6, and uh, unfortunately, no, for, just, yeah, unfortunately for you, so yeah, I painful. think it's just mate. Yeah, I think it's this just mate. so painful. Knight d8, knight h7, and he's yeah, yeah. No, you, yeah, you're it's over. Yeah, it's just, just completely and utterly over. And it's just like, despite the fact that the game did feature one really, really large mistake for this level, because I mean, Pekha yeah, is a very it's a strong player, player. Yeah. yeah, but still, it's just such a warm feeling for yeah. for Max wow. to to play such to, a game to, 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 to play the you make a move like this on the board it doesn't yeah doesn't happen very often so it's no. uh, happy for him game of the day mm. romantic yeah. game of the day very much so no uh, very much so and talking about romantic games of the day and sort of <laughs> slightly unlikely one. people who are playing them because normally Irvin is playing kind of technical end games. Yeah. He is extremely well known for playing technical end games. But he, yeah, this is not a technical end game. Yeah, he is trying to make a draw. Yeah, he is trying to make no, but make this, this is, draw. Ah, I, I was about to say that this doesn't work because of Queen Five. But Queen Five, a very unpleasant surprise, which is <laughs> yeah, waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a bit of an issue with that. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the question is whether uh, Luis Paulo has something stronger here. And you can make because the bishop on b2 is so completely cut off from the long diagonal. Like it, it's it's either leaving the long diagonal or it's getting captured. And because of that, you can actually consider some really weird stuff like this. I was considering queen d8 maybe. Oh, queen d8. Well, yeah, went... some, some moves like that. Yeah, queen d8. And if you take takes, I mean, it's funny that you have both pieces. I mean, you just mm. not lose a piece because it is knight h6, bishop c1 actually. But still, yeah, it's not great. Yeah, like if if this is our best choice, we're probably yeah. not doing all that great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's continue terrible. playing against it, and eventually we will start picking material up. Yeah, bishop c eight. I might be blundering something with e six. I don't know, or not. Like e six might still be the same draw. Yeah, weirdly, <laughs> weirdly, nothing changed. It's still the same draw. <laughs> 
Uh, because yeah. FE6 is still the same mate. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, very sharp position, and uh, neither of them have. And Rookie in Six time. in Burton game. Rookie mm -hmm. Six, wow! The challenger is on fire on the Burton. Oh ah, yeah, yeah, whoa! Rookie and six. apparently it's very strong. Wow, that's of course. Apparently it's very strong because after G four, I guess what may have been missed is you can take on H four and then give a check. That's it really win. Yeah, it doesn't win. Yeah. I thought, like, I, I get to H7, I do have a but perpetual, what, what, but... No, but what's the big defense? I mean, after G4, I go Queen E3, and it's... Ah, yeah, it's just the same, yeah. Yeah, okay, you have the pawn G4, I don't know if it's better yeah, for you, the but... point. The point is, this is just Oof. indefensible, I guess. <laughs> That's a bit worrying for Black, let's mm, face yeah. it. Um, yeah. Oh, boy. And if you if you went Rook F8 instead, I just go Queen G6, Bishop C4. It's just amazing. Yeah, that, that, your pieces are just not where they should be yeah, for, yeah, 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 yeah. for the defense against these kinds of threats. Yeah, so she's gone in the position we we're discussing, she's gone knight d7. And now the issue is queen h3 is a very annoying threat because the pawn is going to be left behind. So she's gone h5, but yeah. This is a, a, a game. Uh, which shows the merit of castling in chess. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, you castle, uh, you put your king in the safe place here. Uh, that was too ambitious in a way, this hook g8 g5 mm -hmm. testing, but a bit too ambitious. Uh, short castle was was called for, and yeah, at some great. point you you could have you could have actually avoided all of this for sure. And, yeah. and sometimes you get away with that, but he did punish uh, big time. So. Mm -hmm. Bertsen, I played against him, and he's very. He looked completely tired when we played, but he made. I, I made a difficult draw, so uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a tricky, tricky guy, um, young guy from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go back to the Masters. Oh, yeah, how does that work? More fireworks in in the challenger? Or... And uh, no, I I don't know if this is maybe a board error or what, but like Rook of Seven is a kind of a funny move. He just decided to. <laughs> Show he can repeat for a move here without a lot of rook of six, but oh, I'm I'm pretty sure he's not taking a draw here. Like if he's no, but that's yeah, like, you know you make your opponent hope. This is yeah. uh, really <laughs> nasty. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a bit of a a bit of a nasty trick there. Can, can I go? Uh, uh, no, I want to make it even more beautiful. Knight g five, but yeah, mm. I don't need that. You can. Yeah. No, I don't know why. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's probably not bad. Yeah, I don't see. Yeah. I don't see much wrong with it. But we probably don't need to. Uh, in the meantime, I think this one is about to end in a draw. It's actually already it's ended in a draw. Okay, so how did that go? he played Queen F8, Rook takes E2 as expected happened, Rook G8, Bishop B4, and he took took Queen takes F7, and Levon uh, very correctly realized. There is really only a threat of a perpetual, and I can create my own threats, played rookie one, and uh, they uh, finished with that perpetual. So we have very nicely played game by, I think, both of them. Uh, lots of ideas, lots of really intricate strategic uh, yeah. things to discuss, but kind of a correctly played game by, I, by I, both I, Actually, if I believe your your <laughs> evaluation bar, uh, not hundred percent. I mean, it seems that Magnus was it was shown a, quite a large plus for White. So Where? maybe he missed a chance around this. Uh, you remember when Bishop at seven ninety five? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely maybe showing, earlier, but it, it was showing. But then, then they played very well. Uh, mm -hmm. They played, uh, but so he missed an early chance, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. in early middle game. But then. Uh, Levon defended very, very well. Uh huh. And in the uh, Corona ah, yeah. game, but I thought about this. I almost, uh, but because I saw Queen B2 first, A4, uh, Knight D2, and I saw Bishop F6. I'm taking back the piece, and then I saw Knight 2 F3, and I just, but I don't think we care like, to we mention, play, but, like, we play yeah, you just go here. A3, Queen A1, Bishop F6, Knight F3, and what, and something, I don't know. Okay, the idea is E5, yeah, there is E5. Yeah, it's not immediately obvious why this is so lost. Let me let me try and figure it out. Hmm.
I'm very curious. Okay. I mean, it looks great, but yeah, no, with the bishops and the mm -hmm. masses. Yeah, I mean, uh, the kind of the larger point is in some position like this. Yeah, I was going to make an argument that even this position maybe is quite good for black, but I'm not so sure. Like the bishop gets to b3 and e5 is coming. Yeah, if like can... e5, bishop b7, and then we blockade everything and we are a piece up. What okay. are we missing? Uh, and uh, we'll return to this, but I just want to show you a very, very spectacular. I don't know if it's a good move, but it's a very spectacular Ooh, move that Dick just made. Uh, G4 That's played by G4 played by Gukesh, who understands that the knight eventually will have to come back home, and Ding goes f5, which the engine apparently disagrees with quite strongly. But now it but changes it's... mind. Mm. Yeah. How good is your engine? No idea. No. It's. I mean, it's. I. I think the the onboard engine is Stockfish 15. It's just a question of ah, okay. what it. What it yeah, turns I mean, it's CPU. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it, uh, it's it's, it's a it's a good engine. It's just. Uh, Obviously not running on yeah, of course, SSA run. type machines, but um, our engine said best move. We're being told by chat, so okay, amazing. So the point obviously is, uh, vice position kind of looks ugly, but we are currently as black slightly lacking ways to break into it. And yeah, actually, is after it takes you want to open the F one. So GF G is the idea is I guess G four bishop G four queen uh, G five oh, then you put ah, a, and then you put it yeah that's the point I guess mm. just to to well, even bishop two as usual yeah both yeah. of them look very strong um I guess I had the idea to go king H one but say it's a bad news take on G four falling for the top mm. and bishop B seven check which is uh, that's a bit painful yeah. That's so we cannot take with a pawn, apparently. Can we take mm. with a queen? Queen f5, rook f8 is a most. Queen f5, rook f8 is, I think, completely gone. Yeah. It's completely gone already. Yeah? Maybe, I mean, you, you can still go queen e4, which I didn't realize originally, but looks horrible. But maybe this is the best chance. Looks horrible, though. Even very simply, like rook d8, king h. Ah, no, this I allowed rook takes d4. This is very unclear. So I have to be yeah. smarter about things. Maybe I will show uh, Queen. Um, sorry, um, Rook F8 is a move. Bishop C8 first. Your Bishop C8 from before. Queen somewhere and now Rook F8. And now Rook F8. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Did what? Did, what? What did we gain from getting the? If I go Queen E4, let's say, what did we gain by getting? The, I think I think we're quite happy to have it on C8. To be honest, I we gained a very important Bishop B6. Ah, in okay, that was lucky. Yeah. But and queen c6 is, is it over? Not over, over, but no, it doesn't look good. I agree. Even takes an okay fate is something mm -hmm. to consider. But I don't know if it's yeah. particularly working, but queen g6 in every single position looks kind of a yeah, it's great compensation, simply threatening move, yeah. Just going to be a very <laughs> difficult, very difficult. Yeah, position. exactly. Right. It's the kind of position you don't want to look at and wish good luck to Mr. Gukesh mm. uh, because this is not going to be fun, uh, unfortunately, for, for Gukesh. Not at all, yeah. And Giri actually did something that we didn't consider properly. Uh, he just didn't play for at all. Ah. Six first. And Which now is... he's going to cash in a, a four at a, at a later date. So to Queen say. A1? Huh. Yeah, uh, why is this so clear? It's I guess we fun. can go like rook. No, but then the knight will land on c6 in the in the end, right? And I will probably manage to, to make a door, huh? Yeah. Computer didn't like uh, apparently bishop f6, so maybe that was not the way mm. the, the way to go and We'll return to this in a moment. I just want, yeah. to show the, want to show the final position before it disappears. You you kind of ah, have, you, you kind of have to respect uh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for yeah. playing queen e8 here, allowing this very cute knight h7. The position was completely lost, and this is exactly like we, we were showing this. 
This is completely winning. And he went bishop f2, knight c5 to at least stop knight e6. But his problem is now he's still getting mated, but he's also down a lot of material. Yeah. And right. instead of resigning here, which would be fine, he played queen e8, allowing white yeah. the pleasure of playing knight h7 mate. So yeah, very yeah, nice that's a beautiful sporting one. gesture. Yeah. Yeah, of course, because even even rook takes f5 correcting the queen mm -hmm. uh was uh queen e8 was not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he clearly uh, did it just to yeah, just to kind of sure. compliment his opponent on a very nicely played game. Um so yeah, what what else do we have? Um in Gary's Let's have a look game, at uh, and Richie maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. this we haven't actually discussed in a while. After rook b5, whoa. Knight b8, okay. You, 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 you have to credit the young man because you like very obviously you do need to deal with the idea of both bishop d5 and rook d5 and playing c7 c6 is very useful. And the knight actually belongs on d7. But still, making a move like this is it's very easy to just miss it exists. Yeah. That's... Because, you know, moves backwards to the starting positions are never very easy. And in all of these positions, g5 is sort of never hanging because of rook g8. Uh, so they got here. And now... And it's upon, there's, no more, so yeah. there's no more rook e1, I guess, because of knight f3. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah this looks points, lost. Yeah, yeah this looks yeah, lost. Yeah, yeah. For a second there, because of how stupid this knight is, I was wondering if I can maybe make an argument for this, but it's a full piece, right? There's yeah. no way this works. No. Like king d7, rook h6, and rook f8, and eventually it will come out. Yeah, he could actually. I could have. Ah, but you have, you have f6. No, okay. This is dead lost. Yeah. Not working at all. So, so now, what's the plan? The plan, I guess, is to play g takes f5 and then put the bishop on e4 and claim. But that at have... the very least, I have a better endgame here. Yeah. I can. I was about that. to say, despite the pawn on e6, the only person who can be better here is black. Yeah. yeah. Because we just want to come out and this bishop is still so far away from good squares. Like, I. I okay, f1 I... is also tightening it. Yeah. So, like, bishop d2, we go king c7. Uh, maybe now we're in time, yeah, because now we are threatening Bishop. Even three. Rook F1. Uh, no, but Rook F3. Even this position. Three, yeah. Even this position could very easily just be lost for White Friend. Because we will just quietly prepare some squares for our king so the Bishop G3 doesn't do anything and we will take on H3. And even Rook E3 is a threat in some position. Disaster. Yeah. So. Yeah, the, the choices really aren't very pleasant because if you if you move the bishop away and allow f4, your position is just not going to be very fun. What's the choice? It really doesn't seem like there is any good choices. No. No, it's too awkward. I mean, the queen on h2, the hook on h1. It's just too much. Uh... He took on f5. He's gone gf. And, and this is a, this is an interesting spot because Blake is, I'm pretty sure, still better if you do this and just you know put it on f6 and play bishop d6. Queen g2, f1. Are you yeah, sure? yeah, but but I think the, sort of the quote unquote know. correct solution is to go for that endgame. Yeah. I think. And maybe maybe White can yeah, and he just he instantly off, takes on f3. Yeah. Not a back, no. not a back knows. Also, you know, you could gf5 could f5 bishop b4 then you give some hope for to white mm -hmm. and here it's clear that richie knows he may defend that end game but he will suffer for the rest of oh, the yeah. game yeah yeah which it's is not, uh, not uh not the position you want to be in first round you're white uh, after three hours of play you have to to i mean to defend all the way mm -hmm. and you are not sure at all that you will save the day uh that's for sure even a2 is weak i mean let's say bishop d2 uh bishop d2 okay f1 king e2 okay one could be an option yeah i really don't I, like giving up the f file i and think i think allowing this rook to become active is the way white saves the game so like i'm not white... even sure how, how do you i mean let, let let me let me defend my i mean i'm just too sure uh okay f7 king d8 who catch seven or king rook c2 this a pawn will start. Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, Richie has done something yeah, interesting that. there. He's gone bishop b2. In, I mean, I wanted to say instantly, but he's actually very low on time, oh. so he doesn't really have 
much time to think. He wants c5, c3. He wants to dig out that bishop uh -huh. by That's force. Clever. That's what you should do. Mm. And if I go bishop f6, you go f2? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, that's not good. No, c5, c3. Yeah. yeah, and it still works, yeah. Bishop b2 is a good choice here. Stops, I mean, not doesn't stop rook f1, but it allows us to very quiet, calmly play king e2 because nothing is hanging there. And let me show, uh, let me have a look at c5, c3, rook f1, then you go king c2 that time, yeah? I think so. Okay. 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 Well, yeah, it looks like maybe we've slightly overstated how bad this is for black. Yeah. Sorry, for white. I mean, you, you still probably have to be careful, but if the bishop revives itself, then, of course, the problems are not as big. Even, even still, like some position like this, I'm pretty sure only black can be better, but maybe it's not very much. Do we have something clever here? Apparently, in the chess 24 chat, Natesh is telling us that both players had an never age. In the Carlsen Aonian game, six centipon loss, both players had 98% IQ, I see. So that was quite a... <laughs> well, a quite a decent game, yeah. <laughs> quite a decent game. Quite a decent uh, game. Both yeah. players, zero mistakes, zero blunders. Uh, and Magnus had one in, in IQ, I see. That's it. Mm. So, yeah, that's quite quite a start. Uh, mm. Yeah, looks like they've been largely on point today. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go in too deep for this endgame, let's take a look at some other positions. Uh, Jordan, Jordan is saving the day. I've... Ah. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go there in a moment. Yeah, know, sure, but... sure, sure, sure. Let's have a look at that. So he played knight g3, fg, knight f5. Okay. Yeah, he's, he, he's trying to defend actively, which I think is a very understandable choice, but it feels like this knight on the five is now... Ah, hang on, he's... Hmm. My first immediate reaction is to play something like queen f6, bishop takes g4, bishop c8. Trying to stop knight takes d4 because this is important and rook f8 is probably a very, very strong threat. But my problem is... Oh, no, h3, h5, maybe, yeah? Uh-huh. Knight, knight d4, h takes g. That's a good... This is still a problem for white. So that would be my first... Ah, oh, hang on. This is a check. I can play queen h5 if I want, right? Because this is... I thought I can do this, but this is a check and no this time to play knight h6. h6, yeah. It's just a very ugly square, right? We are yes. saving the pawn, but we are also putting our queen on a very, very strange square. And the rookie 2 is not good? Ah, rookie 2. I keep on forgetting oh, sorry. it exists. Ooh. Actually, I don't see what you play. I mean, if you go knight d4, gf, yeah, no, this it's looks mate, lost. and now yeah, this looks lost. suddenly it's a very good square on h5. Okay, so what are we missing? Bishop b4? What else? I guess. It looks so bad. Yeah, it looks horrible. But? but but you still have to make a move, right? Because now if, if you allow knight takes d4, it immediately starts looking a lot nicer. And uh, if the bishop has to go away, also white will have some time to consolidate. He still managed to 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 create some some mess. It's mm -hmm. Amazing, actually. Uh, only four minutes on the clock, though. So yeah, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be easy, but. There are still some decisions for for Deng, yeah. So this is one option, this is another option. Is there any reason to choose g6? Doesn't really seem that way. It's a bit artificial. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, so queen f6, bishop g4. Yeah, here if you play bishop b4, I'm not that unhappy because I have a queen on a good square. I will just play bishop b5 and I will say and that. Play, it's yeah, a pawn. I'm, I'm, yeah, we just we just a pawn up for not very much. So bishop g4, bishop c8. What's the move here? Is there a move here? Maybe rook e1? But the problem is... Okay, fate? Yeah, ah, but no, the no. problem is, even, even if you yeah. don't lose by force here, you, yeah, this yeah. just looks so horrible. Like, you lose long term. 
you pretty much yeah, always lose long term because you are, are you sure it's long term not... yeah maybe maybe not even very long term <laughs> to be honest yeah because bishop f3 just getting mated mm. on, on on the light square uh but could be some some trick here like knight c6 maybe uh actually knight c6 ah, if you go that's very C6. that's very beautiful uh queen c4 and yeah okay but i don't know it's hard to believe maybe ah no okay yeah uh, exactly. at least you get to play 95 which is an improvement because we stopped bishop f3 mm -hmm. yeah i think it's better but i don't know if it Still. if it's already completely winning or not but he's better uh you were saying jordan is yeah jordan's position is now you feel Since, like you shouldn't you shouldn't be losing this with white anymore right yeah you put the knight on e3 and uh, and you chill yeah and we just chill yeah like what i mean i mean this is an obvious draw but also i wanted to make an argument that uh even this is a very obvious draw uh-huh because you can't touch the knight yeah yeah you, you like nothing ever touches this this yeah. is a com like eternal setup so th there is just so much leeway for you once you establish this blockade it's just so difficult to imagine how this ever gets shifted of course black can play forever with zero risk it's a like a healthy extra pawn on e4 but... yeah but why too yeah because he has his knight in no plan or maybe 96 b5 a5 you try to make yeah like if you, if you get a lot of moves in a row like you you play I don't know a five. We continue shuffling. You play b five. We continue shuffling. Maybe this is an improvement. But even this, honestly, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this was still a draw. Yeah, pretty. Yeah. Um, even and though this is this is obviously not great. But. It seems that this game, Max Lu came. A uh, lot of things have happened. And oh yeah, that there is so many. Uh, like Bishop c five will just uh, finish the day basically. Yeah. It. It. You know, you could be tempted to think that White has an outside yeah. passer, but the king is too too open. I don't think White wins very many of these. So we left it a long time ago. We didn't yeah. pay very much attention to this game. He did play a4, as we were saying, knight before rook e8, as we were saying, c5, bishop c7. And then, yeah, somewhere around here, I thought black might actually be better, but uh, I guess uh, Parham found a way to stabilize i really don't hate this decision at all this forces uh, the trade of b7 for c5 it's a do agreed officially mm -hmm. we see both play on the screen okay it's not too bad uh it's, it's a good result for, for yeah both, let's say. i think it's you fine. something you score something you mm -hmm. enter the tournament some sharp game i mean not too sharp as well but interesting yeah so and i think there was a very critical moment somewhere around here because after rook c3 Black is threatening to play e4, and Parham just calculated this very, very precisely. He played bishop d2, allowing e4, played queen d1. Now, if rook d3, we have this very nice uh -huh. fork on c5. But I'm, I'm sure Vincent saw it, and he thought he was still better after e d3, rook e6, f e, because he has this uh, setup which is difficult to touch. Knight e4 is coming in, queen d5 is coming in. And of course, this is just horrible. You can't really allow Black such passers. But Parham saw this. I'm guessing from far in advance and just simplified into this position, which is very safe for white. I'm pretty sure it's also completely safe even if the pawn is on f7. But if the pawn is on e6 and the king on g8 is not that safe, I don't think you even have very many winning chances at all. So uh, they just simplified into here and agree to draw. Okay. Fair enough. Let's get back to some time table. We'll co ah no no okay we have some delay so I thought mm. not, not yet big time tables but let's uh... yeah we haven't touched the Grunfeld in a while uh, after rook d six we left it here I thought rook c eight was cleaner but rook d six shouldn't really be a mistake uh, we got to this position as expected uh, and yeah rook d five is a kind of an annoying threat here and we are now entering this kind of a phase of the game where uh what's, what's going on after queen c8 rook d5 yeah yeah he, he ah, always has rook d5 against all of ah, this and ah. and this is the issue for uh for prague i think is that uh eventually you have to go in with this and he he waited for one more move which i think is a good decision because here if you do it here you have to calculate ah. any three check 
So he played king of one first, uh, waited for h5, h4, and then went in with this entire uh, entire sequence. I mean, rook d5 hasn't been played yet, but there is really isn't very much choice. Like you, you can't really make any other move in this position. So yeah, rook d5, e d5, knight c3. I assume is what will happen. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, black is not. Yeah, this for. this this should like be a those... draw. This should it's be a small, draw. It's more white who has to be careful, right? Yeah, I think so, but it it shouldn't be very difficult to hold. Because I can go knight f7, uh, you take on d5, queen g5, I, I will have all kind of purple to, or queen a, I mean, whatever. Yeah, I want. choose a square, yeah. Like yeah. a3 is fine, d6 is fine, any square is fine, yeah. I guess after queen a3, you still have to show some precision because uh, this setup is very good against the checks. I mean, I suspect this is still a draw, right? But you are. You 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 feel slightly uncomfortable going for it. Like uh, why I don't let, let me? I like to protect my pawn. So let's go queen c four, and then I will. But my issue is h ah, three. But I guess ah, maybe king g one. I missed. I missed. I missed. I missed. Um, but even this, like, how bad can it be? Yeah, no idea. How bad can it be? Mm, queen d six or I think queen g three. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit awkward but yeah it's a bit annoying let's face yeah, it yeah it's, it's actually a bit annoying yeah okay but he will find a way uh, he, should be, he should be okay yeah this is move 35 he has 12 minutes and uh yeah he probably will have to you know make sure that he doesn't make any stupid slip ups here but material is very very limited so Should probably end in a draw. Um, yeah, so what else? We have five games, but one is almost dead. This is so yeah, our chats are than... informing us that Bishop F six was a huge mistake, and now things are kind of okay for Fabi. He began with Rook C eight, which is kind of a curious decision. I wonder if he wants to do this and pretending I'm getting. So how does that work? Takes takes. My kind of a quote unquote trick was this. But honestly, I don't know how happy I am even with this position. <laughs> like, uh, like, I got here and then I thought, how convinced I am that this is not a queen? You know, <laughs> like, it's yep. all a bit worrying. Indeed. Yeah, it's, it's maybe bit, lost, it's actually. Worrying, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, lost is a bit strong, but. I this is such a is. such a poor to control the B pawn. Just take a five. Yeah, I wanted to play B two, and then play Queen C three. Yeah, and then exactly. Play C one and Bishop D one. No checks, but Queen C one anyways. And yeah, how you actually do maybe it? this maybe, is actually maybe. maybe this is a draw, right? Like we go yeah. Bishop some. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I go to H six. I go. I go. No, H6. it's not. Yeah, Queen I wanted C1. to give check check. Yeah, king h6. But then king h6 and also f6 because c7 is not a square. Ah, c7 <laughs> is not a square, yeah. Yeah, but king h6 may be simpler, yeah. No, f6 is just... Uh, yep. it's, it's, yeah, boss. Maybe Richie. Maybe let's go to, to, to Richie and then come back to, to Ding was when he will play a move because it will be exciting this time travel. I, I oh. feel so Gukesh yeah. Ding will be the most exciting time travel. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the, yeah. The game to watch is Bukesh Ding, but for for this, yeah, with the bishop on e five now, it feels like White shouldn't be losing. And we we got breaking news. Uh, people are saying that in that game between Berson and Elin Robbers, Berson actually took the perpetual, despite seemingly being completely. No, but Berson was playing Vaishali, no? Oh, no, if, but yeah, that's a different. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. He that's took a perpetual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not Robber. Yeah. Instead of queen e3, he actually did what I said I would do. Queen h4, queen h5, queen h6, queen h7. And uh, let's let's yeah, well, let's not show it blindfold. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Uh basically for, for, oh, some, for some for some reason he did not play queen e3 here. Uh, and uh took on h4 and gave this gave that perpetual. So my great speech about castling and so on is gone. 
mm. uh, and get you can you can from. fail to castle and still be completely okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, wow. and talking about Elin Roberts, she is, I think, in in tremendous trouble here because um, she tried. I mean, these types of <clears throat> sorry, these types of hanging pawn positions, like I think uh, we saw it somewhere here, and um, I don't know what I think about these types of positions in general, but I I, I know they're easier to play with white when because you have the pair of bishops, your plans are a bit more straightforward, and she went for some kind of a, an attempt to solve her issues tactically like this plan of rook b6 and then knight e8 rook g6 it shows imagination but it also doesn't really look like it should work and it it didn't really work because uh, uh mishra i think handled it very quietly and very kind of calmly and now i guess knight c4 you just like I just goes queen e7 and nothing gets picked up, and then we play bishop d4 and everything is under control. And strategically, the black position is just completely busted because uh, your bishop yeah, on bishop e8 is very yeah. poor. The rook on g6 isn't really doing very much. The moment this bishop appears on yeah, d4, exactly. you have you don't no care. counterplay anywhere. You don't care about the a yeah. pawn. Every, every single end game is lost, and so yeah. on, and so on, and so on. So yeah, Elin is in a lot okay. of trouble. Okay, it plays. She's fighting still, but yeah, of course, of course knows? she is. But I mean, time table is looming, so mm. who knows? Yeah. Um, okay. Irvin is probably much worse. Uh, talking about avoiding perpetuals, uh, uh, Luis Paulo Supi played f6 here, which uh -huh. is another way to stop those stupid perpetuals we were trying to give, and now Irvin. I'm sure very unhappily had to go for this structure, which is not a lot of fun. I I wanted to say this is just completely horrible for white, and then I realized the pawn is not on a7, which means that the moment we play knight c5, there will be at least some counterplay against the pawn on b6. But of course, this is not not, funny. not very beautiful to look at. Yeah, and it will just go after. Ah, I mean, if you manage to put something on b1, which is not clear, mm. we we'll just go b5. Maybe it's b5 is the next move. I'll yeah, it should be b5 before and just yeah secure it on c3. Is, mm -hmm. It's also hanging, so it's a table position. Bishop a6 comes to, comes to yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. Oof. Oof. Yeah, Irvin is Something. Irvin is yeah. probably just just not not going to survive this. At least mm. judging by this position. Uh, oh. Tabataba didn't manage to, to, to convert. Uh, apparently, okay, still better, but yeah, Adiban found a way to. Yeah, Adiban's still fighting, and uh, it's still a position you can very easily lose with black because your king is just so much worse than this one. And, you know, if white gets some time to organize something on the queen side, you could still be in trouble. But still, you know, it's a three against three. Yeah, but you you I expect was... you expect to make a draw here with black. Yeah. You, you you know you have to play precisely, but you still expect to make a draw. Uh, on board two, uh, dungeon converses. <laughs> on two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what what <laughs> happened here? So we left it here, and I was suggesting some kind of speculative sacrifices, and instead, uh, Sindarov Duke gave a check. <laughs> this is very very nice. Wow, and the check from D three. And if ED Queen D5 and ED just... Queen D5 apparently just wins the piece back. Uh and uh Dodjinka agreed and played King D1. <laughs> uh, That's so easy is, to miss. Yeah. As white. Quite stunning. And black is, I guess, a bit better, but maybe not too much. That on G4 is very strong though, so. If you have to pick, you always pick black here because knight g4 and upon h3 are always a very useful combo. But uh, material is equal white, sort of weathered the initial storm. So who knows? Yeah, you, you will have some 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 ideas with knight g5 collecting on h3 while losing h2. Mm -hmm. So probably, yeah, probably just you just saves the day as white, but not yeah, you have, you have to play precisely. But it looks like you probably are going to be uh, going to be okay. And how? So let's go to, to the masters, maybe to the yep. tables. Maybe our boy, our boy Ding, still thinking, or did he play? No, he played queen f six, and okay. I guess all of them agreed with us about the evaluation of bishop takes g four. 
and I guess bishop c8 because this wasn't played, which before was played instead. And as we were saying, like now black is just a pawn up. I would prefer not to trade this guy for anything. So my initial reaction is pretty much always going to be the move bishop five. Um, okay, and what well, what if I uh, just takes on d8 after bishop b5, let's say, and rook d1, and if you exchange all rooks, then you, your king becomes uh, between. Yeah. Of course, you are not going to do that. I guess you will go rook f5. I mean, I can I can play maybe just sort of ah, just edge five, h5 yeah. for now, yeah. And uh, and maybe that ask I the just, question, yeah, yeah. What what I'm gonna do? That's a good one. I don't just know. to make sure I don't blunder the pawn on g4 in the future. And yeah, I mean, if I had this with black, I wouldn't be sure I'm winning. But it's a ah. it's a pleasant position. You know, you're better. You're you're just hoping you don't make any mistakes. But as far as I know, you uh, as white, you would think you are lost. Yeah, <laughs> also true. Also very true. <laughs> I would Absolutely. think the same. Uh, Absolutely. But, uh, with black, I mean, it's hard to to feel. I mean, I don't know. I would think I'm winning, but yeah. Um, yeah because it's just so difficult to create any counterplay. Yeah. The king will just go to f8 or h8, but I like f8 better for sort of the future end games. And then I will put the bishop on c8, and then eventually I will start pushing these pieces pieces back. And if once they start going back, they kind of never stop. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, it it doesn't look that horrible anymore. Let's just briefly uh, visit the other games because, uh, yeah, yeah. I think basically, if Black had already a pawn on g six here, specifically, I think on g six and not h six, you're probably borderline winning <laughs> because you can just play rook b six. Yeah, but you unfortunately. The way things are, <laughs> it really isn't an option at all. And I I can't really figure out how to stabilize for black. Like, how do you not lose the pawn before? It's funny that after queen b6, I think I have d4. Even d4 might be might be quite decent. Yeah, yeah bishop b2, queen a8. And, no, but, yeah, but, queen but, a8. Also, but also, what's wrong with rook b1? Ah, rook b1, yeah. Simple. Just rook b1 ah, and take on ah, b4 next too, move. Like, it's just, ah, yeah, I'm losing a pawn. Yeah, no, yeah we, can, we can just do it simpler. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Mm. So how so weirdly I I mean I'm pretty sure I can find a way to you know lose the pawn before in such a way that we're not worse. But I'm struggling to find a way not to lose the pawn before at all. Queen D6 is E5, but just <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, let's go. And I've where do I go? Yeah, I mean you can like you can lose material like this. You can very you, easily. Can, you can very easily lose material. Like queen c seven is the same actually. Queen sixty five, you might not have yeah, good no, choices it's... anymore. Like maybe queen c five and then bishop b five. Queen c five d four. But then, but then d four. Yeah, like you're you're not really yeah improving your situation very. Much. It's, it's such so... a, such a weird position because yeah, like every single black piece looks like it's better than the white one. What did you choose? That would be fantastic. But but you just have this back rank issue. He played Queen C three, people are telling us. But then we have then we just go rook b one and we I think very very easily equalize here. There's just not a single issue, right? E I would think now I start to think that black has no. I think I, I think something like like just play g six here and, uh, and give, a, give a check on c one and go rook c two. I if I take with the rook, do you I'm really not. want to allow me to play queen e one check? King h two. Maybe you can, yeah. <laughs> Maybe queen c one, you know. Yeah, yeah, queen queen c one. Yeah, that's a better that's a better one. Ah, but... Actually, does this win? <laughs> Maybe it wins. <laughs> Simply, yeah, because yeah. Kh two could have fucking G one or C one. Yeah, because ah, yeah, so. then I will I'm yeah, not repeating anymore. Yeah. So let's say, no, I, yeah, you're right. I think probably we take with the queen, and then this happens. And no, I think it's why, 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 why not? Why not Bishop D three? What? I mean, Queen B four, Bishop D three. Ah, yeah, 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 that as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's just you know. Yeah. Also completely fine, of course, yeah. But like black is also maybe a little bit better here, but it's a draw. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm winning the F2 pawn, but uh -huh. I mean it's it's still a draw, but like I'm 
I'm not but, really running any risks. But nobody is running risks. No, nobody is running any risks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nobody is running any risks. That's for sure. Okay. Let's go back here. Let's go back so here and maybe off. watch it watch it to its conclusion because it, it is very clearly the most exciting game of the ones we have left. Yeah, and four minutes for each player. So mm -hmm. now we get back to the, to the rapid uh, mode for, for mm -hmm. both guys who are not participating. Uh, both of them in the World Rapid and Bit, which is, I don't know. Uh, for Gukesh, I was very surprised because yeah. all these young guys tend to do well, of course, in this World Rapid and Blitz, and he decided to skip. So maybe, probably just to focus on uh, on the prep for for Wike. So that's yeah, nice. this, this clearly, uh, I, I think, in particular, the Indian youngsters, they uh, the system that they have in place there, I think, very much still prioritizes. You know, fighting for for the classical world championship. So for for all of them uh, who are playing in Vike, Vike would be an absolute primary primary focus. And uh, I still, you know, whenever somebody like like Gukesh or, or Ali Reza, like I, I had this conversation, I was covering the World Rapid and Blitz in in my native language for uh -huh. uh, for the um, Levitov channel uh -huh. and. Yeah, we kept on returning to this. Like Alireza missing so much equity. Like purely in those terms, right? Like like the amount of equity he is missing by not playing the World Rapid Blitz. Yeah, no, that's for sure. I, I was it's also just commentating. I was also commentating in my native language, and I can tell you it was the main topic in the chat. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> well, it's just, very understandable reasons. Yeah, even uh, even if we even if we don't discuss it sort of from the viewpoint as uh, of us as viewers, which is also like a valid a valid thing to talk about. Like we all of us want to see him play, but even if just just sort of purely from his own perspective, uh, he, you know, he, he has such high expectations in tournaments like this considering how good he is at both formats yeah that's for sure it seems to be good yeah with 2900 in blitz <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah yeah that's a pretty, solid rating yeah pretty clear <laughs> not not a bad blitz player yeah. <laughs> yeah already a few years ago i remember he was uh he was fighting for the first place but on the other hand is what i said to people there's plenty of uh, World Rapid and Blitz where I, we, but pl plenty to come where we yeah, have for sure. great, great chances, for great sure. chances to get titles. And uh, well, I don't really know why he decided not to go, but um, no. question in chat from from my child childhood. Uh, uh, <laughs> choosing a word here, none, none of the words feel uh, feel right under current circumstances. <laughs> yeah, the. Uh, shout out to Andrei Terekhov, the, the the author of the very very good book on uh, book on Vasily Smyslov, and I'm not only saying that because I wrote the foreword for it. It's just a very good book. Asking, uh, I think he's in France now, so he also has a kind of a, a bit of a vested interest in seeing Alireza play. Uh, do we think he is hurting his progress by skipping so many tournaments? I kind of do, to be honest, but. He's been doing this for a while. Like you, you, you would have a kind of a more established opinion on this topic, Laurent. But uh... no, I mean, he doesn't play. You know, but every time he plays, you will tell me he's not playing. But when he played in San Luis, that was so impressive in all yeah. kind of format. So I don't know. Uh, someone in the chat said it's like uh, Fisher used to do that, uh, long mm. bikes. So I don't know whatever works for him. Uh, yeah. We will we will see the next. Uh, I mean. I'm sure I, I know him. Uh, uh, I'm sure I discussed it uh, with him many times. The main target for him is to become the classical world champion. So we will see in the next cycle, and uh, well, we will praise him if he <laughs> if he manages to win it. And if he doesn't, then we will blame his strategy. I mean, it's always the same. Yeah, you know, it's difficult to know in advance uh, uh, what, what what will come. But he is for sure. Um, um, let's say putting more and more efforts in in trying to get the, the classical uh, titles and uh, than the blitz or uh, rapid titles. I mean, mm -hmm. it's for yeah. him much much more more important. It just yeah. happens that he's very good in blitz. Yeah, 
Um, and I just wanted to say that, you know, this is a discussion that we will continue having during this tournament because, like, he is the one obvious name missing from the very, very top players here. But I also want to say that, I mean, clearly Ding hasn't lost on time. My my you yeah. know, clock on the screen currently says 0, 0, 0, 0 which, I mean, we, we have to assume he hasn't actually thought for five minutes here and lost on time. But he's been tanking for quite a bit in yeah. this position. So, um, or, or there is some kind of a weird board issue, which is also possible. Can we yeah. see anything from? No, I can't. From the Maybe. screen, you have many, we have many cameras. We would like to 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 thank, of course. Uh, oh, yeah, well, they, they are uh, they are very. I mean, I, also a, a topic that we kind of need to discuss is. Uh, I don't know. This is round one, and there's all kinds of quirks, and yeah. I don't even know if our producers are sure about this. But the camera might be 15 minutes ahead of us. <laughs> no, I so, don't think so. No, uh, that's how because it is. because I mean quite clearly in the position they have on our video screen, the black pawn is on h4. There is nothing on h7, and there is no. I think there is a bug with your live chess viewers. Mm. That would be my guess because I saw before. Uh, you know, the camera was very much, uh, it's what uh, Sotia is saying, was very much mm -hmm. in, in, in... Okay, yeah, then, with, then I uh, guess the board the board glitched out. Yeah, because yeah. As, as you can see, there's there's very, yeah. very clearly a, a black pawn on H4. Uh, and uh, that means that a bunch of moves were, were made since yeah. we last... Maybe try to, to unclick and, and uh, click again. I don't know. Sometimes it just works like this. Mm. Uh, yeah. And tick and tick, yeah, auto update. Oh, okay. And both. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, sometimes it's Hooray. just. Uh... And some games have finished apparently because some games have just disappeared off my screen. Let me let me just briefly check. Uh, yeah, the the Anish, Anish game ended in a draw, sort of like we were expecting it to end in a draw. Exactly uh, how we. <laughs> Actually, so. It's... So here, after Bishop four, uh, Ding disagreed with us about the importance of the Bishop on D four. Just went H five immediately. Uh, B four, King F eight, A three, H four. And rookie one. Uh, a long question for both of us concerning Alireza again. Uh, what about him not playing in any national formats? Do you think it's unfair for national team he is not playing in the Olympiad? Uh, the Federation invests a lot of money in him uh, moving and he is not playing. No, at all. Uh... Yeah, it's more a question for you than it is for me. I don't really know the internal situation there. I don't think the Federation paid anything, actually. Hmm. Uh, no, no, I'm sure actually uh, that the federation didn't pay anything. So, um, well, on that side, of course, I mean, everyone regrets that uh, he didn't play in the Olympiad. He had his uh, own reason and busy schedule. I mean, one had to admit that actually he had to play candidates and then uh, all this circuit in San Luis, he had to play in Croatia as well. So mm -hmm. That was quite busy, actually. That was true. Uh, but I think he played. He, I mean, I'm sure he played the first European Championship, and in general, mm -hmm. he, I think he's willing to. Uh, I mean, it's what he says that he's willing to to represent um, France in most of the events. Sometimes it's not possible to play in all of them. So, uh, of course, we all wish he will he will be back mm -hmm. because uh, we saw in 2000 what was it 19? I didn't play. Uh, no, 21. When was that? I can't remember. When he won. Yeah, that was 21. Uh, yeah, that the, the... was 21. Yeah, that was, I, I was, yeah, I was uh, in the, um, I was working for Magnus, uh, I mean, for the match. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why I, I didn't play. Yeah, he did an amazing score. So he showed a lot of motivation. And uh, uh, I guess he will, he will do so in the future. Yeah. And in the meantime, Ding does find Ooh. this very, very beautiful shot. 24 uh, Bishop D3, huh? Yeah, with, with, yeah. You still have to calculate, though, because. Uh, in this position, you have twenty seven check, but I guess the point is, in the end, there you have g three, and suddenly everything collapses, right? Yeah. And what because about GF who? is GF is ah, just such a strong four. threat. Rookie four. Yeah, rookie four. You still play bishop d three. Yeah, this is the yeah. This is maybe what you can miss with white because you you think you're being very clever by setting this trap, but in fact, uh, bishop d three is still oof, coming in. With decisive effect, with the same tactic always being uh, the explanation. Okay, so we can. What do you play? 
Yeah, he took with the queen. I mean, the way to kind of make the game last longer is to take with the queen and then play queen e7 check, but you don't really. Uh... It's game over. It's game over. Yeah, queen e4, um... bishop d3 on our video screen. Yeah, uh, and Dingo actually, uh, the glitch being resolved, Ding is actually playing faster than Gukesh here. Gukesh is on 25 yeah. seconds and Ding is sort of quietly having things under control on uh, on four minutes. Yeah, if you don't play queen e7, you're just both He's lost hiding. on the board and, and, and lost on materials. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of have to do it. But then after g3, you're uh, in places. a lot of trouble. In the meantime, the Prague game uh, the versus Ergaisi also ended in the draw. Uh, Prague defended quite. Uh, he played queen e6. But then just bishop, like, I'm pretty sure... But why not take six? Yeah, qu takes. queen f5 as well, yeah. Just queen f5. It's one check. No, but why not queen e6, bishop f5? I don't want to give the b6 pawn up. But yeah, but then g3? Then g yeah, no, everything wins. Yeah, it's just, everything like, wins, yeah. This no, is no. maybe the cleanest, because, like, this is mate. Rook e7, like, we, we're giving mate faster on this side than the... That's true. I, tell you. I think this is, this is maybe the greediest way, like, but but everything, of course, is completely winning. No, but you know what we Queen E seven was uh, Queen F five was Queen E seven. And oh, yeah. the eight. So Yeah, that was that was not great, yeah. Yeah, uh so he just took took and he will play G three and it will be game over. No, he took on E yeah, he took on E yeah. six. Sorry, I'm I'm losing my mind here a little bit. Takes, so we takes. got here and yeah, G three wins. G3 I'm is, I'm guessing C four also wins, but yeah, G three is I think the, the easiest. Because you just take on f2 and, and bishop d3 and you queen and you are just a piece up. Yeah, uh, yeah that's you, very simple. You check, check, and in this and position you do whatever you want. Yeah, you can the, queen. Yeah, you can. You can even the queen. most stupid way is just completely yeah, just winning. just completely winning. Yeah, rook b5, queen b7. Just remember not to trade this one for this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, game of and. Excellent! I'm very happy actually to see uh, mm -hmm. to see Ding uh, doing well in that first game. I'm a big fan boy, and uh, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's, it was a very good game against a mm -hmm. very very dangerous opponent. Maybe the, I mean, clearly one of the leader of the, the new generation with uh, the youngest, sixteen, only sixteen for Gukesh. That's uh, yeah, it's just very difficult to believe how how young and also how good all of these kids are. But Gukesh yeah. in particular is just like beggars believe how young he is for yeah for the level of play that he demonstrates. But yeah, today he you know ran up against somebody who when he's playing his A game, Ding is just a very very scary proposition, oh. Oh. very scary and yeah, not not going to be uh yeah you're you're, you're not saving this very often. No, you're not. And how about uh, Richie against Abdusatov? I see that Nordibek is a pawn up. Is he winning? Yeah, uh, this one this one kind of became tricky because uh, we left it here. Uh, Nordibek played rook f4 and then got the king closer. And then he did something very smart. He just immediately offered this rook ending. Ah. Uh, Richie played rook e2. And at first I thought, why isn't this winning? And then I realized the plan is to just completely abandon everything apart from our pawn pair in the center. We which, just run. And, that's and it, it becomes, I think it becomes very unclear, uh, which is why after some thought, he played king e7 here, uh, d4, uh -huh. king takes e6, and yeah, he's just a pawn up here. Richie is doing the right thing in trying to create active counterplay. But what we have on the board here, yeah, I don't know if this is... I mean, the engine probably suggests it's a draw, right? This this kind of an yeah. evaluation that we see is probably a draw. But I would assume. How, how do you... But I don't know how easy it is in practical terms. King c4, I guess. Yeah, we, we, we go king c4 and... Yeah, you cannot bring the king, of course. King e5 mm. is always met by rook e6, which is very annoying. Yeah, so the, the problem for black is mainly that you can't really make much of a progress because b5, king c5 is probably counterproductive. Maybe I can take even on b5 and oh, I'm lost here? Yeah, I don't know. I'm lost, king a6. Like, I am I would be very worried here. You know, the king is so far away. <laughs> the king is a bit, I don't count. I would be very <laughs> worried. <laughs> I, I go, I go... Uh, no, I don't know. I go... Yeah, you might, like, it's possible this is lost. I 
I yeah. I know very little about any of these positions, but it's possible okay. this is now. Ah, but rook a four as well, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I, yeah, exactly. Like if you go yeah, something no. like rook h seven, I will I will start by okay. giving this check and then I will go to h four. Yeah, no, of course. Okay, mm. okay. But I, no, I think the right. larger problem is king c five and yeah, like of course. No. Can go like rook a six, rook takes a seven, rook b seven. Yeah, and it's probably mm. just fine. Yeah, and and uh, ding one. Yeah, ding ding. Oh, okay. So he even collected more material by Ooh, <laughs> not taking on f two and uh, just playing bishop page three. This is nasty. This is more more material to to be won immediately. Nice, very nice game by by ding. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. And not an easy one because he didn't play since the last candidate. Uh, we don't know how much. Uh, I guess he was training quite a lot, but it's never the same. And you play a youngster in the first round. Uh, brings this Queen's Indian, which indicated somehow that he had. Uh, yeah, I think I think you had the right idea from the beginning. Yeah, that he just yeah. he just wanted to put a position on the board where yeah. there is a lot of pieces. There is complicated strategic play. Uh, to to look forward to, and he just has more experience and is just a an an, an awesome player. I like uh, it that he's trying new openings, mm -hmm. confusing a bit uh, Nepo uh, before the match. Let's that see. as well, uh, yeah, that as well. Of course, Nepo is uh, one e four player, but you never know in such matches. Uh, sometimes they just. Uh, I remember the most famous example is maybe Vishyanan in two thousand eight against Kamnik who. Came up with his one d4, and before all his life he was playing one e4. So um, yeah, you never know. For such matches, you can you can prepare, of course, a new a new first move. Mm -hmm. So um, that's uh, that's interesting to show new openings. We'll see against one e4 in that tournament, but definitely a good win. Yeah, and there is a question specifically about that in chat. Do we think if uh, do we think Ding uh, is intending to stick with it for the match or? Uh, did he specifically played it against Gukesh because it's a good choice against Gukesh? It's very like from the outside, you never exactly know what people think about uh, uh, about openings in uh, uh, in World Championship matches. But also from the outside, you don't play Queens Indian in World Championship matches. But maybe, yeah. uh, I mean, it's not a favorite. Let's face it, because he has little experience and. Uh, Gives a lot of uh, options for white. It's not very likely, but it's not impossible. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on it. I think. Uh, yeah, I think for, for 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 the match, you are much more incentivized to play openings, which give you a sort of a harder equalizing options. Yeah. Uh, Richie played king d4 after rook c1. Like it went a bit different because uh, I was sort of played rook a1 to play rook c1 check, and I think the engine really dislikes king d4, and I have a feeling it's because of b5. Oh, and then I, this and d6 d6 i think i push okay because you're not actually threatening d7 and it takes you a while to create d7 as a threat right and if i so go like you can play you're just king, you're just king, king, king e 6 is a major issue no yeah i mean i don't know now or maybe and he he didn't play b5 he gave a check from you have a check from D1, so they reach move 41. He basically wanted to, and I, I I can understand that. He had, if the clocks are correct, he had about a minute in this position to make one final move. And B5 is an extremely, extremely committal decision. And I think it's sort of, I don't know if it's still, you know, as much of a, uh, you know, a thing that gets drummed into you when you're a, when you're a young kid. But they do tell you that if there is a choice of not, you know, not deciding anything on a minute and move forty, you should always yeah. kind of postpone the decision. So, in a way, it feels like maybe the fact that he had the option of repeating here maybe have hurt him a little bit. Because if he didn't have that option, he would have to do something. And I think B5, B5 looks very promising. An additional reason for that is this line, which is not difficult, but maybe a bit missable. I don't know. Yeah. And, and he's going with Rook D1 and B5. And actually, uh, move 41 is also a tricky one. I blundered so many times on mm. move 41 because, you know, you get to move 40, you get relaxed. Yeah. Um, and you lose your, your, your focus. So... 
Move yeah. 40 and 41 are very, 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 very good. And it's it's today. actually interesting how quickly he played b6, b5 check here wow. because you shouldn't do that. I mean, yes, yeah, like this so. is a unless he wasn't sure he made 40, unless like he didn't really trust his uh, his score all that much because this is something that also happens to people, I guess. But Richie is not at the board. Yeah, Richie clearly thinks it's move 41. <laughs> so, uh, that's one amazing. Thing will, a, one thing I will say fun. about Vike is this setup that you see, uh, it's actually like the, the, the camera we have on screen right now is very useful in this regard. Those very large monitors, which you see there, mm -hmm. sort of behind the players, they are facing towards the spectators as they should be. But the way they are positioned means that the players themselves cannot use them to confirm for themselves which move it is. You, you think it's a uh, um, Sotorad to go to stand up and go? No, no you check? can, but like if you have 30 seconds, yeah. do you really want to get up, take a look, and then run back to the board if you're wrong? <laughs> like, that's, that's because in some tournaments, these boards will be positioned sort of to the other side of the players. They would yeah. still be visible for the spectators, but they would also be visible for the players. Whereas in Vike, the setup has always been like this, where you just see the back of the monitor. You don't know. So you have to trust your score sheet. And honestly, with the time control like the one they have in Vike, I really don't know why you would play B5 check in one minute unless you were really making sure you're not about to lose on time. <laughs> but what else on, on the other hand? Um, I mean, you can you can go back, Rooks. Like this is gonna be if you if you yeah. give this, this is this is only a second time. You're you're giving nothing away by playing Rooks one here. <laughs> and then if King D four, you can still give a check from D one, mm -hmm. and you will still be like here. You will no longer have the option of Rooks one check, but Rooks one yeah. and Rook D one are still not a draw. So if you do it on move forty, I would suggest you do it on move forty one again, and you get up. You, I don't know. You go to the bathroom. You splash some water on your face. You, you, you know, you, you, you yeah. get a drink. You calm yourself down a little bit, and then you make a decision. Uh, because otherwise, I don't, I don't really see why, uh, why mm -hmm. you would just make decisions. I mean, it, it might be the right move. This is not to say that this is, you know, a horrible mistake which throws all the advantage away. Not at all. But I just thought it was kind of peculiar that. Uh, he made that decision so quickly on move 41. Let's let's have a look at uh, Jordan Van Twice against Wesley. So only two games remaining in the mm -hmm. Masters, all done with the main game of the day. Magnus Carlsen against Levon Aronian was very well played by both sides and a win for the challenger in the next World Championship match, Ding Liren, who will uh, face uh, Jan Nepomiashi. So and a very very nice win. All the rest was done. We are expecting. Uh, are we expecting Jordan to save the day, Peter? I would think it's so. It's become a bit trickier, but I still think yeah. that we, we have enough. For, like, even if we, you know, quote unquote, blunder the pawn on B two and the structure becomes a little bit asymmetrical. <clears throat> sorry, even that I think is a draw. But also, like, what's wrong with just I don't know playing B three here, and then putting yeah. the bishop on F four and putting the king on d4, putting the knight on e3. I, I still don't really understand how we're supposed to lose this position. But... And, yeah. Uh, so we have plenty of time uh, after the break. Maybe a short reminder of what happened in the challenger with this masterpiece. Yeah, let's, let's from, take a look. Yeah. Uh, Max Morphy. Max Morphy, Vamardam, who just uh, played a brilliant game from the start. Uh, of course, at some point... Um, Perha could defend a bit better, but yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, let's uh, let's show this one more time. The, the, yeah. the very specific, like one move sequence there, where uh, after Bishop D two, uh, Black play Bishop D seven, which I think is the right move, and White followed up with Bishop C three. The very obvious point is Queen C three loses to Knight G five, uh, but there is a kind of a more hidden tactic here. Black should play G seven G six here stopping uh, all of those shenanigans and black apparently is sort of okay even though the position is maybe slightly in white's favor uh, because these are still very serious threats uh, but uh, Pehach played queen h6 was met with rook e7 which is as it turned out a missable move because it was missed uh, 
And uh, yeah. after that, uh, White won very convincingly. <laughs> which this Rook F7, which yeah, Rook F7 is it's... a funny is a funny inclusion, <laughs> yeah, for sure. To uh, remain in... a mystery, but okay. Mm -hmm. Um, in, okay. in other games there there was a kind of a mystifying draw between uh, Thomas Berritsen even the final position apparently is somehow much better for White maybe this is less clear though like this I no longer yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, well, I mean maybe, maybe Bishop so... C4 is still winning or something. yeah just Bishop but C4 still. take on A6 could, could very easily just still be extremely strong uh, but he just uh, repeated here and the game ended in a draw uh, Mishra did beat uh, beat uh, Elin Roberts pretty much as we expected yeah. the game to continue from here. As I said, the easiest way to win this position is just to get it to an end game because this bishop is so horrible that everything just collapses and everything did collapse. And she I resigned. Thought, I thought I thought he would give mate, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still uh, both yeah. are perfectly legitimate ways of winning wow. these types of positions. Uh, Irvin is. Basically losing to uh, Luis Paulo Supi, uh, exchange down. Yes, there is, you know, both both kings are not very safe, but the person with more material generally is ahead. <laughs> and we have some some games still running. And we have a uh, draw in this very exciting uh, game between Sindalf and Donchenko. A bit oh yeah, yeah, this one this one ended in a draw. Yeah, the, the, yeah. this one I missed. Uh, yeah. yeah, by some repetition. Okay. Yeah, so he played e4, and then, yeah, just very correctly, ah, okay. co co correctly uh, uh, calculated that the rook on d3 looks very threatening, but it actually is going to get chased down. And I mean, the knight end game is not going to be much better for, for, for black, so uh, they agreed to draw. And yeah, so we have uh, this end game between uh, Tabatabai and uh, Adiban, which honestly optically looks like it should be winning for white. But the engine doesn't give white nearly enough advantage. So I guess the argument is this is a draw. Yeah, which is not obvious. Of... Which is not obvious at all. Like, <laughs> like I, I, we still need to spend two days like, picking yeah, this guy. Yeah. Like, no, you know, why, why you don't take on H5? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> maybe Bishop D7 was. Maybe Bishop D7, yeah. But my point is, like, ah, 95, 94. yeah. If if I if I had to bet bet on whether this is winning or draw, nah. I would probably be bet on this being winning. Uh, yeah. But apparently, it's not. I guess judging once again by the fact that the engine isn't screaming that Black should resign. Uh, so Aliban is defending very uh, uh, very carefully, and also I, I would I would have to say very impressively because in this position he yeah. had the option of defending passively, like you can. Make a move like bishop b5, allow knight c5, and just you know chill on this diagonal. Allow a4, a5, and whatever else white you know decides to do, and then just defend. But but if I play in a very stupid way, I think uh, I mean even as white like let's say I go uh, a4, knight b3, knight d4, okay to pass pawn. Mm. Yeah. B five, and you will have to sacrifice your bishop, and you are not. Yeah, in yeah. it's it's too. very like yeah. I, I suspect he he did it right. He he spent some yeah. time on a decision here, he and just went for this. He played king e seven, knight c five, a five, b a king d six, which quite clearly indicates that he assumed he, this is his best chance. White also doesn't really have anything else because you cannot really try to defend the a pawns. Uh, because the knight alone will not do a very good job, and if you start coming with the king, then black will just generate counterplay. So you have to go for this line and try to queen the g pawn. But I guess you just like I thought this was slightly clever, maybe because yeah. I thought I can play like knight of six and then g four. But I guess now bishop yeah. e seven is a draw. Why? 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 I can go. I king a three, knight f six, bishop a four. You can't ah, that, that as well. Yeah, that as well. Oh, and then just bishop d1. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The pawn is sort of still too far back, right? If it was already on g5, you are probably ah, losing yeah. with the king on a3, yeah. right? But it, it will take such a long time for us to even get it to g5, even if we can get it to g5. Once the bishop gets to g1, it really does start looking like a draw. Okay, so there's plenty of games to, to watch. We'll make a short break, and yeah, after absolutely. the break, let's, let's we will see the, the, the remaining games and your game.
against Korsnoy in 97 yeah. and why you resigned that early. Uh, okay, thanks a lot for, for watching. Stay tuned.
welcome back to what probably will be the final segment in today's show. Today is the first round, very exciting first round of the 2023 uh, Tata Steel Vikanzea tournament with an absolutely stunning field in uh, in the Masters and a very exciting young field in the Challengers as well. So far in the Masters, we have one decisive game, right? Yeah, Ding uh, played the masterpiece against mm -hmm. uh, Gukesh. Karsten Aonian was a very well played game. Anish Giri got uh, chances against Fabiano Kawana, but uh, he misplayed it in somehow in the tactical uh, phase. So good defense by by Fabi. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we had a draw. Paranda Gazi, well played Gunfeld. Uh, very very important for uh, people who loves uh, Gunfeld. You should uh, watch and analyze that game. Can you take on H four when? Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a answer. very critical line, actually. Yeah, I think this is one of the most trying attempts against uh, against the B six uh, Grunfeld in the in the Bishop C four uh, line, and uh, B six is now, I think, absolutely the central reply to uh, to that. And uh, since we started by this discussion, let's uh, show what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, this is the sort of the old classical Bishop C four Grunfeld and. Uh, uh, B6 here is, I'm pretty sure, the most fashionable and the most uh, widely discussed uh, option against it right now. Uh, and the reason I chose not to give it in the course is more or less specifically what uh, Pragnanda uh, tried today. Uh, and these lines where white starts by playing very slowly with like Queen 2 Rook C1, Rook FD1 in some cases, and then just goes with H4. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, this has been played against me by by Kukesh in twenty twenty one, and Ergaisi, unsurprisingly. What? what uh, yeah. What, what do we give in the course? So if I, 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 I actually I kind of gritted my teeth and uh, gave the old man. Ah. Line, which I think. Yeah. I, I, I think this is still a draw. I. Yeah. But I've never really been a huge fan of it myself over my sort of playing career. I played it. A few times. It's not like I never played it before giving it in the course. That would be a bit strange. But uh, for me, both bishop takes f7 and the positions starting from here have always been sort of exactly not what I want out of Grenfell, which is a position which is a draw, but where basically you have to memorize uh, a lot of tactics and uh, you are pretty much never ever going to have any winning chances. Yeah, that's but that's, but uh, <laughs> on the other hand, if I uh, if you start digging quite deeply into uh, what the current state of things is after B six, you will get a very similar impression. In my defense, I think like if mm. if if you analyze the current the, the current understanding of uh, how how these lines look, very often you will have a very similar uh, conclusion that. You have to play very precisely, and you're still not going to have a single winning chance at the end of it. Uh, yeah. But Eric Aisi today clearly came very, very well prepared because uh, the reply to h4, uh, I think, has to be what he played. Knight a5, and then you do pick up the gauntlet, you take on h4. It looks extremely scary because obviously this is not where you want your queen to be. It's, uh, it looks like if, if, if the tactics don't work out for you, you might just lose it. But it, it works out move by move, and he did uh, hold this position quite comfortably in the end. In fact, if anyone was pressing, at some point I think it was black, but uh, the, the game never really yeah. left the margins of equality. And the last result uh, we got, uh, apparently we have a, a new course on our friends from, from Chessable, from uh, Swartz. Uh, I saw Darius uh, Swartz, who mm -hmm. is a uh, Polish Grandmaster, very strong Polish Grandmaster, who is covering exactly that line uh, as white in his uh, brand new uh, Chessable course on 1d4. So mm -hmm. there is always very much uh, up to date. And the last game uh, was Max Udlu against uh, the late re uh, replacement, Max Udlu against. Uh, Against Kamer, which was uh, seems to be a well played, uh, well played draw. Simply. Yeah, seems like uh, seems like it was. They played a kind of a creative opening, like a not a very theoretical ready with uh, uh, e6 and h6, and uh, play became quite sharp as it often does get in 
in these types of ready positions. Feels like, generally speaking, if anyone was ever in the running for, for advantage, it was probably Vincent, but um, Parham handled this position yeah. quite quite it was a carefully. Star move. Yeah. It was a star move, Bishop D2. Yeah, Bishop um, D2 calculating all the yeah. all the complications after E4 correctly and uh, getting out of it with a very, very safe setup. You you're pretty much never running any risks here with white with an outside passer and rook and queen against uh queen and two light pieces. And we have two uh, remaining games where mm -hmm. um, both um, Abdul Satov against, uh, no, okay, uh, uh, Westerso against Jordan Van Forest is. I'm a little bit surprised quite, by this, by the way. Quite a while. Yeah, this is a bit of a strange, like, Jordan uh, is trying to make this draw in sort of exactly the way I would have tried not to make it. Uh, that wasn't very grammatical, but I, I guess you know what I mean. Because yeah. you suddenly. This is, uh, you know, an asymmetrical material, and you cannot very easily trade g3 for h5. Like, before we go king h3, I guess. I, ah, maybe he wants this, or... Most likely. I guess, yeah, okay, then, then it's fine, yeah. <clears throat> because uh, in my mind, I, I played king f3 here, king h3, and then it becomes very scary, because black will just start pushing, you can't really <clears throat> you can't really get rid of the king side very easily at all. There is no way you can uh, really simplify any further. I'm not at all sure this position is a draw, but if maybe we can make a draw sort of by force by playing bishop before creating a threat of a discovered check, and then just going after the h5 pawn yeah. straight away, yeah, just because obviously if you have to play h5 h4 here. Yeah, this it's... we this we never ever lose. This is just yeah. a very easy draw because the king can now go back to uh, protecting the queen side. Uh, and if if we're actually in time in all of these variations to just play king g five and pick it up, then yeah, I mean, I'm not can... even ah okay. You can go queen queen. No, I was calculating king g five. Uh, ah, that that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, knight f four gf and uh, you queen queen. I'm first. Yeah. Yeah, That's good news. should all, should also be a draw. Yeah, yeah. very very I will, easy. I, I, yeah, I will, I will play queen b eight and. Uh, yeah, I mean this is yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, this is puppet war, but queen b eight just, just given just given yeah. immediate immediate perpetual yeah. is is quite easy via the yeah. So it's well calculated. If, if, if you haven't seen this mechanism, it's a very kind of well established yeah. mechanism where you just rotate your queen around this setup wherever it goes. The queen on h1 is quite useless to, to yeah. stop the, the checks. Uh, so that one, and we have also Abdul Satov who is pressing against uh, Richard Rapport. It was a very exciting Vienna opening uh, from Richie Boy, but uh, it backfired quite a bit. Okay, it was a complex mess. The computer liked white, but we never did. Actually, yeah, it, never... It's, uh, it was uh, very surprising just to, to, to what extent the machine liked white straight out of the opening, uh, you know, somewhere around here. I guess he was yeah, giving exactly. white reasonably optimistic evaluations when like optically just never really looked very nice with the king on d1 and your pieces also somewhat discoordinated. Yes, you do have a very beautiful bishop on f3, but yeah, a complicated position which eventually uh, simplified very much in black's favor uh, and uh, Nodebeck took a very nice decision here where queen takes a five looks like a healthy extra pawn instead of which he almost without really any deliberation just went for this endgame uh which isn't equal pawn endgame but this is a weakness not a strength for white it very much isn't like you you would much rather it was only four or g4 or anywhere um, and also uh, uh, richie found some nice very nice counter mm -hmm. play which we completely missed bishop b2 followed by c3 and getting yeah, because... some space with a bishop and now Took that yeah, maybe he had a, a cleaner way to make a draw somewhere around yeah. here because the evaluation wasn't really all that alarming. But uh, eventually things started going slightly uh, off the rails for him. Bishop f6 was a very, very nice move there by uh, Nodebeck, uh, followed by king e7, not allowing White enough time to get the pawn to d5 and to connect the passers. And Richie had to bail with this, uh, trying to generate enough direct counterplay to compensate for the lost pawn and uh 
this is a I suspect it's a very very intricate complicated ten game to play yeah. uh, and very difficult to play perfectly. I don't know if many mistakes were committed between move thirty five and move forty, but this is what happened. And very logical. Uh, yeah, but... and honestly, honestly, very logical play. And Rigi just now played uh, rook h six h eight in this position. So what's the deal here? If I go b three, you have to go rook b eight as fast. Yeah, we have to, we have to play rook b eight. Yeah, and because b two was just so king e four is the idea. King e four d six. I guess no, no. no. Um... Hang on. Yeah, king e four d six doesn't really do very much, right? Yeah, and King E5, I just give a check and go back, so this brings nothing. Yeah, you can you can put it on a different square, but I don't know why this square is supposed to be better than the other one. Maybe we do it this way: go King E5, Rook E8, King F6, Rook B8, Rook D3, and we are hoping uh -huh. to pick up on H3 while the King is sort of closer to the promotion. So square. I go D6 anyway, I guess. Uh, I wanted to try King E6. Ah, no, but then Rook E8, Rook E7, Rook A7 is probably a draw, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think so. yeah. So King, e... can I play A5? Ah, no, but then King C4 will be completely fine because D7 will let. No, no, hang on, Rook no, D6. No. no. So can I can I try being fancy? Like, oh, I mean, it's not that fancy. Um, King, King C6. King C6. Oh, yeah. A no a three would be three. So king e7. Yeah, but now king f7 and you come back, yeah? Okay. And I did nothing with my but, we, but black white also has no threats, right? Because we d8 loses. Yeah. But how do we use it? Is the question, right? Ah, maybe we do it this way. We give a check. I know, but the, then the king goes to the B file because I wanted to do this <laughs> because the difference ah, okay, is yeah, now, yeah. now you don't have this. Nice, it's nice, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> but the king goes to the B file, I guess. Does it? Ah, oh, maybe now we win with white. Yeah, G eight, B one, check, and we, oh, we we cannot hide from the checks. I wanted to go king A five, but then I realized I plundered rook C five, and I probably get made. I show sure? King A6. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We and you are hiding. Thanks we go for this, yeah, because we stop Queen G1 check. And now the okay, checks. Guys, like I, I, I probably need to. This is the point in the analysis where it feels like we're getting very excited, but also currently it's this position. But it's probably the kind of lines uh, Rich is calculating right now, so you can mm. imagine uh, how complicated it is. And at some point, he has to play a move to make a decision. This is mm -hmm. so tricky. So difficult, yeah. So, and now the back is just walking on the, the playing hall. Uh, you yeah, three, yeah, you have no, no, I mean, your, your moves are obvious and uh, you have no risk. Um, it's nice, uh, for him, of course. Yeah, played B3, he, played, so he played B3 and uh, got up and uh, went to check out the uh, uh I guess, what, what end? End game. Ah, so maybe you can start checking, right. That's why he's thinking. Uh, how does that work? No, I, I don't. I don't get why Rook B8 was not played instantly. Actually, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like you can definitely give a couple of no, but like no, I don't a, think if so. You give a I couple of so. checks. You, you lose to King D3, maybe exactly. Yeah, Rook B8 and then King C2. C2 yeah. So what else? Are you up to date? Uh, yeah. Okay. How's the other one? Maybe. It takes this auto update analyzed. No, it's. Uh, I think also, you know, this this overview tells us that Richie is still thinking, and Odebrecht is not at the board. So I guess he is actually thinking about something, just not clear what, because as uh, there's no moves. Yeah, like you. I, I think if you drive the king to c two, you quite obviously lose. This is where the king wants to be. Oh, we're well, missing something. Yeah, we're definitely missing something, but I'm not quite sure what. Is it rook b8? Maybe we can go king e4, rook e8 check. Yeah, but... Uh, no, here we, we're not going rook e8 check. I, we were going d6, I thought. Yeah. And then I had some idea. King e5. Check back. Could it be actually favorable for us to provoke d6? 
Ah, because now you want king e6, right? And, and king eight. seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Honestly, it feels like it feels like this is, you know, too clever for its own good. It feels like we're being a little bit too fancy, and now, yeah. you know, something like this will just make a draw, you know. <laughs> but maybe, uh, probably. So yeah, you're right. Uh, no, no, I was blaming you with your um, <laughs> software, but actually, I was I was completely wrong. And Richie is thinking, and Rook B eight so is telling us that this is the only good move. Actually, yeah. Um, but we can blame Peter. Yeah, uh, sure. You, you, yeah, you, you can always blame yeah. Peter. It's, <laughs> sure it's never sure. a mistake. Yeah. yeah, we want to. This is uh, the ten minutes we are blaming you, so we will blame you for resigning uh, against uh, Koshnoi now. Oh, yeah, let's oh, let's I actually can. show that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, once again, no particular reason to. Yeah, that came uh, up very randomly, but uh, it looks like a nice game. To show the hang on, it disappeared. Where did it disappear? I had uh, it open. You... If you closed, did you close it? No, weird. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, okay, makes sense. Uh, so what happened there? Yeah, let's not show the final position. So I played some Kings Indian. Basically, there was a tournament in which I wasn't really doing. It was sort of the one and only tournament where uh, an organizer in 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 Saint Petersburg. Who was very actively involved in you know the creation of the club which later won some european club cups mm -hmm. i don't think we ever won it under his captaincy but he, he was very instrumental in creating this kind of a legacy in 97 he had this idea of organizing the round robin in uh st petersburg which would feature all the best current players and he also wanted to invite as many of the people who left Leningrad and St. Petersburg and went to different countries as possible. So he reached out to Korchnoi, he reached out to Salov, he reached out to some other people. Uh, Mark Zaitlin, who I don't know if you've even met him ever, but who was an absolute legend of the... I know Leningrad. the name, obviously. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 there I are so many him. stories. He's an absolutely legendary person. Okay. I think he sadly passed away very recently uh, but he was yeah he was an absolute absolute legend of uh Rengra chess and then he moved to israel and became a kind of a godfather figure to a lot of the young israeli player players taught all of them grunfeld and so on <clears throat> i'm sorry uh and i really wasn't doing well in this tournament at all i could barely win a game i think i actually won zero games in that tournament when did Korshnoi? I, I can't remember exactly which year he left uh, Soviet uh, uh, Union. Seventy something, um, <laughs> okay. three maybe. So ah, okay, seventy no, three. Okay, and so it was a bit later, but yeah, okay. And uh, um, he was always very famous for you know thinking the King's Indian is basically yeah. losing. Yeah. And I thought it would be interesting, stupid, but interesting. Hang on a second. I really need to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Peter will be back uh, very soon. So this is a King's Indian. Uh, that yeah. Peter Sorry about that. Uh, so I thought, you know, since the tournament is already going very poorly, let's play the King's Indian against Victor and see what happens. Yeah. This and I got good. a very, I got a very poor position very quickly. This is a line which still has ba very bad reputation. Yeah, yeah. Like, you shouldn't be playing like this. But then, I mean, it's 97. I was a decent yeah. player in 97. So I thought, okay, maybe I can sort of calculate my way out of it somehow. And uh, we get to this position where I think this is where he stopped, either here or maybe in this position. And... Uh, he has a number of choices here. He can try knight e6, he can try knight f7. I mean, those are the, basically the two choices. And if he goes knight f7 after king g8, like there is an obvious bailout option. Not, not bailout exactly, but you can you can go for this position. Okay. Which is going to be completely fine for white because you, you still have rook c7 threats. Yes, there will be some counterplay with e5, e4 after the, the, the capture, maybe immediately. But white is a pawn up. The king on h7 isn't very safe. Like it's clearly a very playable option. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can try playing bishop b3 here. 
Okay. And either in this position or in this position, and this was played with a very, very long time control. I can't remember exactly, but it may have even been like two and a half for 40, like okay. possibly, but I don't think so. Maybe probably two for 40. And he played the opening very quickly. So he had a lot of time here. And he sat down and uh, thought for like at least 15 minutes, maybe an hour. And the longer he thought, the more I felt I am probably actually getting away with it today because it looks like I'm surviving. And if he has to play knight takes h6 or, I don't know, knight d6 check or something, then my position is, yes, probably slightly worse, but probably manageable. I, I shouldn't be losing it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then he played bishop b3. And for the rest of the game, he didn't stop at a single juncture. Like, everything else was blitzed out. Rook f7, okay. rook c7. To take, to take on here, e7. Of course, the point isn't to take on f7 immediately. The no, point is no. to pin everything and to deny my pieces any oxygen. So you have to play bishop f6. Now, still nothing captures on f7 yet. I have to continue on pinning. Rook fc1. Looks like I'm losing the bishop on c8 after he takes and takes. But I have this counterplay. a5, bishop a3, and b5. And now if he takes on f7, of course, I can play b5, b4, which is extremely uh -huh. important because it cuts off the connection between e7 and the bishop on a3. So he has to invest the tempo in bishop c5. And the bishop on c8 escapes. Yeah. And finally, white has to cash in because I'm threatening rook c8. I'm threatening all all kinds of things. So you have to cash in. And I'm sort of coming back now. It doesn't really look like I'm doing all that poorly because my pieces, yes, they don't have very many moves right now, but they will have moves soon. And Sasha with and, him. And then, because and I then see. he just goes h5. And you resign. And, and and I sat down and I really, well, I mean, yeah, because... But why? Why? It takes, what's the point? Yeah, the point is, now we do this. And this. And I cannot keep a bishop alive. I lose either one. Like, whichever bishop I want to lose, I will lose it. You know, I can choose which one I hate more. You know? And if you go g5, it's the same story? Yeah, this, it's exactly the same. Yeah, g5, he just takes, takes, goes. And if you don't, uh, if you and play b5, you can't, just you can't ignore it because hg6 is a bit, you know, it's a, it's a bit too much of a threat. That's amazing. And, yeah, 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 and I, I just sat down and, you know, for a while I kind of stared at the board in disbelief. And then I thought, okay, let's not spoil it by having having him show what he quite clearly has seen. And I resigned there and I so, and I said something nice to him after the game. And after this game, we, we had a good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, while uh, Jordan Van Forest, unsurprisingly, and uh, Wesley so. Uh, agreed to a draw. Did he mm. play? Uh, so to finish the, the story, did he play h5 instantly? Yeah, he played everything up to up to h5. Absolutely, h5, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's and, yeah I, I thought for a while and and just yeah, just gave up and said yeah, this is fantastic because I think it, it really is fantastic considering it's not a very easy calculation and no, you have no. to visualize all of this. Yeah, and like he was, I I keep on forgetting which year he was born, but I think it's 1931 ish. So he was like 66 years old. Yeah. You know, I would very much like to think I would be able to remember what my name is at that point, you know, not, <laughs> not calculate stuff like this. So, and rook c8, you just go bishop takes his seven, yeah? Yeah, and then hg will win it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Bishop, bishop seven. seven. Yeah, that's true. Bishop seven. And that's the point, the wall point yeah. as well of uh, h5. And yeah, that's beautiful. Congratulations to not Hang to on a you, second, but uh, uh, Nodipek is just winning now. What's what happened there? Okay, let's let's have a look. He plays Richie actually, eight. Richie actually did all of this, oh, but boy. but why? I don't understand. Richie actually did all of this, and now he will just resign. I don't understand. He thought even if you think Rook B eight is losing, you have to try it. Yeah, like. This is really not very difficult. Like you just you let your opponent queen the b pawn. Like what could what could he miss him? That's just completely busted, actually. Yeah, no, it's just, just like rookie two. Any move, it's not even like, king c one wins. I mean, there is rookie one, but it doesn't really save very much because I can take and then I I have more rooks. Yeah, and you have one check, maybe a couple of checks. Yeah, yeah, a couple of checks, but they they will not really be enough. 
also like if we don't want to even allow that we can go king and resigns from uh richie wow mm -hmm. what, what surprising results i mean it was a draw a few moves ago according to the yeah at least at least uh, judging by our evaluation on the screen yeah rook b8 was still holding that's very weird and that's so second uh second decisive result of the day both with black pieces a mm -hmm. bit of a surprise but uh such a fighting to amount that you you can expect anything uh yeah and uh, just to show how this game concluded uh wesley didn't take uh on e4 he took on h2 but then uh this was the plan i'm pretty sure this was the point you go bishop four and then you go knight c3 and this knight yeah. is now cornered and you just trade it and then it's just a very, very comfortable draw, of course, for white with bishop yeah. d6. He didn't even play on with understand mm -hmm. understandable reasons. So let's maybe make uh, so today it's very clear two wins for uh, Abdul Satov and uh, Dingli and who are mm -hmm. the early leaders, but uh, twelve more rounds to go. So it's too early to to make any conclusion. Obviously, uh, maybe the challenger. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at the challengers. Uh, apparently, uh, Irvin uh, has been kind of allowed back into the game. Oh, we, we left it somewhere here, and the engine was saying uh, Black is completely winning. But now, uh, knight d4, h3. It feels like maybe Supi thought he was winning by force. And maybe he missed knight f5 check or something. Uh, and or how maybe, does that or maybe, work? Maybe, 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 what he missed, maybe what he missed huh. is he thought this was winning. And it somehow turns out it's not. Yeah. But um, why not Queen F4 and Hook G? Ah, you have Queen A1 checks. Sorry, 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 sorry. Queen F4. Let, let's H7. show that to the viewers if Hook G6, Queen A1, which I missed. Um, but maybe game continues. Maybe. A game actually continues. Maybe yeah. this is actually the problem. Because you have to go back to F6. And then Rook G6 makes a draw. Ah, because that line that I was showing earlier, I think it actually does lose. Because queen h4, we go king g7, queen d4, we go rook f6. And I'm pretty sure what, that eventually we will run out of checks here with white, right? Yeah. Check, okay. check. Actually, I'm not so sure. Yeah. This is still a bit of a mess. f7, f8, g7. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. But your line is better. Oh, f4 check and then rook g6 and black yeah, doesn't even have time to play f2 which is a big deal but okay queen g6 then gets about the same no if i have perpetual or not that's the main question queen takes g6 here no no ah uh, oh. hang on uh in your line no, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but i mean i would much rather have the pawn on f3 yeah, yeah it gives true. me like here yeah. i'm not even worried right because it's hanging yeah. you can't even play king of six this is yeah, just very true. easily that's a draw true. yeah that's so that's so that's so yeah I, I would much rather have it have it on f3 so okay e, ef and uh supi is thinking but yeah if you if you have to start thinking here it's kind of bad news because if you play queen f5 white is just fine you have e4 after queen d5 check and then whose king is safer like it's just I mean, I assume black is not worse, but you're also, it doesn't really look like you're better anymore. Amazing. Amazing. Shupi had everything under control. Uh, yeah, he lost He lost it. The control yeah, and, from... and actually, Ivic is kind of defending quite, yeah, oh, Machin says he defended right. this game, yeah. So, somewhere here. Yeah, we thought. Yeah. This was basically game over. A kind of an you know, maybe a bit of a stupid question, but still, if you had this with white, would you want an end game, or would you just continue playing with queens on? Because for me, <laughs> I feel I, I feel like I would just continue playing with with queens on. Because um, I'm, a, I'm a chicken, so I would I would I would definitely go for the end game, <laughs> but not necessarily thinking that it's it's a good decision. And just uh... yeah, so so we got here, and it became a bit tricky because knight f five is annoying to allow, right? And uh, Okay, knight f7 so far. Yeah, but... I mean, yeah, what what do we do? Yeah, it's, it's a point, yeah? It's your point. Yeah, because, like, you would like to take on b7, but then knight f5 followed by rook b8 and it gets mm -hmm. messy. So he played a rook g1 and he got pushed back. Even this, honestly, looks like it should be winning. Looks completely finished. 
but somehow it wasn't yeah somehow what? it became ah, that tricky. F5 is bishop f7 okay mm-hmm. okay okay yeah I guess what maybe what he missed was this 9g4 move oh that's maybe cute. maybe he thought that black has to take on f3 first and then play 9g4 and he had some kind of a good reply to this probably something like this right and then I guess he's winning because he gets to play h3 yeah and then he's back to being two pawns up but knight 4 was a very kind of a nasty surprise because the knight on d6 is stuck on d6 now you, you you never have time to play knight f7 he played king g2 knight e5 and yeah now suddenly black has this tremendous amount of counterplay uh the king is very unsafe you can't really protect the pawn on b2 so you actually are going to lose with lose it with check very very tricky look mm-hmm. every move is one thing rook f3 rook b3 check small tricks yeah. but uh every move basically so yeah um, very very nice control over sort of the small tactics and this really no longer looks remotely clear and no no and rook b3 rook b2 is kind of um a threat to mm-hmm. to just uh give puppet wall here and maybe there's no good way to prevent it actually yeah, I don't even know what you're supposed to move because, like, the knight on d6 stops rook e8 check. If you allow this rook to come in, you might get mated. Like, if black is creating enough threats with three pieces, if you give black four pieces in the attack, you might be in trouble. Okay, I, maybe I'm, you can go I'm, knight to five ninety seven. Yeah, I wanted knight t4. Oh, knight, yeah, knight t4, knight h4. I guess if rook b3, I have knight no, but, c3. But I, I think even this is just very Oof. safe for black. No, yeah, king f3, but yeah, no, I can't. I'm yeah, yeah, I don't no, think I'm I worse don't. here. <laughs> like, I'm the black is just so active. I think, yeah, I'm probably not in any trouble at all. No, no, I agree. No, any move. So, knight f5, maybe knight f5, but it doesn't really look very but threatening. Check, but... check, check. Where, where do you go? No, I thought b4, no, ah, no rook, even rook b4. Yeah, ah, okay, seven, okay, seven is stronger. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, the rook seven is winning actually. Yeah, yeah, I mean. <laughs> you have to be a bit careful. Uh, yeah, as white. in practical in practical terms, I wonder what is the best way to make sure we don't lose. Even though I'm sure we're not worse, but like, how do we? I guess we can play something like rook b five and then go to f two and then back to e three. If we want to absolutely make sure we're not worse, but probably that's the way you you have to do it. Yeah, I think you 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 hate it, but also you do feel like you've completely lost control. And continuing to pretend might. That's a very difficult. One, one, one of the most one 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 of the most difficult uh, things to do in chess is to 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 adjust to every new situation, mm-hmm. especially when you are uh, oh the other way around when you are completely winning and you become uh, I mean borderline losing. You have to be careful. Oh well, yeah. you are completely you can, losing. You can maybe you play f five and create the square on a four for your king, but like. How sure are you you're even better after let's say knight takes h4? Ah, okay, rook h3. Rook h3 would be three. I can play knight h4, yeah, for now. Why don't you just I don't know, maybe king d4, king c5 or something? I don't know. Yeah, for me, I it would be very difficult to continue, but maybe you can still continue if you wanted to. Without too much risk. I understand. And we have this game, uh, Tabatabai against uh, Bashkaran Adiban. Um, how is it? Is it still... Uh... Well, the engine says it's a draw, but uh, yes. Tabatabai is doing the right thing here in not committing to trading those guys for those guys. He's kind of trying to deny squares by threatening forks. Um, the big question is like, you can go king b7. The knight came from c5, so I assume it goes to b4. Yeah, it's because otherwise king it's a repetition. Straight. Yeah, and then we just, I don't know, we just go king a7. And you pretend I have nothing. Yeah. Knight d5? Yeah, but then after knight d5, it gets a bit awkward, right? Because we're kind of running out of moves a little bit. King b7, I guess. Check, a6? Maybe? King a7. Well, I've achieved something. Oof. I mean, even even this might be like weirdly. Even yeah, this might be a draw. Yeah, but I think we've gained some time. Maybe I think compared to what we had, maybe we've gained some time. Like we we get this position and the pawn is still alive. But yeah, but how do you enough, push? It's just not enough, you... right? We just never actually push it past past G four. Yeah? yeah, I don't even see how you 
you arrange the, the G4 push here. Yeah. And uh, thanks for the raid, Ivan Simai, and uh, welcome and thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome for, to, to the new viewers. We are sort of wrapping up here a little bit because all the positions do seem to be, apart from the Irvin position, which feels like it's very unclear. And yeah, uh, this is what I sort of expected. Because rook d5 is about as clear an offer of a draw here as possible because after rook b3 check, you can't even go king e2 if you wanted to because you've stepped into a fork. Some people so, are leaving, but maybe maybe we should have a look at, at the pairings for tomorrow. What do you absolutely, think about yeah, that? Let's, let's take because a Because we are here. here tomorrow, that's a good news. Uh, at least for the for both. Ah, ah, not easy. Okay, uh, but I have... the. I have them on uh, on chess twenty four. So yeah, we can we can, we can uh, tell the pairings to people. Yeah, yeah we, we, we can maybe can't show the pairings, but we can definitely tell the pairings. So we will have Westless So is white against uh, Arjun uh, Eregeisi. Lebanonian will be white against Pagananda. Vincent Kamer will be white against Magnus Carlsen. Dingliren will be white against Magzudlu. Giri Anish Giri will be white against Gukesh. Adusatov white against Kawana. Ah, we have the pairings now. And Jordan Van Forest uh, will uh, play against uh, Richard Rapport as white. Uh, <laughs> so that will be, well, I don't know. There is no bad pairings with such players. So that will be another uh, exciting day. Nothing for works sure. for me today, yeah. yeah. It's, my, it's my second attempt and it's failing, it's failing utterly. Sure. I'm, trying to, yeah. I'm trying to show off my But he's living. He's magnificent living. animal, but he is left to chew on the one treat I've already given him. I should probably with withhold the treats so <laughs> yeah, that he, exactly. he stays here for longer. <laughs> but yeah, eventually we will we will get this to work. It it's a very you know trial and error okay. type thing. Okay. So um, do we stick on to see or not? You you, you are, it's all up to you, Peter. You're the boss here. Ah, you want to uh, as long as the, as the dog is not coming. We will ah okay so we saw there, no, there we no. have it. <laughs> say say hello. Say hello dog. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't want to say hello. Okay. Doesn't want to look at us. He's right. Okay, that's a nice one. Um so I think we're just uh yeah success yeah at least partial success oh that was a good one yeah so um yeah I think we will just uh we'll just yeah let's uh, uh what's the time situation in Irvin's game because really the yeah. Irv the Irvin's game is the only one that has a potential of becoming sort of explosively okay. explosively exciting but 33 minutes against 16. 14 moves yeah, to go. He will probably take take a while to make a decision here, uh, Luis Paolo, because he has very clear ways to make an immediate draw if he wanted to. Uh, I mean, the, all the GF lines, there is zero risk for black, but probably also zero winning chances from what we can see. Uh, so hang on a second. Ah, no, no, yeah, I was I was losing my mind there for a second. I thought we can go in a fucking H7, rook G6, rook G8. And then I realized there is a bit of a problem oh. with, this, <laughs> with this idea. That would have been nice, actually. Yeah, Rook G8 but... for a second there. I was very excited yeah. about being clever and you know creating counter mating threats and all of those things. But yeah, there is a there is a drawback. Uh, there is a bit of a drawback, and honestly, it's it's kind of similar to the yeah, uh, Ilmaz Ivic game where. And look you... at the. Yeah, he must just play hook b5 and just mm -hmm. he, he's just uh, telling his opponent, okay, let's call it a day. And yeah. uh, hook b3 was playing king f2. Yeah, I guess game, there is no this game with no other options. Yeah. And it's uh, it's a right decision by Ilmas with uh, as we said, he's a very experienced player, uh, been around for for quite a while by now, mm -hmm. and he knows that okay, you missed a win. It's of course you had a great position. It's a pity, but now it's it's too late already, and you should uh, settle for for though. Yep, and it it really does feel kind of very similar psychologically the the spot that Supi now finds himself in because you can con like you you can go for this position and continue and you know play something like this and say this is still a mess. 
uh, let's play. But the issue is, like, maybe you're not going to enjoy how it comes out. Yeah. You know? Like, you, you miss something like Queenie 1, which I originally did. I thought this was sort of clever, and now I realize Queen E1. And there is actually no defense against Queen H4 check. I mean, apart from Queen D8, but if you have to play Queen D8, you have probably lost. Yeah. So it, it, it feels like, yeah, you're absolutely hating life because you clearly were winning at some point. But it's maybe time to accept the new reality. Go GF, give a perpetual by A1 F6, and call it a day. And I don't think we absolutely have to stick around until this concludes because with the time control being what it is. It's just a draw. First of all, yeah, it looks like it's just a draw. And secondly, this can go on for a very, very long time without really changing very much. Although I, I don't think it will it will it will actually because what can you tie as well? Yeah, it's, 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 not even, it's not even clear what you can try. That's that's also fair. And I mean, uh, at some point, you will have to take to collect something. And, uh, yeah, and Tabatabai didn't even go night before. He just went back to c5, which is where, as I mentioned, this is where it came from. So you can just go king c6 and repeat twice already. Yeah, it feels like this will be uh, this will be a draw, and I am I very much suspect. Uh, Shupi. That, uh, the, the, the Shupi game will also be a draw. Yeah, because you know, you it's also quite a long time by now. So mm. this is clear a clear trend that okay, um something went wrong. Twelve minutes. It's yeah, not very minutes. Minutes. I mean to be to be fair, it's now not very reasonable to play Queen F5. That would be a practical Yeah, aspect. maybe maybe you can find some kind of a move to make like Rook. Rook G seven, yeah, Rook G8, Rook I was seven, Rook G8, Rook G8, yeah, some move like that. Um but, but what, honestly it it like, why are you better? Queen of yeah, four is coming, uh, Rook G three is coming. Why are you? Why are you three better points. here? Yeah, it's three points already. Mm. No, so I mean, no here maybe you win. you have a pin, but even even with that pin, honestly, like Queen of four, Queen of three, Queen takes H three. I are you sure? King H seven? Mm. No, I'm not. I'm not sure about because Queen H four is kind of yeah. Queen H uh, four is a very strong threat. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe you no, he's ah, gone G4 as well. He's gone GF. Ah, he's gone GF, yeah. He's gone GF, yeah. I, I okay. think it's the right, I think it's the right call, to be honest. I think if you leave yourself to have minutes there, and uh, I don't, I don't think the position is that that clear at all. Rook G8, I can maybe start with this, ask you for a move, maybe King H7 anyway, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe this was an option. Because like we know the engine doesn't think black is better, but who okay, cares? Yes. Uh yeah, it's we not do that, care. it's not yes. that easy to play with white. I thought it was easier, but it's not actually as straightforward as I suspected. Because yeah, if this is a draw, it's some kind of a some kind of a very tricky kind of study like draw because Queen H4 is a huge threat, and we can never play Rook G3 because Queen A1 continues being a very, very big problem. Yeah, it's but yeah, I've, uh, I, I'm not surprised he chose to not get involved. And now, as we've demonstrated, this is just a very, very uh, unusual mechanism where we just go back to G1, and shockingly, there is just nothing stronger than Queen F6 because Queen H4 is a massive, massive threat, and it's just a threefold. Yeah. So um, it will be a draw. The other one, uh, Tabataba against uh, Adiba probably will also be well. a draw, but will take longer. <laughs> yeah, I think it's time to to thank everyone for, yeah. for the show. Thank you very much, Peter. It's been a pleasure and to yeah, it's all, always same. always great fun. And uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it again tomorrow. Thank you very much, Sotiris, our guide producers. Thank you everyone for for watching. And uh, have a good uh, have a good night. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Cheers, Thank you. everyone. See you tomorrow.
uh, played the Berlin. Which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against. Because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be, even with uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines. I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. Gains that confidence, uh, plays a few uh, good events, stops looking inwards into his own insecurities. I like the no expectation part, so like that's something that has gotten better because sure, it's like not my full-time job. It's definitely good for chess in India and now there is Olympiad also, so there'll be more people following and mm -hmm. taking up chess as professional sport. Yeah. And it's surprisingly concrete still, no? Like yeah. E takes d4, good move, this d takes d4, this d takes d5. This line was essential and forced, but uh, also not uh, rocket science to map out. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world. With hundreds of titles, ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Welcome everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable, a very special chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. I'm ahead of the game. up my rocket but follow me i'm ahead of the game i'm ahead of the game i'm only ever slinging i'm working over time got the song and i'm the singer the melody the vibe i'm a prodigy logically i'm impossibly wanted to never remember my name take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. First of all, I think white goes queen f4. Here the move is still queen f5, right? You are following my games, you will see. I play a lot of games. Finally, guys, so much work for just one pawn. And so much happiness.
Hi there. It's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, sick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a Queen's Gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... Look, it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just... Come on, literally, why not? Alright, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. Alright? Jesus Christ.